Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the second part of Oxygen Not Included, Building a Duplicant Hotel, the movie. This video is going to cover episodes 21 to 40. Everything can be found in the chapters in the description for your viewing convenience. Thank you so much for the support on the videos and without any further ado, I hope you enjoy. Today in the comment section I read something noteworthy, namely that we have natural gas geysers, two of them, that we could use in order to produce energy, but the generators that use the natural gas actually have an output of polluted water. This means indirectly the geyser here is actually producing polluted water. And of course we are very much interested in that because we're going to be using up a whole lot for the system. Checking out the geyser, we can see it's coming out at 150 degrees, which is below the overheating temperature of steel. And that means we don't actively have to cool this down if we use steel. Let's say we use a pump, a gas pump, in order to get things out, built out of steel. It only costs 50 steel. Hmm, you know, maybe I want to put this here on the top and then have a sensor at the bottom. So say my steel pump is going to go here and then we grab a Atmo sensor. This one can be built out of something else. Let's just use iron for now. Put that right here and then connect this with a automation wire. And then all we would have to do is maybe put a layer of igneous rock around it, something along these lines. We also want to extract it with a pipe here and then we're only really missing the power. Now I'm just going to do a quick and dirty solution here with a power transformer. I'm going to rotate this around and hook it up like so. And then I'm going to take some conductive wire. I know in the future this is how I probably want it and so I'm just gonna bring this wire over here the transformer is gonna move once I know where the base is going but since this is gonna be a finalized structure I want it to be built with all the materials that I have intended in the end currently the geyser is idle that means it is technically active if I release it then the natural gas should settle here somewhere below the oxygen layer and if not well then we're just screwed but we're gonna analyze it there we go and then we're gonna try to break in and and build everything as soon as possible. Now it's gonna be a little bit of a mess but considering how everything is built I think I'm just gonna brute force my way in and we're gonna put this all to the highest priority so everyone is helping and maybe it's not even gonna be that bad. Either way we have to make our way in here probably get rid of that pitcher pump maybe I'm also just gonna continue the ladder here get this all the way down and connect it up. In the meantime on the third planetoid I think I'm gonna move the rock crusher because the nature reserve thing did not really pan out. By now yeah the payload actually has arrived so what we want to do is hmm let's actually move it maybe that's gonna be easier i'm gonna move it down into the oxygen maybe even bump up this command and yeah then we just have to make our way over it looks like we're now slowly and surely using up the hydrogen as we keep on using it during the day Okay, let's see how this turns out. Maybe I'm actually gonna complete this. Yeah, I don't want the gases to escape necessarily, but we might not be able to avoid it completely. Hold on. I totally forgot about this area. Hmm, is this gonna bother me? Well, it's not the best thing that could have ever happened, but it will be easy to pick up the liquid here and just ship it over again. So I think I'm just gonna open up here a little area, get some more cobalt in the process. Okay, nice. Chin is already analyzing the guys here and... I attempted to create some sort of a liquid lock here. Now, of course, this is getting a little toasty, but I don't think... Yeah, it's just emitting 268.8 grams a second. That's barely anything. Lyra, I think, is now bringing... Yeah, she's bringing the interplanetary payload. She had to recover her breath, but that's going to be a thing of the past very soon. There it is. Wonderful. We can just go ahead and empty that storage. Do it right now if you can. Ooh, it's not going to be enough time, is it? It's her downtime in just a second. Uh, no, no. No, no, do it, do it. Yeah, she keeps going. Good. I've actually had them quit on me multiple times. But now we have finally access to the thimble reed. We're gonna go ahead and plant that right away. Um, Let's put that to the highest priority. So yeah, Lyra is doing it. I just want her to plant it and then she can take her break. Very nice. So that means we don't have to dump the water anymore. We can actually use it for the greater good. And that also means we can set up an atmosuit station here. But back to my guys here. Let's check out the gases here. It does look good. So this is just the carbon dioxide here that is kind of in the way. But that might get pushed out once we get rid of the water and then close it off. So I guess what I want to do is pick up everything here from the ground. So we already have a clean area. Oh nice, the geyser is actually already analyzed. Let's check out the output. 123.7 grams per second. What is the generator using? Let's check that out. Natural gas generator is using 90 grams. So 
yeah, we would only really get away with the system with two generators, but then we have this natural gas geyser here on the top as well. And we could do something extremely similar, just uh, connect these like so, set up a steel gas pump, set up an atmo sensor and some automation wire, just like that. Some pipes to get things out and then also power wires. I used cobalt, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just gonna bring this up for now. And I think I'm just gonna have a power transformer here as well. So we could have that one right here. Then lead up the cables through the slot there. Just connect it. Can we already... Yeah, we cannot really open this up. So I think what I would like to see is this gas reservoir being emptied first. And one way we might be able to do it is this way. Maybe get rid of that connection for the time being. And we only empty the one reservoir that I want to get rid of. I think by deconstructing it, you actually get rid of the gases. But maybe that is something that changed from the past. There we go. Look at that. I think the carbon dioxide tile... No, it didn't get deleted. It just got compressed. But my point is, all I need is my duplicates to pick this up and then I can close it. And as predicted, the natural gas settles below the oxygen layer, which is not dangerous for my duplicates as they spend their time in Atmo suits down there. Oh nice, looks like the system from the previous episode is finished. Well, more or less. But basically what I would like to see now here is this being filled up with water so we can make some steam. One duplicate should be able to pick up multiple bottles since we have the bottle emptiers so close together. And then just as a precaution so these rapple generators don't heat up too much, I also want to dump a little bit of water here. There it is. Somebody actually did it. Ah, I love the dense puffs. They just look amazing. So how much do we want to add? Well, just enough in order to actually cool down the regolith until we have a proper cooling system and an automatic one at that. But my suggestion right now would be to do like two rows. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait. Ah, crap. This actually went a little bit too quick. Right now, it's still a liquid lock, so I don't have to worry too much. But let's go ahead and get rid of that gas reservoir now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knee sped. Do it. Thank you. And then we want to pluck this up again, though. Maybe we just go along the line here. Hmm. No, no, no. I have to make sure this is closed. Yeah, much better. No gases escaping. That's how I like it. Looks like I made a little mistake here with my mushroom farms. For some reason, I lost the carbon dioxide. And of course, not really new carbon dioxide is being produced, except for here at the very bottom. We might be able to just borrow a little bit and dump it here. Let's see if that does anything for us. Good then. Let's see what we can do. Atmosuit checkpoint right here. We do have gold enough, so we can have that right there. We then have two Atmosuit docks in order to get those suits in. We also want an exosuit forge maybe two more batteries and then probably most importantly we also want a gas pump right there in order to get that fresh oxygen into the suits this also needs to be powered and can always be on though it will occasionally pick up carbon dioxide hmm maybe it would be better to put the pump somewhere up here where it definitely will only be picking up the oxygen yeah i think that's totally gonna be fine i first want to do this one here so when that is built i can actually go ahead and disable it until the system is in place. There it is. Checkpoint. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did I build these guys? Yeah, atmosphere dock. It got a go. Okay, that's fine. And then disable the checkpoint. That is for sure. Also gonna go ahead and deliver the Atmos suits right away. We should have them laying around somewhere. Okay, nice. That actually worked out well. My mushrooms are growing once again. I think we can cut off the pipe even. I'm just gonna leave it there in case this happens again. New colony achievement. What did we do? Enter an oil baum for the first time. Wait. What the heck are you talking about? Okay, I take it. Nice. Well, you look at that. The third planetoid's pump is now going for it, and we're already filling up the atmosuit stations. Somewhere there should still be a second atmosuit, but as of this point, we should be able to go down into the oil baum without risking anything. And you know, I think it couldn't hurt to now set up another solar panel. We're done here with the construction of the second natural geyser. I'm just gonna go ahead, open it up, and analyze it, even though it is active right now. I'm also continuing a little bit in the research with the sugar engine, the oxidizer tank, and most importantly, the polymer press and oil well. Come on, Gene, you can do it. Just a tiny bit to go and we can close this wonderful... Oh. We need to pick up that data bank. We also picked up all the materials here with the first guys here. Let's now sweep this up and then close it as quickly as possible. There, okay. We already got the materials for the tile. I'm just gonna leave those here. No, ah oh, man, you 
little... Oh, was this really necessary? Dude, he was outside just a second ago, I swear. Okay, problem out of the way. We can close this off and this one here. We just need to pick up the polluted stuff there. Uh, thank you, Meep. And let's do it. Wonderful. We got both our natural geysers completely enclosed. All we have to do is bring the gases out. And maybe just for a little bit, I'm going to pump out the gases until we only have natural gas left. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. Just allow the polluted oxygen on the top to escape. On the third planetoid inside the exosuit forge, I want to activate repair atmosuit forever. And then it's time to enable the atmosuit checkpoint. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to this because we can just go ahead and continue the ladder shaft now. Lyra though still has to finish the solar panels. Might have been better with the atmosuit. So I think what you gotta do is move back here and actually pick one up. And there she is, the hero in the suit. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so much better. You can finally breathe. It might even be slightly better with the radiation. Well, it is definitely better when it comes to excavating and building. Yes, finally. Okay, I'm gonna make my way down here in order to pick up some fossils. Oh, well, you look at that. For the diamonds, we need another skill point here. Lyra, you get into super duper hard digging as well. Okay, but yeah, next episode, we need to find a way to ship back the oil and finally be able to progress on the main planet with plastic. Yes, Lyra, that's what I'm talking about. She's now making her way. Ah. Oh well, after the downtime, I guess. In the meantime, on the second planetoid, I also made some substantial progress, as you can see. And I think I might be just continuing this here. Something along these lines, though, I kind of want to prevent ourselves from breaching the surface. So all of this can go, but maybe not this part here. Research already completed. We got access to the polymer press and we also got access to the oil well. Hold on, there it is. Okay, that actually looks good. We have some polluted oxygen here at the top. If I set this to the opposite setting, then we should be able to get rid of that polluted oxygen. Yeah, it is diminishing by the second. We do lose a little bit of natural gas this way, but it's going to be worth it. So we have pure gases in there. And come on, come on, come on. Uh, uh, there it is. I'm going to cut the pipe now, get rid of that gas vent, and then let's see if we achieve the same on the other side. No, this doesn't have any power yet. We need to finish this large power transformer first. Yeah, I was still busy finishing up here with all the piping and everything. Now possibly the best thing we could do right now is just extend this area slightly. Let me do that. And then we could add some natural gas generators to the mix. And they're all gonna be steered by the same battery. So let's say we're gonna add two generators, maybe three, in order to combine the two geysers. And then for now I'm just gonna bring this straight up with insulated pipes into the natural gas generators. And the same thing from here. Let's uh, maybe go over there and then down as of this point now maybe here we hop over this is also going to produce a little bit of carbon dioxide but if we combine these pipes together set up a gas vent here we are just gonna release the carbon dioxide and it's gonna settle down at the bottom however it is also producing polluted water which is then gonna dribble down here and it's gonna fall all the way down into our water pool so yeah all we're then missing is the automation wire and possibly the power wire yeah this also has to continue good now in order to build this we might need a bunch more ladders that should do the trick in the meantime, we dug up everything here. I'm just gonna go for all the fossils. We do want that in order to make the steel. Then possibly go down here. And now here I want to be slightly careful not to open this up just yet. Now let me see in terms of germs. Are we okay? Yeah, I think the only affected pocket here with zombie spores is this one. So I should be able to make my way down here. And then maybe also open this one up. Though if I open this one up, all the oil is just gonna drop down. I can possibly just mop it up, honestly. So let's go down even further because there is more fossil to be gathered. And then, holy cow, what else can we find on this planetoid? This is actually really suspicious here. Also a neural vacillator. And there is an amber fossil. Oh, I've discovered a fossilized critter buried in my colony. At least part of one. But it does not resemble any of the species we have encountered on this asteroid. <laughs> well, yeah, there's only one way to find out. But we need to be careful to approach this. For now, just dig down into the oil baum. And then we're gonna collect all the oil at the bottom and pick it up. There's another fossil here, a petrified fossil that we could excavate. And it looks like there are four of them. Very intriguing, I gotta say. But now let's keep going here. 
building our natural gas generators. Oh, and by the way, we're also digging up a lot of lead this way, which is absolutely perfect. We can get our base to the next level and then tackle the more challenging planetoids. As for the Atmos sensor here in general, I would say I'm gonna set this to about 2000 grams, aka 2 kilograms. So if it is above, I wanna start pumping, and if it goes below, I wanna stop pumping. This will then go up here, and we wanna do the same thing here, though this one I first have to empty. Come on, hydrogen, get out of there. Nobody wants you. Yeah, yeah, just a little more. Come on, pump, do it, do it. Yeah, 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 come on, come on. There we go. It finally got picked up. Man, I'm so glad. I gotta say, this is way more of an interesting oil biome than I've seen in the past. I'm really looking forward to explore this more with Lyra here, but she's now on the pooper, so let's not disturb her. All I want to see to wrap up this episode is my natural gas generators in place, functional and producing a little bit of polluted water for me. Okay, to test things, I feel like this is enough water, so all we need to do is bring some regolith over here. Let's see, that would be filtration medium regolith. We want to make this a priority and then maybe finish the construction of this cable. May is already bringing some. Okay, that is actually nice, so we can observe it. It's going through here. This is gonna do nothing, but as soon as it touches the water, it should do something. We are at 227 degrees. And uh, going down, going down. Is it gonna be enough? Okay, yeah, this is already going down. All I want is like 100 degrees. With the water, it's probably going to be a little bit easier than with steam, but the steam we technically could use for a rocket. So yeah, now they're just going to continue here, actually being cooled down, and we can use them for the base. So mm, do I want to dump them all the way at the bottom? Ah, I guess I don't care right now. Oh, I just realized something that we need to remember. The dreamers, they actually get from this refrigerator and then eat down here at the bottom, because the refrigerator is closer and then, of course, here is where they eat. So what we should be seeing is the dreamers actually using these mess tables here. And of course, all the regolith is going through right now, still at 50 degrees, which is absolutely wonderful. But, you know, I'm kind of tempted to have my vent right here, the conveyor chute. So we get some of this regolith to just stick here. Also, it looks like the dreamers don't get to eat that much. I need to increase the downtime by one more slot. This way we have 20 slots and 20 slots times six dreamers would be good. We're just missing one dreamer, but right now we were accumulating dream journals like no other. Oh, hold on. That does not make any sense whatsoever. Sweep only this needs to be, so we can actually tell them which regolith to pick up. And that, of course, is the one atop the surface. I feel like I still have too many plug slugs. I mean, I'm getting rid of them one by one, but I kind of would like to achieve a more balanced power system. Otherwise, we're not getting anything out of our generators. And there it is. Finally. Okay, we are starting to pump things up. Okay, and it's already queuing up here for the gas generators. We are just waiting for the smart batteries to kick in. Uh, yeah, we're actually getting very close to the end of the day. And this still needs to go down substantially. Why are we not using more power? What's even going on? I'm going to reduce my breeder plug slugs to two for the time being. Let's see, 54, you're the oldest. You gotta go. Wonderful. This is actually really working well here with the regolith. It's just cooling down and the water doesn't even get that hot. And we're just getting it delivered right to our doorstep where we can actually need it for filtration. Well, not much longer. Polluted dirt is coming to a close, but the transition is actually quite smooth, I would say. We're gonna be ready to switch to water-based oxygen instead of polluted dirt oxygen. Jeez, now it's actually the solar panels, but I gladly get rid of one solar panel because they are in the way of my next silo. Well, so is this regular thing, but I just wanted to do a basic test. It really looks like we're gonna take forever to heat this up, and all the regolith is coming out at a nice 50 degrees, instead of the 200 or whatever it was. Uh, it's so close. We're down to four kilojoules, but it is almost nighttime again. Yeah, we didn't make it. We're charging up again. Freaking plug slugs. You're giving me too much power. However, this time the batteries did not fill up entirely. That is good to know. Let's just see. We're producing 800 watts with that. Okay. And we're not currently storing the excess natural gas anywhere. So that could be something we fix in the future. But I want to make a storage when I actually know where this is going. Well, I think for now I want to keep it very lightweight and easy. So we're just going to take a little detour like this. And then maybe bring these pipes together 
like so hop over there and do that okay that should theoretically be fine just to keep a little bit more of that natural gas in reserve whoa 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 hold on i remember something yeah do, 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 do. we're only gonna do it up to this point but there we go guys we now integrated the natural gas geysers and we're gonna hopefully be getting lots and lots of polluted water at a decent temperature we'll see yeah we definitely got another meteor shower upon us as a matter of fact on every planetoid but these guys i think are supposed to melt again and then of course on the second planetoid we shall also welcome these bastards well in today's episode, I would like to make the transition towards the new oxygen system, at least in some regard. First of all, I think I want to go ahead and complete the new headquarters. So maybe we can already kind of use the oxygen for the new base instead of pumping it into the old base. Another goal I'm going to be working towards in the background is on the third planetoid. I would like to set up a small launcher, maybe with a couple of coal generators, just so that we can send over some materials. The question is, though, should we process? the oil on this planetoid which might be hard but it would make it much easier to send back to the main planetoid we'll be thinking about that in the meantime i'm gonna limit the base to what it is supposed to be right here the space on the top is also eventually gonna belong to the base where we have the kitchen and maybe some crafting areas but i will be building them from the other side and for now only this part right here is gonna belong to the base as long as we don't have plastic we cannot really use the transit tube access point so i will be doing some sort of a liquid lock here instead once it's done in the meantime we gotta finish the base and just making sure the gas won't be able to escape i gotta be careful don't want to destroy the natural tiles there now i wonder placing a drywall here ooh, is not actually replacing the vent okay good maybe another thing we should be taking care of is the bathroom loops there are just two bathrooms to cover this shouldn't be too hard let's say we go down this route like so into the water sieve and then it's going straight back into the loops okay add a little bridge right there now this is probably gonna get in the way of me attempting to cool this down yeah i even put this into the wrong slot this is supposed to go here but we can even go out to this point there's still a ladder there you know it's only really a problem going from here to here and then we should be fine yeah so i will be hopping over here and also hopping over there little bridge for you and you and you and you oh wait this one here is facing the wrong way this is the output of the bathrooms of course going down into the water sip and now all we have to do is take the detour over here mm, i might want to keep this insulated now this is bothering me that it's going outside of the building you know what i'll be right Right back alrighty I was too tired I had to go to sleep but I came up with a much better pattern now we're gonna input the cooling liquid right here so this is gonna keep the base cool just wiggling around here and then eventually going to the other side and then from the water sieve we are joining all of the toilets and the showers and everything and then of course the fluted water pipe is going back into the water sieve everything is now nifty and nice now, of course, we still have to take care of the overflow. Now, either we put down some flowers here or alternatively, we might just be able to use it for oxygen. You know what? That is actually a good idea. So instead of overflowing the polluted water, we're going to take it from the clean source. Say, so I want to make sure we dedicate most of the stuff towards the top portion in order to fill up the bathrooms. And then once that has happened, we can continue over here to actually produce some oxygen for us. And I think the way I want to do this is just leave this below here. For instance, this is the water pipe that is coming in from the outside. And then we're just connecting these together and actually inputting them into the electrolyzers. The question is, are we going to use radium pipes to allow the water to also cool down the room a little bit? But then again, this is probably not even necessary. And then also I need to think about the adjacent rooms that we want to keep cool with this system. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to go with insulated pipes this way. And they are just filling up the four electrolyzers. And of course, this is coming from a water source. And then this one here would be the overflow of the water sieve. Now, this doesn't really solve our problems when it comes to power distribution. I still want to go ahead and hook all of these up with the heavy walk conductive wire. I can also go ahead and do the same thing here. Just go above like that and everything is hooked up. 
The question is, how are we going to hook up these guys and where is this going to go? Mm, yeah, that is actually a good question, but it would solve the problem of how to cool down the water sieve and the auto sweeper here. Because all we have to do is maybe set up a heavy watt charm plate here and this is going to transfer the heat between the two rooms and therefore it's always going to be at around 75 or so degrees. Sure. Let's keep going here with the cabling. I'm going to bring this all the way around, hook up all the machinery and then I'm thinking I would be introducing the wires this this way and maybe up here so if we had it up here and maybe at the bottom that might make sense and i'm also gonna lead it across here to something like this and that also means i'm probably gonna bring this one a little further up yeah okay sure we're getting somewhere with this let's check out the third planetoid here everything is free again that's good yeah dude i really wonder how are we gonna ship the materials over i don't even have enough coal to do a long-term project you know, thinking about it, it might be a good idea to explore the planetoid a little bit more. So if I go down all the way here, I want to know what we can find. Maybe there are some types of geysers or there is a magma bottom at the bottom. We might even be able to figure that out right here. Uh, let me check this one here. Wait, what? They also have a natural gas geyser. Oh, that's interesting. And a hydrogen vent. So there are two types of power production right there. Yeah, this is actually really useful. So we might want to figure out where these geysers and vents are there's something here you know what for the sake of it i'm now going with that trick you want me to use all the time and that is just to maximize the priority on the volcano and then you can hover over this in order to realize it's a hydrogen vent so this one here would be our hydrogen vent but yeah usually i tend not to do that because you can just as well dig your way in here and just reveal the vent so all we have to do is tap into the natural geyser and hydrogen vent in order to get a respectable amount of power going for us. And of course, another possibility would be to have another farm of Plux Lux here. I mean, I could just send over some eggs from the main planetoid. Ooh, look at that. We have a Dracolid egg incubating 33%. I would like to send this over to the main planetoid. Maybe I'm just going to go with uh, producing plastic this way. And then we can use the entirety of the oil in order to get petroleum out of it. Honestly, I think that is a much better idea. Anyways, I want to keep going here a little bit, digging up some more stuff. There's even more food for us to be gathered. Now, let me see. Uh, yeah, this is separated, so we can just possibly go down here, explore some more of this baum. What is this? Are there any zombie spores? Oh, good thing I checked. Yeah, no, this is just floral scent. Okay, no zombie spores to be had here. But yeah, I'm just making my way down. I want to know everything about this planetoid. And then we reveal the vents and make use of them to launch the materials back home. Libra is now making her way through the planetoid once I arrived here. I would say I want to figure out what this is. And maybe, just maybe, I'm also going to make my way over here a little bit. Get this fog of war out of the way. I don't even know how far it goes. Yeah, okay, this seems to be the border here. I think the volcano behind this is active. Let me just get rid of everything except this tile here, which is supposed to be the one that's blocking it. But yeah, there we go. This is actually our hydrogen vent. Very nice. Let's reveal it. Wait, no, it's just hydrogen in the background. It's actually our natural gas guys here at 150 degrees, which is great. It even comes out at 484 grams a second. This is like like doubly as good as our previous one. 150 degrees is still a little bit much, but I still think we should focus on that since we took advantage of it in the previous episode. And all we would really have to do is enclose this with enough space for a pump. Now, of course, the gas pump will have to be made out of steel, but this is something we can send over. It's just 50 kilograms of steel. Then, as usual, we would be featuring a Atmo sensor and then also lead wire right there. Then all that's missing is the pipe leading out. And then we have a system. Since there are some ice asteroids, I think it might be better to build the system towards the top so we can kind of take advantage of the chill. There's also some more coal and algae that I want to pick up. But generally speaking, let's maybe just set up a temporary power room that we can use. Natural gas. I also would like to see some storage for this. So maybe what we want to do is bring this into a bunch of storages first. Let me just make a row of storages here then outside here i think i want to do everything with the insulated pipes so we first fill up all of these guys and then take out the natural gas maybe bring it one level up like so this would be the next level here 
and on top of here we can set up the generators let's say i'm gonna start here with approximately three generators though i will have to make sure this isn't being opened up here so we still kind of want to surround ourselves allowing the gases to remain here as a matter of fact i need to be slightly careful when it comes to this part in order to get this point i will be going beneath the natural gas guys here but i think this is a solid start here i just gotta be slightly careful with this portion here maybe i'm gonna close this off set this to a high priority so once this is closed i do not have to worry anymore Leroy here is still making good progress i realized however that i'm not gonna have enough skill points or morale points right now in order to get her to the megatronics engineer no wait that is nisbet where is lira yeah we have 15 of 12 at the moment i still want the exosuit training i would like to see the field research and everything and then megatronics engineering now the catch about this is we only really need the super hard digging until we dock up the asteroid and then we only really need the field research as long as we need to research the geysers the exosuit training i would like to see all the time but then when it comes to shipping and actually building auto sweepers and everything we will have to respec her a couple of times maybe this all would not be an issue if i had my nature reserve in place that would be an extra six more lab points and it would have been perfect for my intentions but but I think what I'm going to do is focus on excavating and building for a little while. And then we're going to respec her to Megatronics Engineer. In the meantime, we're hopefully making some more progress here. And I need some fresh white in order to finish this. Now, somebody realized that my Great Hall was a little bit too large. It's 132 tiles instead of 120. But I tried to fix that by just adding some decorative blocks in a nice pattern, more or less. But yeah, we now have the space for a nice picture here. And there may be, or possibly just a statue i don't know yet but what i do know is we need to fill the rest of this up with drywall so the gases cannot escape oh geez it looks like we still have to bring lots and lots of materials over here the next opportunity i get i'm gonna print out another duplicate responsible for building and another duplicate responsible for shipping materials back and forth also let's quickly observe the gases right here you can see with the airflow task even though there is space behind it it doesn't seem to be sucking away the gases if there were space behind it it would look more something like this the gases immediately disappearing but they seem to be stable here i would say we should be safe you know it's also crazy the water here has only ever heated up like one or two degrees of course it's being cooled down again by adding new fresh water but the fact still remains it's quite easy to keep the regolith cool before actually shipping it to the base also i feel like finishing the top portion of the base here and then getting rid of this part maybe Ooh, actually maybe we're only gonna get rid of it wherever we have the bunker tiles already installed Okay, it looks like I will not be able to use up the natural gas this way. One suggestion was just to leave them running all the time. And therefore, we will also be producing more polluted water since this is the main purpose I installed them. So I think I might just go ahead and try this. Gonna cut the wire right here and regulate it with a switch instead. Now, one thing you warned me about is this hole right here that I want to fix. Let's just set up an igneous rock piece there. Maybe speed up the building of this and we will not be losing any more gases. Well, we will be losing it through the door sometimes when it is open but that is neglectable. Here we go, natural gas generators are going for it, producing about 70 grams of water per second each. That will be really useful, at least for as long as the natural gas geysers are active. And honestly, this is probably not even enough. We should go ahead and expand this by two or even three more. We just want to go through the natural gas as quickly as possible. We can still revamp the system later in case we need to regulate the power better. By the way, once again, we have a little bit of a body temperature problem here. We can easily fix that once again with a temp shift plate. To accomplish this, I need to dig into my reserves, but I don't want to get access to everything right away. So instead, what I'm going to do is set up an auto sweeper right here, take away this tile so it can reach into here the dupes will not be able to do that i can then set up a storage bin here and regulate what we take out of it right there the storage bin for instance i can limit it to 800 kilograms we go to liquefiable and let's say i want to get some brine ice there it is will it do something yes we got 800 kilograms of brine ice in here and therefore this temp shift plate will be built nice bet come on come on yes that's my girl 
You bloody bastard! There it is, my temp shift plate cooling down the environment. Gotta love it. We're now down to 10.1 tons of polluted dirt, which is still the main source of our oxygen. Of course, we're kind of spreading it stupidly. The temp shift plate melted. Well, let's maybe leave that on there so it can cool the task down. Actually, that's already enough. 20 degrees, that's good. I'm gonna activate the gas pump outside of the base once again, now that we accumulated a little bit of oxygen. Well, you know what? With the excess power we're now producing, my suggestion would be to start using more of it. We can do that by re-enabling the research system here and of course commit to some research. Now, let's see. We want to do something with the applied science research. Let's maybe also get access to the decontamination shower and then we can unlock some more rock tree parts and machinery. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the oxalite refinery would be nice. In preparation for the transition and to slow down the use of dirt, I'm already going to take apart some of the stuff here the deodorizers maybe including the sublimation station oh dear i totally forgot about ari i did not send any food let's see maybe we can fix that wait we don't have to use the launcher we can just use the teleporter let's send over something i would say we're gonna go for the pickled meal again because that just lasts the longest and we have uh, somebody taking care of it let's just speed it up people are now bringing that stuff over okay now maybe that was a little bit much let me see we sent over over a hundred thousand kilocalories i think yeah actually exactly a hundred thousand kilocalories but at least Ari is gonna survive for a while and since the food is refrigerated it's only gonna use 0.3 percentages every cycle or maybe that is in sterile atmosphere it might lose two percentages Maybe now let's drain this little puddle here so we can make a proper ceiling. Okay, somebody has to close it now, please. Thank you, Ren. We've been through with the research here, at least the applied science. So I switched to another research in order to use up the rat bolts before the next shot comes in. But yeah, as long as we don't use up the natural gas, we can just leave this running. It will not be wasteful. By the way, something I forgot to mention on the second planetoid, we still have 24 tons of polluted dirt. Maybe I just kept on sending it over. No, actually not. But we do have a little bit of reserve on the second planetoid. So it's not really that close yet. In the meantime, on the third planetoid, we're making some progress here revealing more of the terrain and it seems we have a pretty excessive oil boom going on it would be a shame not to do something with all that oil we're getting i mean there's even another one on this side wow Still, we're now focusing more and more on finishing this part of the base so that we can fill it up with gases and already start moving most of the duplicants. I will be leaving the dreamers at the bottom still until I know everything functions the way I want it to. I also rerouted the cable link here temporarily. We can get rid of this part and then set up a liquid lock. Okay, one egg seems to be two kilograms. That means we want to send over four kilograms, right? No, wait, there's still some thimble reed in there. How can I get it out i can compost it then it's gonna fall out and then i can cancel the composting nice okay now the question is can we not input x because it doesn't seem to be accepting them no i know what it is it doesn't accept it because we don't have the doors open okay looks like we don't have any meteorites inbound that means i can open this up we can install the seats here again and start the rap bolt generators and now we can also see the slug eggs are in there at 150 degrees holy cow okay and now we have those wheeze warts here which should also be helping maybe to cool down the water on the floor by the way we're not going to be needing much for this launch just 40 rap bolts looks like ren got himself trapped so prioritizing a tile that allows him to escape but yeah not always the brightest of creatures these dupes i think what i'm gonna do is set up a mechanized airlock right here that is gonna allow the duplicants to get out but then there's gonna be a drop of water or maybe oil so that even when the mechanized airlock opens we don't lose any gases and of course this is just temporary until we got the first plastic in the joint that allows us to safely escape okay looks like we're already ready to shoot again with this contraption it is completely filled up the eggs already have been launched so i'm just gonna close this to protect it from the next meteor shower and looks like the eggs already have landed jeez that really goes quick here it is the payload with two eggs i'm gonna move it somewhere into my base and then we can set up a mini slug farm the question is just are we gonna go for critter rancher not sure well exosuit training is more important right now and technically mechatronics engineer but yeah we might have to switch from one to the other until we established a little bit more morale points for lira which will be easy once we introduce better food Okay, I think it's time to send over some polluted dirt here from the second planetoid here. That should almost immediately give us an errand. Uh, maybe we're just bumping this up. Colony achievement earned. What the heck? Cure a sick duplicate of a disease. 
Okay. Ah, I get it. Somebody ate a curative tablet. Interesting. For the oxygen system, there's actually one important pipe that I forgot about, the hydrogen pipe. I'm going to lead this straight through here. And then we're probably going to switch to radiant pipes in order to distribute the temperatures. But we can just go ahead and do something like this. This is going to go straight through. And then these guys are going to be run with a bridge. Wait, I totally forgot about this natural gas guys here on the second planetoid. I'm sorry, you told me about it. But there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and encase it very briefly. Another research is completed. I'm losing the overview. Let's go for this one here. The mini gas pump and liquid pump. Okay, I did send over some of the polluted dirt to the main planetoid. We are back at 5 tons, which is uh, not that much, but we're almost done with the build and we can do the switch. However, I have to do this in the next episode. I just don't have any more time. I got a little bit of a stressful time lately. Gaming helps me to relax a little bit, even when I'm recording, but sometimes I don't get that much time. But with that out of the way, I'm really looking forward to do the switch in the next episode. It still took a while to actually build everything and get it ready but I'm going to make sure in the beginning of the next episode we're going to start to move the duplicants. We have no other choice. Today it's finally time to start moving our base. You can see I'm almost done constructing everything. Right now we still have to hook up the oxygen system but apart from the power everything is actually already prepared including the filling up of the electrolyzers as well as the bathrooms. Now my intention is to fill up this room here with hydrogen just by using this pump here and it's going to overpressure at 2 kilograms per tile and then this heavy watt conductive charm plate is going to exchange heat with the other side of the room and so I think right now we can just go ahead and complete the build though let me see this one here is still not hooked up yeah of course conveyor let me think we also needed a conveyor receptacle in order to bring in sand and then the conveyor loader will be used to bring the polluted dirt away we have the space to set this up right here though the question is where are we gonna bring this hmm, maybe we have some sort of a distribution system here yeah i guess we could lead this straight through with two rails this will probably look the cleanest and then for now i'm gonna bring this up here this is gonna change once i know how i want to set this up and what's gonna come here but we would need a conveyor loader right here and then a conveyor chute right there this way we can also easily power this up for now it might be in our best interest to keep this ladder shaft in place, kind of as a service shaft. And that means we could also route the cabling up here and then power up all of the Atmos suits, which is something I don't want to do with transformers. The rest of the base and the lamps and all the stations should be powered up with transformers, but right here at the bottom, I'm going to deal with the decreased decor. Now, another thing I want to do before I forget, because this is not very efficient, uh, let me place some storage bins right here. Here they are, thanks to high priority. What I want to do is bring along some iron. Refined metal iron, this is all the way at the bottom of the base and they just take forever to bring a few hundred kilograms to build four wires. Another one I'm gonna fill up with iron ore that we're gonna need for the conveyor rails. Another one I'm gonna fill up with gold. And then I think another one that was annoying was the granite. Now they can finally bring up large quantities and in the end be way more efficient. I also took the liberty to move the piping system a little bit as you can see so now it's going out to each of the gas vents here on the levels and then it's going all the way over and we will be adding some oxygen from this side as well finally ending up supplying the atmosuit docks as well. I think at this point I also want to close the base. It is now more or less secure and I would like the gases to remain inside for now. Okay, I think I'm ready to just connect the wires. This will power up the atmosuits, but as long as they are not active, it's not actually going to do anything. It's also going to activate everything right here, but without water that's also useless. The only issue is right now we still have a little bit of polluted oxygen as long as we have this open. The question is do we need something else? Did I? Yeah I forgot the automation wire of course. So we would be activating these pumps here with the left atmos sensor and the other one of course steers the other three pumps. And then these guys right here are just going to activate the hydrogen pump. We could implement an AND gate but you always say it works simply like that and yeah you're probably right. It has become really toasty here because we don't have a lot of atmosphere. Yeah, we're not really doing a good job at cooling things down. The auto sweeper here is constantly overheating and the gold isn't cooling down fast enough. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, everything is getting out of control. Thankfully, I'm moving the base, but that isn't going to solve my food problem. Well, I think we have to build some more temp shift plates. Just get this cooled down a little bit. So I need four more of these plates. I'm just going to snack four times 800 kilograms with my trusty auto sweeper here. Nisbet just finished the job. Thankfully, is there something to pick up? No, I think we can close the room. I actually ran out of polluted dirt and didn't notice. Where's my polluted dirt? Right here. Let's uh, sweep it up. Come on, Ari, do me the favor. We definitely need to grab some of that. And uh, where are you bringing it? Wait. Come on, polluted dirt. 169, leave. See, are you freaking kidding me? Wait a second. Now he's going to sleep, isn't he? Yeah, sure. You take a poop while the main colony dies. Plants have died. Oh, jeez. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too cold now. Ah, nice. Okay, the gas pump is actually going for it, pumping out all of the gases that I don't want. They will actually be evaporating into space. But still, let's change the settings here to above 750. 50 and I think 250 above for the upper ones or was it 500 and 250 well we'll see it's going to be a distribution but then of course at a certain point we'll have to catch the hydrogen I still want to get rid of that polluted oxygen wait what where is this coming from Ooh, so check this out some of these guys are actually evaporating now that is extremely bad news let me exchange at least this part here but i don't think it's gonna be a huge issue because eventually everything is gonna condense again in this part and then hopefully the steam isn't gonna be dense enough but we can actually see where the pipes were breaking maybe we're gonna use a different material such as iron that isn't gonna transfer the heat as quickly look at that it actually worked we cooled down our plants and killed some of them but that doesn't change the fact we cannot reach the auto sweeper here to actually repair it we got another 800 kilograms of steel i think i want to just keep going here trying to protect the base the moment of truth is here it's time to close off the base i'm gonna add a little bit of water here to the mix that is just for that is just gonna serve as a little temporary liquid lock Right here in this conveyor loader, I want to load in some filtration medium and it can be either regolith or sand. Both is fine. This will then be shipped all the way over to the conveyor receptacle from where it will be brought into the water sieve by the auto sweeper. And then any resulting dirt will be brought back over here. And this, of course, is going to change once I know where the polluted dirt is supposed to go in the end design. I still need to be able to reach these guys. So uh, what can I do about this? Maybe just open this up so a dupe can stand here and then build these. But yeah, I think we're ready. All of these pumps are now in vacuum. Exactly what I wanted to see. There it is. It actually worked. Okay, let's fix the rest here. We can already set up organics here in this conveyor loader. Polluted dirt should be the result. And then once that is done, we can also close it off. And hopefully everything should be automatic. Oh, by the way, something I should mention, I was just too lazy to fix it, is the water sieve and the desalinator can run all water types without taking damage. If I put some brine through the water sieve, it's just going to go through, not doing anything. So the filter I installed right here is 120 watts. We could have saved, but you know, if there's something we're not missing, it is power. I even wish I could use more of it. But yeah, at this point, I feel like I'm ready to launch the system. Oh, I'm actually excited. This is a milestone. Okay, moment of truth, the water is approaching and we're gonna fill up the electrolyzers first. Wait a second, if I do that, then they might actually go into that direction as well. Yeah, we need another bridge, unfortunately, to dictate the direction. Also, I might not want to move through the heavy watt conductive charm plate. Jeez, okay. In this case, I just want to move down. Yeah, this is much better and also unfortunate. So let's stop the water for a brief moment to actually fix that. Okay, then let's try this again. It should now be properly hooked up. And wait, no, I forgot the bridge. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, editing Nathan, just forget about it. Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot to stop the water. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, but there we go. We can see it is not behaving well. So now my electrolyzers are going for it. And then the pumps are going for it. And oxygen is also going for it. Well, as long as we only get oxygen inside the base, I'm actually okay. Are we also kind of secure? Yeah, I think that wasn't even that dramatic. Look at that. The base is filling with oxygen. It's absolutely magnificent. 
Now, of course, I totally forgot to reset the sensor here. I'm going to lower these guys here to 500 grams instead of 750. Okay, now the Atmo suit docks are starting to fill up slowly. We went through the first water. My bridge is built. I just want to make sure that I pick this up and then rebuild the walls. Also, I want to wait for the oxygen to disappear. Let's do it. It's going into the right direction, producing some hydrogen and oxygen for us. And now I want this room completely filled up with hydrogen pushing out the oxygen and now we have to wait a little bit until the gases settle like this we now have only hydrogen on the top and only oxygen at the bottom so as of this point hopefully we're not gonna get any mistakes did we already get hydrogen yeah a little bit that is unfortunate i'm gonna deal with that in a bit you little bastards they actually discovered the water cooler that i didn't disable yet Anyway, let's get a body butt seat in here. So we also get some floral scent. And then the next thing I want to do is probably enable the atmosphere checkpoint building. There it is. Oh yeah, we have our first duplicant without an atmosphere in the new base. Okay, time to actually move everyone. Holy cow, it's about time. There's natural gas everywhere and it's probably also a little bit toasty. My dreamers for now are going to remain here and everyone else is supposed to move. Also, yes, I did notice we are lacking the calories at the moment, which is also part of the reason I didn't get any more duplicates just yet. We still have a lot of plux locks here that I can kill for meat. The plants aren't really working because of the atmosphere. But all of that is going to change in a second. Let's go ahead and assign our people. Now, let's imagine the dreamers are actually going to be part of the 24 duplicates. That means I would want to reserve the first six beds here and also the first six mess tables. So I think I'm going to start from the top row just assigning my people now let's go hmm let me see maybe alphabetically no that's stupid isn't there a better order you know what i'm gonna go with association i think my researcher should go here gene and then over here this would be the corresponding mess table gene is really quick that's fine then my next most important duplicate is probably joshua well they are all important to be honest but joshua is gonna get this mess table and then the third one is going to be, let me see, Amari maybe, hmm, Nisbet, of course. Nisbet probably would have come before Joshua, but it's a close call. Let's just say they are the dream team. No, we already have the dreamers as a dream team. I would say Amari would be coming next. And then, of course, we have Ren, always at the ready. Ren is really underappreciated, I think. Next up, we have Meep, and I think the next guy is going to be Quinn. So here's Meep, here is Quinn. Quinn. And then I think the only one we're missing is May. Wonderful. That will be all of them. Also, let's not forget to copy the settings here for the fridge. And this needs to go up to maybe 20 kilograms. Right now, the fridge and the lights aren't powered. There aren't any lights installed in the other rooms. I'm going to take care of that as a next step. But I first want to see this refrigerator being filled up. Let me actually get access to another fridge. Ooh, we only have pickled meal left. Time to kill. You are starving already. Already. you know it's actually a good thing i'm just killing the guys that are already starving you could say i'm somewhat merciful now how many slug eggs do we have only five yeah i'm not gonna sacrifice those wait a second you guys need to deliver suits why aren't you delivering suits yeah 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 deliver suits deliver suits wait a second no we can just also leave them empty and they're gonna dock the suits they're coming with that's much better Oh, I almost forgot to fill up the bathroom loop. Should do that. Uh, let's see, that might actually already be enough. And then the contraption here still seems to be behaving. Looking good so far. Maybe this pump here is a little too aggressive. Mm, time will tell. Oh, forgot about this tile. Whoops. Yeah, wonderful. They're already starting to use the bathrooms here. And most of them are already filling up. Maybe we're just gonna give it a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. Wait, we got another colony achievement. Let's check it out. Distribute a thousand kilograms of oxygen using gas vents. But will you look at that? We now have heat exchange going on. Our next problem is gonna be the accumulating hydrogen that has nowhere to go. And so what I'm gonna do now is just prepare a little area for my hydrogen generators to go. I decided to temporarily set up a gas vent. Otherwise, this is gonna get out of control. Yeah, probably and there it is so my gas pump can go again it's gonna be a little bit of wasted hydrogen but not for long hydrogen generators made out of gold amalgam gonna have my first one here the vent is in the way so i'm gonna start with the second and third one how many do we need oh i forgot probably three yeah 
it's gonna be three i don't want to make a room out of this and before we actually put it into the gas generators i first want to run a bunch of radiant pipes we're just gonna do this with aluminium ore i think this is really good and we can just go ahead and do something like that run it through the entire room to keep the generators cool and then use that hydrogen to run them now before I forget, all of this also needs to be steered by a smart battery that I also want to set up here. Hmm, you know what? We could have this at the beginning together with the gas vent. And that means I want to run my generators as of this point. I could then have my heavy watt joint plate right there and continue this down and over. Wonderful. Just a little bit of automation wire to run and then close the room. So far, so good. The system is still happily going and it looks like we have almost filled up all of the atmosphere docks. So once that has happened, then the system is going to cool down a little bit depending on how many duplicates we have inside the base or actually docking the atmosphere. But yeah, we can see these atmosphere are already full and now the oxygen is just continuing. And I think once we filled up the hydrogen generators, we can just uh, continue and and let me actually make the complete curve here. But we will be using up the excess hydrogen for the rest of the system. And of course, once everything is hooked up, we should also be able to cut the power from the main system and just let this run on the hydrogen we're producing from it. But look at that. That is a breathability like none other. And of course, we can even improve on that. Let's set up another vent. Uh, it would be nice to do it in the corner, but it's not going to be as efficient. Yeah, I'm probably just going to have it here and then another one there just connect this up and this should then also continue into the atmosphere stations as a quick and dirty solution i'm just gonna go ahead and set up a transformer right here gonna have to switch this around and this is gonna allow me to power the refrigerator which is the most important part in order to ensure a smooth transition in the meantime, I'm also taking apart what we don't need anymore, such as this Great Hall. All of this can actually go. And then we also don't need this half of the other Great Hall. We can get rid of this barracks as well. There are my five Dreamers currently. I'm now going to remove all the other beds. As for the third planetoid, I kind of need to move along here, even though I wanted to include this in the next episode. But we have to finish this in order to take advantage of the natural gas. So what I'm going to do here is move 100 kilograms of steel. It's going to take 40 wrap bolts, so we can shoot this immediately. Immediately. And I also would like to get some reed fiber over. Yeah, this is actually going to be important. I need to kickstart this a little bit. Let's check out where we have the steel. This is 140 kilograms. I could snatch 100 kilograms like so. Just go ahead and build this. There is May and this is already enough. I just wanted it to be moved and now we can sweep it up at priority 9. And since this guy here also has priority 9, it should be brought over there. Then I also would like to get about 5 reed fiber. Looks like we have 4 reed fiber here. I'm going to go ahead and sweep these up. That's probably already enough. So I'm going to reduce this to 104 kilograms. Quickly check the star map. No meteorites. That means we can open up the gates. There are my reed fibers. Let's actually see. Yeah, there are 4 kilograms. Perfect. So that means as soon as Meep is going to deliver the steel right there, we are going to shoot. Hopefully, let's see that happen. Wonderful. Ah, this is amazing. And now we can close this off again. And yeah, I mean, it's a little bit micromanagey, but this way we can exactly decide what we need. Oh no, it actually happened. We lost both of our Atmo suits. Ah, this is really frustrating. But there is the payload on its merry way. Only takes a minute to actually arrive. That still means I need to disable the Atmo suit checkpoint for a brief moment. And there is my payload. How wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here. Oh, hold on. I cannot even reach this. I have to dig up this tile. Come on, Lyra. Your Atmo suit's life depends on it. Come on, Lyra. Do me the favor. No! Ah, jeez. Absolutely unbelievable. But there is the payload now. Before you do that, you have to move back and enable the building again. And then you can repair the Atmos suits, right? No, wrong. I first need to empty the storage here. Good. Lyra will be taking care of that. In the meantime, let's wrap up what we have going on here. Wait a second. <laughs> Okay, you did not see that. I hooked it up the wrong way. In my oxygen flow, there's still an issue. This should continue this way through the atmosphere. So we're going to need yet another bridge to fix that. Well then, once again, we ran out of polluted dirt. And I feel like it's time to move the rest of my duplicates as well. Everyone is doing a good job. We have plenty of oxygen to breathe here. We have enough space. We can move the entirety of the food up now that we fixed the power transformer. And that means I now want to move my dreamers as well. This should happen during the sleep schedule, which I think right now is the opportune moment. The only problem is going to be that we have no more Atmo suits. So I kind of need to make sure that everyone is outside of the base, like Nisbet here, Ren should all be outside of the base. 
So maybe before we do that, let's build some more exosuits. I'm gonna do about eight more or so. Gonna allow my dupes to build that. Whoa, wait, I noticed I'm running out of aluminium ore. Do I have some here? Yeah, as a matter of fact, on the third planetoid, we still have some aluminium ore. Okay, that should be good. I can still make about 100 crafts. Until then, we're surely ready to ship materials from the third planetoid. We already got two Atmos suits docked here. I'm gonna deliver those right here. Nisbet, what are you doing? Why the heck are you exhausted? You have a perfectly fine bed right here. Yeah, maybe they're still confused using some of the facilities here. That could be an issue. Let's finish this now and move the rest. On the third planetoid, I'm just cleaning up, building the gas pump, and then we have to make sure that maybe for the first few minutes, we shouldn't introduce the wrong gases into the natural gas generators. Good, let's do it. As long as we still have an Atmos suit, I can send one Dreamer outside of the base. That means Dreamer 1 is going to go into this cart and is going to use this mess table as of this point. Let's see that happen. Dreamer 1 leaving the base. There he is, leaving the base, snagging a Atmos suit away from another dupe. But Dreamer 1 doesn't need to be long in this suit. This is actually going to be your for everlasting residence. Okay, Dreamer 1 is done. Let's do Dreamer 2 right there and there, and then so on and so forth. I just want to make sure, yeah, it looks like they can get out. So let's do maybe two in one go. You got to move to another bed. Dreamer 2 is outside of the base. Where is Dreamer 3? Yeah, look at that. She is so slow. Uh, this is incredible. She's going to take the entire sleeping time to do that. Good, then only Dreamer 4 and Dreamer 5 to go. I'm going to do those as well. And we keep the sixth bed and mess table ready for the eventual sixth dreamer. Good. Now with only one Atmo suit left here, I'm going to undock this and I'm going to disable the building. Then I want to make sure any duplicate inside the base is picking up a suit. I'm pretty sure I saw at least somebody. There we go. These little boogers are hiding. Let's go ahead and give Meep one of these suits. And then we have another one here for Joshua. Amari is also inside the base. You grab this one. Hold on a second. Quinn is also here. You grab this one. Joshua, going to eat. Wait. Okay, well, you do you, as long as you go into the new base. I still have four Atmos suits to deliver. I'm gonna do that right here in the very end. And then technically we should have all 16 Atmos suits, so there should always be at least a couple of them ready. Now, in the long term, it would actually be nice to get access to these rooms, even if I sometimes waste a bunch of gases. So what I'm gonna do is deconstruct enough tiles to set up a bunch of mechanized airlocks. This way I can still get inside the rooms and will just be wasting a tiny amount of gases. Now, however, this manual airlock here needs to be built extremely quickly. I'm gonna put this to top priority. Actually, thinking about it, top priority was a huge mistake in this case because Quinn took the job and, what can I say, ridiculous building speeds. Anyways, now we have access to all of these rooms and the duplicates shouldn't ever go in there unless I want to, for instance, pick something up. And sure, we are losing a bunch of gases, but I think this is still more elegant than having liquid locks everywhere. Anyways, now that we moved the entirety of the duplicates, it's time to take things apart, just making sure that the dupes don't spend their time here anymore. Also, this refrigerator, priority 9, we want to move all of the food into the new refrigerator. All of this can go, giving us back the materials, all of uh, this can go. Yeah, geez, it's gonna be pretty much a relief. I mean, we don't even have any polluted dirt to continue here, but all we need is the oxygen inside of the base now, and of course the Atmos suits. Everything else doesn't need to be oxygenated anymore. Wonderful. I would say with that out of the way, we can wrap it up. The next time I'm gonna be focusing on actually making a cooling solution for this, for which of course we now finally need access to oil. I've been postponing it for long enough. We have finally moved into the new worker base. I'm really excited for this. Of course, right now it is just livable. It is not actually done. We still need to finish the nature reserve. We need to add all of the kitchen stuff, all of the crafting areas. Just everything that we need to process in order to supply the eventual hotel is going to happen here. And then we're going to have farms and ranches in other areas. Currently, we are struggling a little bit with the food because of pressure issues and the uh, natural gas mostly. And by the way, this is also another thing we need to sort out the natural gas. We have a farting dupe, so natural gas and also the carbon dioxide side of course will be taken care of. By now I think we can also go ahead and replace these tiles. Now Joshua why are you sleeping here? You should not be sleeping here. I think I'm gonna leave this mechanized airlock open as long as I don't bring extremely hot or cold materials inside of the base. The liquid lock there should just be fine. Good but now comes the fun part namely taking apart the old base. I'm also gonna pick up one of these pips. Let's wrangle it up. 
And then, of course, we want to bring it somewhere here. I'm then going to use one of these storage bins in order to plant the Choya seeds. Yeah, I want these guys right here for the pip to plant. Wait a second. I'm still missing a decor item for the Great Hall. I thought the hanging pots would be doing the trick, but let's maybe also get a flower pot. Gonna put this right here in the corner. We could get a Murph leaf seed in there. Another thing I want to see is, do we still have some Atmos suits just hanging around? Oh, the pip just arrived. Hopefully picking up one of the seats. Now I just see, it's going to be hard for the pip to actually reach everything, especially with the open doors. Wow, I seriously did not consider that. Just maybe we can do some trickery here. Oh no, I cannot place the doors in front of the drywall. Well, you know, in this case, I'm going to attempt to just build a tile. And then on top of the tile, I'm going to set down my pip. So critter drop off point is going to go here. And then I will just have to do this for all of them. But at least once I got it there, the planting should happen quite quickly. Wrangling up the pip again. Wait, you want to come back and actually bring the critter over here? Yeah, let me deconstruct this. Amari, thank you very much. Okay, critter is here. Now we can deconstruct this, build a storage instead with the seeds and then the critter is going to place it. In the meantime, this now has become a great home. So we have all of the good bonuses. And I think the nature reserve here is going to be crucial. Okay, we're onto something here. The pip seems to be going straight for the seed storage here. And then hopefully also planting it. Okay, now looking at this, our most pressing issue is going to be to finally cool down the base. The nature reserve is slowly but surely coming along. We will be taking care of the gases, don't worry about that. But I figured I would like to see my cooling system maybe here on the top. We're only going to need one steam engine and a tiny steam room with an aqua tuner. Let's see, my border would actually go right here maybe let me reroute this cable maybe i'm just gonna take a material that looks a little bit more industrial so this would be my top portion with the steam engine then i want a proper floor insulated out of ceramic however in this case i want to make sure my gas pumps are going up and above and go down here so again on the top here is going to be my steam room and at the bottom the aqua tuner room this room here only really needs to be too high something along these lines and then i still have the space to set up something else at the bottom and everywhere here now with growing industry we might have to increase the cooling power but i think we rather switch to super coolant and that will dramatically increase the cooling power but overall everything we have here in the base should be cooled down with this tiny system we can already go ahead and set up a aqua tuner i'm gonna need some more steel but i was able to print a little bit of lime before actually thinking about it i might want to make this space for a liquid reservoir yeah honestly that is not the worst of ideas let me go ahead and do that forget about these mesh tiles if we lower this floor by one tile and lower this one as well then i could accommodate a liquid reservoir oh maybe i could have even done it before yeah i didn't even have to do that in the meantime on the third planetoid we are slowly but surely accumulating the natural gas and we can keep up with the smart battery hopefully it's currently being stored in here yeah we're just waiting for it that means we can set up the interplanetary launcher gonna have this guy right here so i'm also able to access it from this side and then all we need to do is set up our usual system i think i'm just gonna go for one rapple generator mm, i should be putting them up one more block yeah i think i'm gonna do that you go right here and here and then hopefully we can do it with just this cabling. Should be possible. Hooray! We already got two Choya seeds planted. Where is that freaking pip? Yeah, don't escape. You stay right where you are. By the way, at the moment, I'm just dumping all excess of hydrogen right into the base. We'll be making more adequate use of that shortly. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this planetoid also came with a bunch of Wii's words. Let me see once Lyra got herself out of this mess. Keep going. Oh, Lyra. Ah, okay. Yeah she can't in this case i cannot really blame her yeah we do not have any ward seats i think it would be worth to send some over checking the star map asteroids mm, they're still far enough away i think <laughs> I have no idea. But we could analyze it. I think though I'm gonna be much quicker. Let's check for ward seeds. I have 15 units in total in this storage. So I'm gonna dump them and then hmm let me see. We can sweep them up but we should limit them to just two. So let me use that storage bin to kilograms ward seeds priority nine. Okay. Then open up the bunker doors. It's going to be completely safe and secure. And then go ahead, sweep these guys up again in order to input them into the conveyor loader. Somebody is experiencing high stress and that is Ari. I can see why. I might actually send him over some materials to build Atmos suits. What do you say? 
At least in order to go down, it would be totally worth it. I'm going to be merciful once again, setting up an Atmosu checkpoint. And then we can just bring these oxygen pipes down in order to fill this up. Should be easy enough. Well, maybe if I actually build it somewhere, it's possible. <laughs> now, I think I might already have missed the launch. No, ward seeds. Ah, I forgot to set this to two kilograms. Now I don't know how to reset it. Maybe by clearing the target and reshooting. Wait, where do I have to shoot? Right here. And yeah. There we go. The machine got reset. Okay. And hooray. We already have three Joya seeds. Ah, oh, this is amazing. Time to set up the park sign. We can make this out of gold or anything. Actually, let's maybe... Ah, we don't have diamonds yet. Well, gold is good enough. It's going to go right there. Making a bold move here. I'm changing the mechanized airlock to a manual one because I'm not powering it currently. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, finish it. Thank you. I'm just about to kill a bunch more critters and then let's move some of the farms somewhere they can actually last a little bit better. The block buckets I don't necessarily want to use anymore. I think the easiest one would be to just continue with the meal ice until we are over the food crisis. So let's say we set this up somewhere here, leave a little bit of space, maybe towards the top. Mm. This could be a little bit of a hit and miss when it comes to the natural gas and the hydrogen. There is my payload. How wonderful. We can open it up right here because it's the seed storage. The rappel generator is actually already going for it. Let's swap it around and then add the interplanetary launcher again. Lyra is radiation vomiting. Ah, come on. Just get over it. So meal ice is going to be good in the beginning and then maybe here at the bottom where we have carbon dioxide we can just go ahead and add a bunch more mushrooms. I finally got my ward seeds. Wait Lyra, you can go ahead and plant them right away. Uh, where are you going? Of course, building the launcher. That's fine. Yeah, she's already really good at building. Now, ward seeds are going for it. Phosphorite, we should have plenty of that on this planetoid. And here we go. Collecting quite a few rap bolts per cycle. Well, only 100, but it's still worth it. This means the only thing I now need is a conveyor loader in order to bring things into there. I'm gonna build this right down below. Then a bunch of conveyor rails. We also might want to ship over the oil. This is where we are gonna do it by, I think, just going down or up technically. So somewhere along here, I want to go ahead and start collecting the oil. And then we're just going to ship it over. Now the question is, are we going to be able to keep this up? And what happens if we got some meteor showers? As for the interplanetary launcher, I want to shoot this towards the second planetoid, especially the oil. The fossils and everything else is then going to be shipped over from the second planetoid to the first one. But the second planetoid right here is actually really chilly. And this is the perfect candidate to just set up an oil refinery and produce some plastic without hassle. The only thing I might want to send to the first planetoid is a Dracolid egg. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we should do that because the process of getting plastics from them takes about 80 cycles. So maybe our first goal is going to be the first planetoid here and we're just going to send the Dracolid eggs. Checking out the skills here with Ari, I went full on into mechatronics engineering and the difference here is I didn't do the exosuit training. So Lyra is going to have a little bit of a hard time if I went into mechatronics engineering right away. So we're going to reset her skills. That only means we get a free cooldown, right? Because now this rappel generator is cooling down again, potentially. Oh, oh. It's going to shoot. Right now it is still just heating up. We should be taking care of that, by the way. Just a little bottle emptier and then maybe some drywall so the water has a place to stick. Oh, oh, there we go. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it actually cooled down a little bit at least. Oh, geez, I just got a starvation warning. Oh, darn it. We now also went over the 1000 watts already. Well, that was to be expected. And Lyra has been reset. Okay, that's good to know. I want Megatronics Engineer. Let's get through all of that. We can unlock the digging later again. What I also would like to see is probably field research. And then we can do suit sustainability because it's a light skill. Yeah, 15 points. That's fine. Now she's going to be capable of building the conveyor loader and everything. Wonderful. There it is. Oh, not hooked up yet. Ah, everything needs power. We have to upgrade, guys. <laughs> There's the power. We don't really need that just occasionally. I'm going to do the same trick as with the other one. All I want to see is a critter dracolid egg. And actually, as a matter of fact, let's bring all the fossils already. And maybe the diamonds we're going to send over as well. Where is the fossil? Jeez. Raw mineral? Yeah, there you go. Okay, now we should be bringing some of that stuff over. And we're going to shoot at 200 kilograms. So 
it's gonna be worth the 40 wrap bolts we're using there's my bottle emptier i'm just gonna dump some liquid in here and that should hopefully cover everything oh no that was actually already turning into steam yeah we need a bit more <laughs> either way we now also have the fourth plant in place so all we need to do is cut off this room i cannot really do it conveniently right now but maybe let's rebuild the fire pole first this power transformer will still have to move uh what is it 36 degrees that's still okay yeah we have plenty of time it might not be worth it to set up the aqua tuner i would like to do this right there yeah that's fine after the aqua tuner i want the liquid the coolant that we're going to be using to go into a liquid reservoir that's going to be placed here i will have to change a few things here to make it convenient but just imagine the liquid reservoir is going to be here and then the steam turbine. But we first have to build the lower room, starting with drywall, obviously. And then what we want to see is a liquid pipe thermo sensor placed right in front of the aqua tuner here. This is going to allow the liquid to directly flow into the aqua tuner and the sensor is going to decide whether or not it's going to be cooled down. The water is going to be cooled down by 14 degrees and if it does then we can just continue and start the cooling loop. But first I want to go into the liquid reservoir which I believe the input should be on the top right. We should be able to check that yeah right here and then the output is going to be at the bottom. With the output I probably first want to cool down the the steam turbine that's going to reside here and we're going to do that with a conduction panel right here let's see this is probably going to be the center more or less let's rotate this that's going to go in here and come out there and then we should be able to start the cooling loop we might be able to go into this direction and then come back from this side or go down and come back from this side yeah probably both would be all right for now i'm just going to build this with granite pipe since i don't know the room layout but right here of course we are alternating between granite and radiant pipes and eventually i'm probably gonna exchange all with radiant pipes right here we can continue going all the way around and then we probably want to come up here again come up there again and then i don't know really what's gonna happen here but for the time being we're just moving back like so into the aqua tuner now, if the liquid doesn't need to be cooled down, then we are just going to bypass the aqua tuner. And technically, we want to go back into the same direction. The problem is just if this is connected, then the output of this is doomed to go into the input again. And all we have to do in order to fix this is set up a liquid bridge. Let's do this right here. And then whenever there's the space in this pipe, the outgoing or bypassing packets can line up. The liquid reservoir is here solely in order to make all the packets equalized temperature all the outputs are always going to have the same temperature and it's not going to fluctuate like for 14 degrees or so and that is technically all we need when we introduce the steam turbine However, this also has an output. Water output is going to come in right here and we have to hop over and then go into the steam room, dumping it with a liquid vent. When building bridges, always be careful that you don't build it like somewhere here. For instance, this is going to transfer the heat between one room and the other. But like this, it's fine. It's just going into the tile. But a bridge is very capable of transferring heat and it managed to confuse the heck out of me at some point. Now, Lyra is still vomiting like crazy. I don't know what's up with her her work ethics really drive me crazy lately oh 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 look at that the rat bolt generator is actually cooling down wow this goes quick very nice okay nice lira just input a thousand kilograms of fossils that means we're gonna send a couple of packets over now and we're also filling this up again oh yeah this was actually really good almost the entire load and then lira is gonna bring along some more we should be able to keep up with the power now i need to make sure maybe to free up the solar panels however this means my payloads are now going to the main planetoid and i will be able to produce a lot more steel because if i'm not mistaken it's the only thing that i'm missing iron to steel what's up yeah there we go it's just the lime that we're missing okay looks like apart from the mushrooms my farms have become useless here and then i think i'm gonna try to replace this with a heavy watt joint plate here and then just set up a door in order to allow the nature reserve to count as a room all my payloads already have arrived. Let's maybe just set up a payload opener. Yeah, I got it right here. So maybe I'm just going to place that here for the time being. Hook it up to power. And then my duplicates should be bringing the payloads automatically over here in order to be emptied. It then has a whole bunch of slots for all the different types of materials and gases that you can get. And I guess the easiest right now would just be to allow the items to drop on the floor. 
No, something counts as an industrial machine. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, I should just have moved the power transformer. <laughs> you know, until we sort this out, I'm just gonna make it easy on me. And we're gonna go up here through the roof into the refrigerator. Looks like we get to see another shot here. It's actually cleaning the contraption. Dreamer 4 is starving. Oh no, I did not keep my food in check. Well, the meal eyes are actually coming along. They are now all at 97% or so. And then what about the mushrooms? Uh, they're still gonna take like three cycles. Oh man, that is not good. But yeah, there's gonna be some pickled meal for the taking and we should be storing that in the fridge. Yeah, there we go. More food. Now we just need to cook it. Joshua, ah, there he is. Uh, meal eyes, where are you bringing them? Ooh, I should open up the kitchen here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, all of this should now be accessible. Maybe I'm even gonna open up this part. And as a matter of fact, we keep on deconstructing stuff here. There are also some unhappy plug slugs. We can't have unhappy plug slugs. They gotta go. Now, where's the second pip? I lost track of the second pip. Ah, there he is. H92, but we got a pip egg. Okay, so that means we can get some more meat from this guy. My payload opener is ready and there are some errands, but it doesn't seem to be a high priority. It's an operating skill. That means I need to set it to priority 7, like most of my other operating machines, and then it's also gonna get the treatment. Like Quinn was now picking up a couple of payloads, bringing them over, and they go right here in order to be opened up automatically. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And then the payloads are just gonna be delivered to my doorstep. So checking the fossils now, we have 83 kilograms so far. And then we should also have that Dreklet egg somewhere. Ah, it is right here. So Dreklet egg, I want to sweep that up and we want to bring it somewhere. Let me see. Maybe for now, I'm just going to bring it into the kitchen. And then we set these doors to automatic again. And the Dreklet will be trapped in here until we're ready to make a ranch for it. There it is. I just saw it. Dracolid egg. We're gonna release it again. Set this to a normal priority. Wonderful. Now this is at 75%. Still needs to incubate a couple of cycles. And now of course we should automatically go ahead and use all of the fossil in order to craft the lime. And we are gonna have a really nice and cozy situation ahead of us. So now the next step is gonna be to complete this pipe right here. That should be going down. And then all we have to do is start pumping up the oil and ship it over to the second planetoid for processing. We're going to do that at the beginning of the next episode and then we can also finish the cooling system and get this cooled down again. We are at 38 degrees. It doesn't really matter right now. These plants right here, they also last, let me see, up to 40 degrees. So actually we are kind of in a hurry, but it's not like my duplicates are going to die immediately. And as soon as the cooling system is in place, the entire base is going to cool down immediately. In the beginning of today's episode, we're going to launch our cooling system even if we don't have access to plastic just yet. We're gonna get access to plastic though in today's episode. Everything is already prepared here on the third planetoid. Currently I'm still shipping over the fossils to the first planetoid but very soon we're gonna switch that and send over the oil to the second planetoid. In the meantime, I'm already preparing a liquid pipe that goes to my water system in order to fill up the cooling room. But of course, we first have to build all of this. Maybe speed this up a little bit. I disallowed my dreamers from actually exiting the base, which is why sometimes they're starving because there's not always some food here in this refrigerator. And that is a little bit of an issue. Yeah, we'll probably have to go ahead and sweep this up with high priority until we have the cooking station a little bit closer to the destination. Also, I think Ari is soon can have a stress reaction but it's not actually a very bad reaction he's just an ugly crier i did send over some aluminum ore in order to fix the atmos suits and by now i think yeah we only have oxygen going in there's still a lot of polluted oxygen around here so we should be taking care of that maybe add another deodorizer and then once ra can actually equip an atmos suit he's not gonna struggle that much anymore you know what i never really accounted for the freaking dreamers since I didn't let them out of the base, now one dreamer unfortunately passed away. <laughs> Yeah, I've kind of ignored the warnings, but of course, all of our food should drop right away inside of the kitchen, which will happen once we have moved the kitchen. That is kind of unfortunate, but okay, one less mouth to feed, and right now we're not really utilizing the dreamers as intended. I still have to be aware of the next dreamer. This one here might actually starve as well. 843 kilocalories left. 
Joshua is also currently cooking and actually making some progress. Already gathering up some more stuff. Oh no, we are now getting into the hydrogen layer here. So the course of action is going to be to cool down the base and then to move the farms into a regulated environment. Checking with the third planetoid, it looks like there are... Ooh, this is low priority. Wait. Yeah, checking the fossils. We still have 22 tons right now. Let's check on the main planetoid. Wait, 83 kilograms. What about lime? We got also 80 kilograms. Oh, this is bad. So yeah, I'm going to allow Lyra to build the storage extension and then also ship over some more fossils. And look at that. The Wee's Wards actually work like a charm together with the water layer. It's just thing at around 30 degrees or so. If we had two rapid generators, this might not be the case. Now, unfortunately, it does not look like I can move the Dreamer. I actually have to use a memorial. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep the Dreamer here. Let me know if we can move the memorial after actually building it for the first time and getting a duplicate in there. Otherwise, I want to first decide for a proper location. Dreamer 4 saved herself from starvation. Very well done. But yeah, I think we're recovering with the compensation that was going on here. We have a body temperature issue at the bottom and then a atmosphere issue at the top. So now without any further ado, I'm going to focus on that system here. This needs to be built immediately and then I can fill up the bottom part with water and we can already get the aqua tuner running because it's going to take a while in order to heat up the water. Okay, I decided to sacrifice a bunch of the pacos here. They all laid another egg so I can probably just get rid of it. And thinking about it, I might want to switch from my current farming system to an almost complete paco fillet diet. Though it's going to take a couple of cycles to catch on. I'm still dependent on my current farms right here and that they start to work again. Maybe I'm just gonna add a bunch of temp shift plates here to make this better. That's three ice temp shift plates. I can get that out of here. Grab me one pack, grab me two packs and three packs. Thank you. And so hopefully I'll get over this starvation crisis. And then maybe I'm just going to build a bunch of emergency farms here. And then I'm going to decide where the fish tank is going to be. And of course for the hotel we want the best of the best food. And this might even involve the pacus. But if not we at least get the worker base already fed. Now we're almost done here with this room. Let me just go ahead and set up a temporary liquid vent here. In order to be able to dump the water and fill up the room. Wait a second. Snoring friend? <gasps> Wait, who is snoring? I don't understand. Did I accept a snoring duplicate? Okay, we saved one more dreamer, but looks like... Yeah, we need more food. Is Joshua on his way? Where are you? What are you doing? Sleeping? What? Wait, Joshua. Hmm... So he might have been... Do I need to change the schedule? I need to observe this. Maybe now it's a huge issue that the beds are so far away. Okay, now for the first time we got the cooked seafood. Let me actually check out the spice grinder. It slows the decomposition of perishable food. Rocketeer spice. What? It provides a boost to piloting abilities. Oh, this is so amazing. Strengthens even the weakest of muscles or improves operating skills when ingested. But there is none that will actually just overall give us more kilocalories. Ah, look at that. We're actually saved. We just need to cook this fast enough and then hopefully we're not going to have to mourn any more losses. Joshua made it to bed easily. The problem is ever since an update, they don't consistently stay sleeping. I think it might have something to do with the percentage. This time Joshua decided to sleep to 100%, but that means he did not do everything else in his downtime. Look at that. Gene is also sleeping here. Oh man. We got to switch around the schedules again. The problem about having the bedtime in the beginning was that if they don't get to bed in time, they will not recover all of their stamina. But then if I use the downtime slots for them in in order to get back to the base, then I'm wasting all of their time. Still, it would probably be better. Let me change this around. So that would be five downtime slots and then some bedtime. Now the problem is if they actually get to do everything they want and there's still some downtime left, they might actually go ahead and do a job and then they still don't make it to bed in time. One way we could solve this problem is by activating the water cooler. So they just remain here until it's bedtime. I think I want to test this out because right now I just observed too many duplicates sleeping anywhere. 
like me right here is also sleeping come on yeah let's switch it around so this schedule here and i'm actually gonna give them the five downtime slots so at least they are gonna be more efficient during the work time instead of sleeping but that means activating the water cooler they're gonna decide to spend the rest of the downtime there before sleeping and i'm gonna change that for all of these schedules the dreamers are still gonna remain with the same schedule just four downtime slots and then i think for the duplicates on other planetoids i can remain with the previous schedule so they would be making their way back maybe taking a poop before sleeping and then doing the rest and then the downtime here is not going to be wasted also that means i can finally open up the printing pot and the duplicates will not actually go there during the downtime because we have a water cooler which is much cooler Okay, I think we're ready here for the first step. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure we have this hooked up to power. Now, since this is going to be the very edge of the base, I'm probably going to have space on the right side and the heat transfer doesn't matter. And then I think I'm just going to do the same thing here for the steam turbine. Though I think this could become an issue when it comes to placing down the liquid reservoir. I'm actually not sure. Let me test this out. Liquid reservoir? Where are you? Right here. No, actually, we can place it. So it's going to be no issue. And inside the chambers, of course, we're going to go with heavy watt conductive wires. One more thing we need to add is some automation wire from the sensor to the aqua tuner. There we have it. Let's go ahead and activate the water pipes. Oh my gosh, you really did not build this. Yeah, looks like we still got a lot of meal lice to cook and Joshua is already on it. So we have currently nothing in the fridge. I'm just going to prioritize this for a moment and then put it back to priority nine so two people are actually taking the job just in case another dreamer attempts to die looks like we got some more fossils coming in from the third planetoid very good this is actually a whole ton there there it comes in fresh water i can't believe it it is going to accumulate right here all we have to do now is finish the loop the incoming water at the moment is 33 degrees, so it's not going to help us tremendously in cooling down unless we actually use the thermal aqua tuner. Okay, at this point, I filled up the room enough. I almost got one entire row worth of liquids. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this off right now, and then we can get rid of this part. In the meantime, my dupes are finishing the rest of the pipes right here for the cooling loop to get started. In order to start filling up the cooling loop, I'm going to use a little trick here with a liquid bridge, and we're just going to bridge over into the cooling loop making sure the output overlaps with the path of the water so as soon as the water did one entire cycle all the way around it's going to be blocked right here and no new water is going to be added unless we then add the liquid reservoir but let's first make sure we cool down this toasty environment at this point i think i also want to go ahead and switch the launcher to shoot to the first planetoid we can still send along some diamonds and fossils if we wanted or we would just use the teleporter to supply it to the first planetoid then but i much rather focus Focus on something else and that is going to be the oil so maybe we're gonna get started with an oil well here which i think does not come with an overheat temperature however it is going to require water and 240 watts of power so let's say we set this up right here and then we get a floor going i would then need access to this renewable water source here the cool steam vent uh let me see yeah i can do that because i'm using atmo suits here in that case i'm just gonna dig my way over here oh darn it lira you need to learn super hard digging and then we're gonna make our way down here in order to set up a pump liquid pump goes here actually wait that's gonna overheat eventually yeah i need to build it out of gold amalgam but then i start to pump this up and that only means i'm gonna be using more and more power which means my darn cable here is not gonna suffice anymore yeah i'm gonna build the oil well already but first we're just gonna make use of the oil we currently have which should be enough for the one or other steam turbine that's all i'm after right now in order to take everything to the next level steam turbines are just gonna be an absolute game changer and honestly in none of my playthroughs it was that hard to get the darn plastic i mean we could just wait for this dracolid egg to incubate which happens very soon and then we start to change it into a glossy dracolid and afterwards we actually get plastic so that's going to be the long-term goal but right now all i want to see is a pump maybe right here then gonna go ahead and bring this all the way up to my current pipe here and maybe at some point we want to make sure to get rid of the water and kind of trap it maybe here in this little cavity this would actually make it possible to still power with our current system and then maybe right here with the liquid pipe element sensor we can go ahead detect the oil if it's not oil we want to dump it right here that means we also want to set up a 
not gate and some automation wire right there. I had another drop of Pakus here in the printing pot. That's going to make it tremendously easy to get the Paku farm started. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. We could have started it with just one. But it's good to know we have some in case the farms start to fail. Or fail again, I should say. But it really looks like we now got plenty of food, 6.4 kilograms of pickled meal and some fried mushroom. Even more at 8 kilograms. That means I'm gonna get rid of just a few mushrooms here. And maybe also a few meal lice. Yeah, let's just get rid of maybe half of those. I overreacted. Good, looks like we have started filling up the cooling loop. Now I need to make it clear in which direction it needs to go. Like, why do you even attempt that? That doesn't make sense, right? Oh, it does make sense. But the only reason that makes sense is because I initially didn't think it would be going this way, but down. That means I have to switch all of these bridges. Uh, no, wait, you have to go into the other direction. Let me cut this off. I'm going to close this off briefly and then maybe gain access from the other side. That is going to allow me to place down the liquid reservoir. Okay, now this is going to make much more sense now. Let's switch that into a liquid reservoir right there. This is then already going to allow me to kind of fill this a little bit up, equalize the temperatures and then we're gonna take our little tour through the base. In the meantime, on the second planetoid, we can finally start to repair the Atmo suits. I should actually check how many reed fibers I have. Looks like I got 10 units. That is gonna be no issue. And then we can fix the Atmo suit. That also means I need to make sure my duplicant isn't capable of going down, except with the Atmo suits. Also take away access from this side. And there it is. So water should be flowing now. And it's just going to go straight through the liquid reservoir. I'm going to allow that for the time being until we have one entire loop going. And you can also already see the aqua tuner is doing something. Maybe right now I don't really want it to do anything. Well, maybe. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we can probably leave it running right now. But I definitely want to change the temperature setting of the sensor here to, let's say, above 20 degrees. So 20 degrees would be the temperature I'd like to see inside the base and as soon as we go below that the aqua tuner is gonna shut off now this thing is gonna take a lot of power so be prepared and i'm just gonna wait until we get one entire loop we can also already see the water here is now at a nice 20 degrees and also the metal tiles are starting to cool down yeah as a matter of fact we can see the gradient here very nicely as the water is progressing now it looks like we're stuck here i probably did not reconnect this just yet there we go and now we just have to do the final loop right there in order to turn with what we already have. Ah, look at that. My dupes are going to be so happy about this. Well, except for Dreamer 5. Here we are. And as you can see, the new water is being stopped from incoming. However, at 39 degrees. Yeah, it actually heated up to 30 degrees again. So that's fine. But what I want to do is, let me see, cut some pipes here. Yeah, I want to cut the output of the liquid reservoir, which means all the liquid is going to accumulate inside the reservoir. And this way we have a little bit of it as a reserve and to actually be more accurate when it comes to to the exact temperatures. Without the liquid reservoir, the temperature would be all over the place. Some of the packets would be 14 degrees, others would be 25 degrees, some would be 20. But with the liquid reservoir, we can make sure it's always staying at that temperature. And whenever the packets are coming in at, let's say, 25 degrees, they're going to be below the desired temperature. But because they are entering into the liquid reservoir, they actually only cool down what's inside the liquid reservoir, which will be significantly less than 14 degrees. So yeah, this is actually going to be extremely practical i would say wait ari is starving what are you talk ari you have no food whoops we have plenty of food i'm gonna send over some pickled meal i totally forgot about that at some point i'm gonna automate the food delivery for all the planetoids for now i just want to send over some pickled meal just everyone yeah looks like that's gonna be the entirety of the delivery 6.5 kilograms so now ari you should have a little bit of food left over at least for another 11 cycles i'm not worried about that what i meant to say is once all of the water is in sight we already know this is the exact amount that our loop actually requires because this is already half of the liquid reservoir i'm now gonna completely fill it up and that means half of it is going to be always inside of the loop and the other half of it is going to reside in the reservoir. 
and it's very practical since the water is 34 degrees it's going to be cooled down to exactly 20 degrees which is just absolutely magnificent by the way the water here is only at 50 degrees right now so we barely heated up well actually we heated up significantly but still kind of in a good way i'm now deconstructing this bridge so we add no new water to the system right there thank you wherever you are ren and that now means we can connect the system again and the loop should just go forever okay and now before something goes wrong we're gonna deconstruct this pick anything up we should be able to pick it up from three tiles and above so that means i'm gonna have to actually we might be able to pick this up yeah so no debris is actually gonna remain in this room but as of this point our base is gonna become cooler and cooler which means we can start to add stuff like the kitchen and other crafting materials that would otherwise tend to heat up the base too much and of course with added steam turbines we can now really get into the industry let me check the third planetoid again we built almost everything yeah let's go ahead set up this sensor here to detect what uh crude oil right there so crude oil is going through and then it's gonna go up and it's going directly into the launcher so we probably yeah already want to change the destination to the second planetoid that's where we are gonna treat the oil and then maybe also build this pump okay good stuff and then we can also maybe mop up a little bit of oil or just bring this over let it dribble down in the meantime on the second planetoid i <laughs> I just cannot find the Atmo suits. Where were they? What am I doing? Am I sending them over? No. I swear, I had two Atmo suits on this planetoid and they are just gone. Well, maybe we can build some with iron. I'm just gonna need two of them. That means 600 kilograms of iron, which I should be able to produce here. Colony achievement. What is it this time? Reach cycle 365 with a single colony. So that was actually just one year. It felt like seven. But just lately, it's now much less stressful that we've taken care of the food. Also, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna check out the new blueprints. We got something to do with rockets. Come on, show me. Oh no, it's actually a new wallpaper. That's amazing. Next up, we got some gloves and I totally skipped over them, but let's just keep going here. Basic crimson pants. Okay. The Drecklet, by the way, has hatched. I need to think about how to convert them to glossy Drecklets again. I think it was with meal lice, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, maybe you can let me know in the comment section. So I said I was going to produce plastic in today's episode, but I was going to cool down the base in the beginning of the episode. It doesn't feel like this is the beginning of the episode anymore, and I should probably move the plastic acquisition to the next one. And I know I'm a big fat liar. Go ahead, unsubscribe. Just, just miss the... The entire journey ahead of us or join in the next time when we take care of the plastic it is imminent we are already pumping stuff up yeah look at that it is inevitable we are just about to finally get access to plastic what we are doing first here is sending the oil from the third planetoid to the second one and we essentially just started to pump up the oil. We will be able to send over 200 kilogram packets. And of course, here we are expelling all the other liquids. We also already set the target here correctly. And we are ready to shoot with enough radiation or rap bolts in there. So as soon as we acquire the 200 kilograms, we should be shooting. Yes. Wonderful. This will then make its way over, taking about 40 seconds. That's basically nothing. So on the second planetoid, we then need to extract these. The best thing we can do here is just set up a payload opener. However, I need to bring along a little bit of cabling. The area right here is still kind of chilly at almost minus 40 degrees in some areas. And for the most part, this should still be safe in terms of radiation. But then what we really want to do is set up an oil refinery in order to create petroleum. And then we also need a polymer press. Oil refinery, we're gonna set that up right there. And then we also need a polymer press that I'm going to put a little bit further away. Both of these machines, of course, require power, at least when they are in use. And then all I need is to set up some piping. Let's do that with insulated pipes. We're going to go from the payload opener into the oil refinery getting petroleum. And the petroleum is going into the polymer press. My payloads have already arrived. Some of them actually landed in inconvenient spots because I haven't finished this yet. So maybe it's worth it to set up a beacon just so that we don't have to deal with this in the future. And in order to accomplish this, I'm gonna send over a little bit of gold in refined material. 
we should have plenty of gold and I just want to make sure we are filling this up at least once so we get a thousand kilograms. Now we can actually build the targeting beacon and all of these payloads will be landing a maximum of three tiles away from it. In the meantime, on the main planetoid, we have heated up the water here to 60 degrees. So this is going to be our new countdown as to when we need to be done. You know what? I'm going to leave this a vacuum. So we don't really have to be this complicated about getting inside the room. I was kind of thinking in the same manner we did the steam room, but for this upper one, it's not necessary. That's why we have the conductive panels. There it is. The targeting beacon. So future payloads should be landing safely over there. And we can see 1,200 crude oil is already lining up. Each shot only costing us 30 rap bolts. So sending it to the second planetoid also comes with a bunch of perks other than the easier cooling. Ari is now also finally in an atmos suit. He's going to be so much happier in the future. I'm proud of this little guy. And yeah, I think for as long as I have some oil actually queued up, I'm just going to keep shooting towards the second planetoid. And that hopefully will give us access to more than one steam engine. I think we might need about 500 kilograms of plastic per. You see, this is probably one of the only things that really bother me about this game. Just check this out. Ari is now inputting the materials into the rock crusher. And just to be sure, I'm going to put this to the slowest speed. So it's not the fast speed that is actually causing it. But what is happening is he's inputting the ore and then he's going to take another job here building even though the rock crusher has a higher priority that is because the rock crushing job didn't exist yet when ari was ready so he's just putting that right there and then he's going to do a building job however just to prove to you that he's supposed to go to the rock crusher as soon as i move him now that the job is available he's going to do the rock crusher and this is really annoying because that results in a lot a lot of inefficiencies whenever i have a higher priority on the exosuit forge for instance he's bringing the materials and then sometimes doing a job down here and then he's going back here because he was supposed to do that first and so sometimes you actually get this total inefficiency going when you have all these various priorities. But it doesn't always happen. I don't get it. It, it only happens after a while. Let's say when you have enough duplicates or enough of the planetoids in motion. Only then it starts to happen. I notice in the beginning of the game, they input stuff into the machine and then do the job right away. And it has nothing to do with the priorities. I just uh, proved that to you. So this is literally the one thing about the game that makes it extremely annoying to play in the long run. Now, the same thing here. Probably bringing stuff to the exosuit forge right there. And then, no, right there he did it actually. So the job started to exist before he was able to take another job. I've seen it fail with the exosuit forge as well. But yeah, we're getting there. Now building the payload opener and everything. Then we can start to grab the interplanetary payloads. We can see some more have arrived here. Oh, there was actually just another one. Nice. So plenty of oil for us to refine. We will be losing half of it in the oil refinery. So per 100 kilograms of oil, we'll be getting 50 kilograms of petroleum. And then the polymer press, let me see. It takes 833 grams of petroleum, outputting 500 grams of plastic. So we will not be losing quite half. Let's say we get about 30 kilograms of plastic per 100 kilograms of oil. Yeah, that is definitely not a lot. Before I forget, I wanted to protect this part of the base as well. Yeah, that's probably fine. As for the polymer press, it also has an output, gas output, which I think is just carbon dioxide. Ooh, we are going to be overpressured here. Yeah, that's probably not good. Well, maybe once we got the first plastic, we can then go for a high pressure gas vent. Yeah, I think I'm going to do just that. But we need the initial plastic to even place it down. And who knows, maybe we'll be lucky enough to also get some plastic inside of the printing pot once we actually made our own. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, time to get those payloads in. Ari is going up, taking an oxygen mask, going outside and collecting payloads. How many can you carry? Quite a few. Okay, that's good. Bringing them all the way down here into the chilly area. And it's going to be opened up and should automatically be brought over to the refinery. But the refinery itself will need duplicate labor. On the plus side, we can actually open up all the payloads and then process the entirety of the oil in one go. It should then go into the polymer press, but maybe even better, we should just store it in a liquid reservoir. 
So do that and instead go here. Maybe I'm just going to do that, get rid of that, and then it's going to go in. Yeah, that's better. Going to send over some more pickled meal here for the second planetoid. It should be enough for another 28 cycles. Will you look at that? More Pakus. Yeah, I take that. They can flop right over and down into my collection area. <laughs> look at them go. I just love these bastards. Ari is now actually feeling well for the first time, so his stress is also going down. And now he's just uh, building the rest of the stuff here. Yeah, that should make it functional. There are some more payloads. Okay, these should all be just oil. Maybe there was a little bit of fossils as well. And picking up even more. Yeah, look at that. I think we're gonna be absolutely fine. Let's process it. Ah, uh, yes, look at that. He's actually doing it. Ari. How wonderful. And it's just gonna go out. So the payload opener acts as a liquid reservoir itself. And this is actually really good. So we can already collect it. And you can see the polymer press is starting to produce the plastic. Wonderful. So what we now want to do is go ahead and set up a high gas pressure vent. I should have plastic. Yeah, there we go. I just don't have quite enough yet. But we already enough to build the blueprints with the mod. So within power, we can now grab a steam turbine and actually place it where it is supposed to go. Which I think I want to rotate it, if I'm not mistaken. Because I have planned the pipe over here. Here, the output of the water from the steam turbine and so that means we want to continue our wiring this way very nice i'm already looking forward to this we still have a little bit of time it's at 85 degrees currently and looking at the base it is now very nice cozy maybe even a little bit chilly yeah as a matter of fact what happened hmm yeah, the thing is we need to leave this running for a little bit. Right now it is still going just above the 20 degrees here. So maybe until it has equalized in the entirety of the base, I'm going to bump this up to 30 degrees, but then I'm going to lower it again, maybe degree by degree, because right now it is overreacting a little bit, just like me with the plants in the previous episode. The polymer press is also producing a little bit of steam, I think. But yeah, since we are in such a cold environment, this can run for quite Quite a few cycles until it is gonna overheat and we actually need to build a better system. In the future I think it would be better to send the oil back and forth with rockets but right now the interplanetary launcher is just way more convenient. And we finally get to do something with the plastic. Already 120 kilograms. What did we need for the steam engine again? Oh, only 200 kilograms. We are saved. That's like a piece of cake. We can already build like 10 steam engines this way. So without any further ado, I'm gonna send over some plastic. Where is it? Uh, manufactured materials probably. Right there. Plastic. Yes. Errands. Hmm. I think we're just gonna go ahead and sweep this up at a high priority. Actually, let's maybe build this first and then the rest we're gonna send over but the pressure vent is important we can already see this is kind of overpressured wonderful Ari why such a long face come on okay we can now also get rid of this gas vent then because the high gas pressure vent can take over 220 kilograms of plastic we just picked up there it goes oh my gosh I can't believe it it is arriving on the first planetoid whoa me is already picking it up yeah, look at that girl go. Steam turbine, I'm coming for you. And we even had still 20 degrees of time. Beautiful. Okay, so my farms have become useless, but I moved them downstairs. That gives us a little bit of time to come up with another system, such as the Paku fish. Yeah, I think we're going to go for a Paku farm in the next episode to kind of sustain the duplicates that we have. Maybe a farm large enough for all 24. Okay, I have to celebrate this moment. It is a glorious moment. Ah, oh, come on. Somebody take the job. Ren is coming for the rescue. Oh, yes. You have no idea. This feels so good. I've never been struggling so much to acquire plastic. I've always started on a planetoid where it was available at least after the teleportation. But there it is. As soon as this turns into steam and goes above the 125 degrees, we'll be able to pick it up with the steam turbine and also contribute to our current power system. And now maybe we should think about what else we can do with the plastic. For instance, we could make the volcanoes a bit more sustainable. Like if I check out the water right now, we are, well, we are only at 40 degrees. It's not that bad. But maybe now it's time to fill this up with a bunch more temp shift plates. I'm just going to build this at a high priority. Let's do brine. So I'm just going to extract 20 tons of brine here. I should possibly have that. And then my duplicates can build these temp shift plates, cooling down the water. 
something else I've always been curious about. What if you put a compost into vacuum? I've never actually observed this and I think it's time for a bunch of composts. Looks like we got some meteor showers inbound. It's the bad meteor showers. So we're gonna take some damage. Oh no, you bastards destroying my ladders. And of course this also means some of this stuff is gonna be rendered useless until I dig it up again. May, how about you uh, don't sleep here? <laughs> Okay, May was capable of helping herself out. The ladders are actually still usable, so why even repair them? I think I'm also gonna kill all the puffs here that are outside of the base. Yeah, actually looks like these guys are just working. Now, the question is, are they gonna heat up forever? I mean, does that even make sense? It probably makes sense, but it certainly appears like they're just gonna do that. So then the next question would be, could we just take a little detour here in order to cool them down? How is it looking down here? Hmm, much better. This is gonna be really good. I'm actually gonna build a couple more of these. Wait, I think we used up all the brine eyes. We still have normal eyes. Yeah, lots of normal eyes. So let's build some of these. Something else I would like to do with our new gained plastic. Let's sweep that up again. Send it over to the main planetoid. But yeah, I would like to make my way out of here. We can see currently... Ooh, my liquid lock has actually moved. But yeah, essentially I would like to make my way out of here. And then we would be going over and making our way out of there. For now, I just want this to be a more elegant system in order to get in and out of the base. There's probably going to be a ladder right here and then we could have the transit tube access point. Also, another thing I've been observing are the gases that we don't want inside the base. And it really looks like even the natural gas eventually is going to find its way all the way to the right side of the base. You know what? I just noticed I built the transit tube access point out of iron. What was I thinking? This should definitely be gold. Thank you guys. You're doing an amazing job. Now for a brief moment, I'm going to open this up to scrutiny. So deconstruct that and deconstruct the door as well. And we will have to replace it with something else. Uh, actually, is this the right moment? No, we don't have enough plastic yet, do we? Oh, actually, we might. Yeah, I'm gonna risk it. We're not gonna lose that many gases, just a bunch. Okay, come on now, Nisbet. Open this up. Thank you. And uh, come on, this tile as well. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, then we're gonna move this over. And we're also gonna get a transit tube crossing in. I totally forgot to power the other guy here. That's not good. Yeah, that's gonna bite me in the butt. I gotta wait with the transit tube crossing, but we can fix that. Okay, this is now looking much more promising. Get that done, my dear dupes. Oh, please, somebody have all the plastic necessary to finish this. Uh, this is actually looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! Okay, that is absolutely wonderful. Now we just need to finish that metal tile and the dupes now have a safe way to get in and out. Fantastic! I like that much better. And as of this point, whenever we get some more plastic, maybe we can connect more of the base. Just overall make it easier for the dupes to get around. This feels amazing. We should also go ahead and already prepare this guy to be domesticated. So I think what I'm going to do is just set up a very simple room. Stable can be 96 tiles. That's 92. Okay, that's not going to be too large. We're also going to need a grooming station here. Then maybe a critter drop off point. We want to plant some meal lice in order to turn them into glossy dracos. At least I think that's what it is. I will honestly have to check. But yeah, essentially that means we don't need a critter feeder for this. Just a door to close this. I just noticed I cannot even harvest these meal lice. The heat is also taking over. Yeah, looks like the desalinator here got a little bit heated. But maybe we can fix it. I'm also getting another ice temp shift plate in here. Lyra currently is idling around. We cannot really have that. Time for some ladder shaft. All of this can go and we're gonna completely free up the oil reservoir. Also, I want to dump all the oil that I eventually mop up from the places to be dumped there. Okay, when it comes to the old base, I want to start taking things more apart. I want to free up this entire space for industry and whatever the heck I want to do. Now, I wonder, what about the oxygen system? Do we have some spare time? Yeah, we have a little bit of extra oxygen that might allow us to re-enable the Somnium Synthesizer. But it would probably be better to sort out the food in the next episode so we can kind of dump the farms. And also sort out the plastic with the Draco. So I'm going to be focusing on the Paco Ranch and Draco Ranch in the next episode. We'll find a proper spot to permanently set up something amazing. In today's episode, I would like to make the switch to more ranching. We already started to prepare something for the Dracos, but I will probably end up moving it because it was a desperate attempt to get this done in time. But I've been 
thinking a little bit, since we're going to have all of our rocket silos in this region and then a heatsink below it, we have just enough space before the supply teleporter. Beneath, I would like to leave two spaces free for a maintenance shaft and then we're going to start with our farms. And we're going to get started with an insulated layer with igneous rock, maybe granite. Yeah, probably granite for the farms is going to be fine. We also still have a lot of sedimentary rock. Hmm, I think even that is going to be fine. So I'm going to go with that material and this would be the end of the farm. Let me see. Yeah, I want to make sure that I can cut this off here. On the very top, I want to make my Draco farm. And for the fish farm itself, we need about 13 tons of space. This would not really be a convenient format for the Dracos though. Hmm, actually what we might be able to do is continue the farms up to this point, And that would allow me to get a 96 tiles Draco farm here at the top. Considering we have an unlimited supply of gold, I think I'm even gonna do my farms with gold, but that means I have to make this even one larger, which is fine. Yeah, I think I gotta use the entirety of the space here if I want to do it like that. You know what? I don't quite have enough space for that. I think I'm not gonna do the farms with fancy gold tiles, but we're just gonna enclose them like so. This is gonna be the Draco farm. I need about 10 tiles down like so, and then 13 tiles across for the fish tank right there. Now let's see how we can get all of this built. Maybe get in here and then go up there. Now before I forget, I installed a mod called Rest for the Weary and it basically introduces a finish up schedule block that you can set before your downtime or sleep time. This block will allow them to finish whatever the heck they were doing right at this moment, but they will not take on any new tasks and they will already go back and therefore be at the base when the downtime hits. This theoretically means I could go back to actually cheese the system and uh, allow them to work during the downtime but I rather give them the time they need now. If we need more dupe labor done rather than giving the current dupes pain we should invite new ones and give them the pain. Something else I want to do research animal control mostly for the fish trap. We have one or two fish in this tank that we can utilize for our new farm. Well maybe we're just gonna take the fry eggs. They take a really short time to incubate. And it looks like we can take apart some more of the old base. Like all of this pipage here is no longer required. All of this cabling here also can go. Now we really need to make sure to be able to enter the farms and I would like to do this in a more permanent way just like we did it here. In the end of course these pipes are gonna lead everywhere but right now we don't have the plastic. As a matter of fact how much plastic do we have left? Yeah we already went through all the plastic. No new deliveries currently. Let me check. Uh, we are still doing the oil so what's going on? <laughs> Fertilization. Okay, I probably should go ahead and prioritize this. That, of course, is a no-go. Either way, we're gonna keep on building this. And I think I'm just taking away the ladders here. They're not necessary and, quite frankly, just in the way. It would probably help to open up the base now a little bit so my dupes can go and run past this wall. So I'm just guessing we're gonna have our transit tube access point right here and then a bunch of transit tubes going out. So this should be a transit tube crossing. And I think the way I'm gonna do this is just set up a ladder here that is gonna go all the way up but we're gonna replace like these two tasks here and I'm gonna do that with a pneumatic door just like that and that is gonna prevent the Drekos from escaping and my dupes still have access using the same transit tube point. Research already completed very good I love Jean just doing a magnificent research job. Now, honestly, this is not very advantageous. Maybe I'm just going to go straight up through the maintenance tunnel. That actually makes much more sense. That also means we could temporarily get a transit tube access point in here and then just do the thingy like so. Get rid of these ladders. Also, a very interesting thing I figured out about the panels here. Let me check these out right here. They actually only cool down the tile in the very center. So the machines overlapping the in and outputs, they are not getting cooled down. And you can see this right here that the first and the last compost they are being cooled down because it touches the compost and then the center compost is not being cooled down already reached 135 degrees i wonder what happens yeah melting point at 926 <laughs> i'm really curious to test this out 
I don't think it actually has an effect on the tile below. But yeah, as predicted, the thermal aqua tuner doesn't have to run too often. Maybe now we can lock it into the right setting. I'm going to go down to 25 degrees so it starts to cool down again. And the problem about this is the loop is quite large, so I shouldn't go down too dramatically. Of course, only once the water made an entire loop, it is actually cold enough for the aqua tuner to stop again. And that means maybe we would do much better having this liquid reservoir entirely filled up so the temperature changes aren't that dramatic. We now went down to 18 degrees inside the tank. Let me see, when is the cold water incoming? Not yet here, not there. Where is it? Right here. But it's still good. It's just going to be a little phase where the water is cooler than I really want. But then at some point it's going to reach the aqua tuner and it's going to equalize again. And there, the aqua tuner stopped. The almost 25 degrees water goes in here. And even though we are at, let's see, 15 degrees here, this is now going up again to above 20 degrees and then every now and then i'm gonna notch this down until we are at exactly 20 degrees around the entire base and then only huge events would actually break this anyways we also need to bring in the power and thinking about it i would like to do it right here eventually i think this is going to be more practical so what i need to do is remove this tile but then we would be continuing with heavy watt conductive wire and i'm just going to keep using iron now let me think what do we actually need to do we will need to power up a bunch of things here in the fish tank as well so i'm probably gonna go down here and then we build the infrastructure actually this might not be a good spot yeah let me first plan this out maybe and then we'll see okay we got new payloads with more crude oil that's good we need the plastic to at least build a couple more tubes as for the fish tank i'm once again gonna go with the design i learned from echo rich gaming it might not be 100 percent accurate but credits definitely to him check him out awesome oni player echo rich gaming the first thing we need is an area to hold the fish in which i'm gonna make six to eight tiles in width so maybe something like that let's make it four high so this would be the size of our tank right here say so we could then go ahead and install a critter feeder right there let's do this on the opposite side here i want to make a little holding area for all of the paku that are gonna accumulate and slowly perish in order to be cooked for your game's sake, it is important that this remains a single tile so the fish don't start to path everything. Now, it could be that I need a little bit more space here towards the left side, or maybe not even. Yeah, we could do something like that and that, which would allow us to set up two different shoots. Uh, to make this nice, we will probably just continue like so. And then we need to separate this into a different room. So more pneumatic doors, like one right here. Okay, now that we have that, I can explain the basic idea. We have a couple of fish that will be fed and actively catered for. So they're gonna lay many, many eggs. The eggs will then be picked up by an auto sweeper that we can also already build. Let me build that out of cobalt. I think that's what I build most auto sweepers out of. And for some reason, I have the feeling I have to build everything out of the same material. Like all my cables need to be iron. And I don't know where this is coming from. By the way, if I set up an auto sweeper here, then I should be able to reach into this tile. So going out from the center, I can diagonally reach into this tile and pick up any eggs or paku fillets that land there. And it also needs to be far enough away so it cannot actually reach these two spots right here. And then think Thinking about it, we need another auto sweeper here. Ah, darn it. I could have made this one larger. I figured the auto sweeper covers eight tiles, but it does easily cover nine. So let's get that thing right in here. This one is going to be responsible to pick up any eggs and maybe even the polluted dirt the fish are leaving behind, to put it nicely. Good. Then all we need are a bunch of conveyor loaders. Let's think about that. Could we maybe just have them lined up right here and they should be reachable by both of the auto sweepers so one would be getting the eggs the eggs would then go into the breeding chamber which is right here and then all of the egg variants would go into this chamber in order to be killed off so we have kind of a continuous breed and a, a pure breed going on basically then another conveyor loader would be responsible to get the cracked eggs and everything that Ooh, actually we need to be able to reach these right so bunker door goes right here and if the bunker door is 
closed, then of course the fish are gonna wobble over and they would be able to refill this tank. And we detect that with a critter sensor. So critter sensor goes right here. If we detect a certain amount of fish, then we are gonna close the door or open the door rather and the fish will just eventually land in this tile. The one big flaw here seems like the cracked eggshells are just gonna remain here. Wait, we don't even need this door. I don't think so. But what we need is a door maybe right here in order to separate these two rooms. And that means only the fish in this room right here are gonna count towards the critter sensor. And all the fish in this room and this room not. You know what? I have an idea. What if we added the auto sweeper here instead of there? This means we could still go ahead and reach this conveyor loader. And what do we want? We want the cracked eggshells and the paku fillets. And that could just be in this conveyor loader. And then this guy here would be picking up everything else. Let's say the correct eggs would be going into the center storage going up and all the way over in order to be dumped in this area. Actually, that's a bad idea because I can route it a little bit better. So this would be the incorrect eggs, like all the tropical fry eggs and whatever we are getting. And then this would be the correct eggs. This is a little bit more orderly. And then this right here would be the materials that I want to ship out. Let's say we are just going to bring them along here. And for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and dump everything right there. Okay, that now all makes so much more sense, I think. And I should theoretically be able to reach this. At least every time the bunker door is opened, I can also reach the eggshells. That means we just need a little bit of automation still. Let me see. Uh, cobalt. So once we go below a certain amount of critters, I want to make sure to open both the door and the bunker door here. No, the other way around. If we detect a sufficient amount of fish, then we're going to open the door and no new fish are going to be added. Now, Nisbet, I want to know something about you. Let me check you out. 19 of 18. Oh, crap. We need to make them a little bit happier. Now that we know a little bit more about the layout, we can also think about how to bring down the cabling and ooh i see bunker door now we don't really need to open it quickly but the bunker door is just so slow i mean we could easily add a bunch of transformers here thinking about it that might actually be the better solution yeah i think that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring this along here and then right here we would have a bunch of transformers Let's do it like so. Add a large power transformer made out of gold or whatever. And then we could take some conductive wires to easily power all of these things up. No questions asked. Now I've seen a bunch of idling dupes, but that is good. Instead of doing another task, they are idling around inside the base, around the water cooler, and then they are ready to enjoy the full effects of their downtime. So maybe eventually I'm even going to give them some recreational buildings. It will have to be on a day though where I feel a particularly merciful. It's time to get rid of that fridge here at the bottom and the entirety of the old farms. We have the new farms and now we're switching to Pakus and Dracos and whatever the heck we have going on here with the Plux Lux. That could actually be the thing that makes it squarish. Let's see, how much space do we have here? 110 tasks. Oh, that's even larger than I anticipated. So maybe we can do something here. Making a 96 tile large area for our Plux Lux. Oh no, what happened here? Oh my gosh, everything broke. And now the liquid pump is just... Oh no, did I break this tile? I'm so stupid. Yeah, let's uh, close this off again so the liquid can accumulate here. This just set us back quite a bit and also it didn't help our power issues really because now we have overloading circuits however in wise anticipation of everything i think i'm still gonna go ahead and exchange the power cable here with something a little bit more robust and yes i definitely like my big cables you can't deny it but yeah once again we're producing plastics already above 400 kilograms again that's gonna be enough to do the piping i'm sorry your little squeaky puffs but you gotta go yeah i gotta kill you so sorry at least you're gonna serve a higher purpose of being eaten also inside this fish feeder in the beginning in order to actually tame them we want to store a little bit of algae and then i think we can just switch to any seed type 
in order to make the fish tank functional, we need a little bit of polluted water. And I think I'm gonna snatch that from my cooling loop here. Let me see. Where is it the coolest? Probably right in the beginning. Wait, is it all 30 degrees now? Okay, let me move these temp shift plates over a little bit like so. But yeah, for now, we're gonna have to live with 30 degrees. I'm gonna snatch it from here, bring it already up. Let me see. We need to bring it here. Hmm, not convenient. It's a long way, but this is just temporary. This pipe in order to fill this up with polluted water. And then another thing we have to do is fill this bit here up with normal water. And I think that's just going to be easier with a bottle emptier like so. Lyra, what are you doing? 137 rats. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, y you can wait with that cable. It's not more important than your life, dude. Oh, okay. Oh, Lyra. She's going to be so pissed tonight. Yeah, radiation vomiting. Get it out of your system. That's a good girl. Good girl. I'm going to make these freaking lead suits soon. I swear. I promise. Well, we have to. At least once we get to the more dangerous planetoids. Like, right now, we can just recover by waiting a cycle or two. But with other planetoids, we would be dying instantly. So lead suits are going to be a thing in this playthrough. I promise you. Right now, I just want to get the first planetoid in order. I want to finish that farm that is going to sustain my worker base and my plastic needs for the rest of the playthrough. Man, it looks like we already have so much food, but a lot of it... Oh, yeah, a lot of it is a little bit stale. So I'm just going to preemptively compost a bunch. But it's not like we freed up a lot of room. We have... 82,000 kilocalories of fried mushroom. Wow, this is insane. And it's actually still pretty good, except maybe 37% here on the 11 kilograms. Maybe I'm just gonna compost that. Or actually, that might have been insane. But I don't think they actually take the worst food. Some food just gets stale because it never gets taken. Ooh, look at that. We have 1,025 dream journals. That's absolutely insane. I think it adds 60 seconds, doesn't it? Yeah, wow. Yeah, we have to reactivate this as soon as possible actually as soon as now maybe even you know maybe if we took the excess from both of these pipes we could do something like this and then if i cut this off and do something similar here then this means first of all we are feeding into the system here the atmos suit system but then as a secondary target we're gonna bring this down to the somnium synthesizer um yeah let me move this pipe here a little bit over and this vent is oh geez everything is in the way but i think i'm just gonna go ahead and hijack this pipe and then it's gonna go down let me see into this pipe which is already connected to the somnium synthesizer okay looks like we built the last pipes here. Uh, some more radiation vomiting by Lyra. Slowly she goes on my nerves. Like how many times do you want to vomit? She better watch it or I'll replace her. There is my bottle emptier. Let's get some water in the joint there. You know, actually, one question. Why don't we fill it up with normal water? That might actually make way more sense and we can still turn this around. So instead, I'm gonna bring some normal water over here and that will make total sense. Now, there's the bunker door, but we cannot really reach everything. I think I'm gonna open up this top just temporarily to be able to do so. You know, this room here is also large enough for a steam turbine, so we could theoretically temperature regulate this room as well with its own separate steam turbine and then we have the large power transformer maybe inside the steam room itself as a matter of fact that might be a good idea but we need to go with a small version yeah that should actually work out we aren't exceeding the 1000 watt mark Either way, now this room here, ooh, is 96 tasks. But if I make the farm, then we're going to lose some of these. So instead of building the farm somewhere on the top, we're just going to use these tasks here. And for now, I'm going to go with normal farm tasks because I think once we actually made the glossy dracos, we can switch to bomb lilies. But yeah, we're going to need quite a few plants. Actually, for eight dracos, we probably need more than this. But this is the amount I'm going to get started with. We'll see how it turns out. Okay. Okay, I think we're almost ready to get this going slowly but surely I want to go ahead and close this off so that is exactly what I'm going to do right now we're then going to be using the transit tube access point as of this point but we do want to condense the gases a little bit I want some hydrogen ideally in the first three tiles here and the way I'm going to do this is by hijacking my oxygen pipe right here and filling this up with a high gas pressure vent just until the moment we have pushed up all of the hydrogen I'm going to stop a little bit into the process and then we're gonna start adding a little bit of liquid which is then gonna condense the gases even more
more. So this is going to be somewhat of a delicate process and I actually might want to introduce the gases on the top here. That might make more sense. Also, I noticed they are actually idling around wherever they stand. So they still use the downtime in order to get back to the base. But it's still better than dropping the items or taking on a task that they can't even do. Here it is. Oxygen is now incoming. This is good. We can have a look at the distribution. The hydrogen should now be pushed up a little bit. Yeah, this is looking good. I think I'm going to open this up here. Let me just set this to green. Now this is going to open up. We can also check if the auto sweeper now actually works through this bunker door. And yes, indeed, we can reach all the tasks that we want. Wonderful. Good. As of this point, I think I'm now going to introduce the water. Let me go ahead and hook this up like so. And then we can start to fill up the first five tasks or so with water. This is then even further going to push the hydrogen up. And I just want oxygen on this layer. So the second layer should alternate between hydrogen and oxygen, but mostly hydrogen. The reason I want that, of course, is for the Dracos. Once they are in hydrogen, their scales will grow that we can then use to produce plastic. There it is, the beautiful liquid. Do we still have enough? Yeah, this is full. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much spare water for a long time. Yeah, I'm so glad this is actually not a pressing issue. The only problem is I need to transport a little bit of water over to the third planetoid or... Yeah, we could actually just use the cool steam vent. Never mind. This has probably a good average output. Currently it is dormant, so let's analyze it. Now, hold on. Before we add new oxygen, I want to make sure we don't already push this up high enough. Now my oxygen system actually isn't being served anymore. Okay, I did not anticipate this happening. This is sometimes so crazy. We have to make sure this is going into the right direction here. There we go. This is much better now. We can see the current alternating layer is right here. We still want to push this up one, two, three, four four blocks approximately like this one doesn't really count the water here is gonna push it up maybe two more blocks it will not be pushing up the entire layer because we don't quite use up that much horizontal space but yeah let's now see how the fish trap actually works i think uh, no it doesn't even require plastic which is amazing now we should build like two of these guys and then we should also have a drop off point maybe here right next to the fish feeder it is actually different here it's a fish release and we can add that right here making sure that we bring all of the pakus that we catch there let's have a look at that are we gonna catch some fish yeah yeah yeah. come on go for it no hold on we need to arm it first armari you should arm it setting up the traps wonderful and holy cow those fish really wanted to know now fish release we only want the normal paku and then all of the other varines we can extinguish right here in this conveyor loader we already know we're gonna have the compostable eggshells no what was that category like organics probably yeah we got the eggshell and then we also want to grab the polluted dirt possibly now this guy here how old are you nine i'm not even sure we can tame him in this time yeah i think it was funny to try out but i'd rather go with a fresh egg to be quite honest with you like this one here is 96 percent incubating and since i cannot decide to catch a small fish all i'm gonna do is set up a storage mm, let me do it there and we're just gonna bring along some eggs there it is priority nine this needs to happen quickly and we will disable it again but we want some fry egg please may here should be taking care of the job picking up a bunch of eggs actually a whole bunch also we got a paku fillet this is sometimes gonna happen so this auto sweeper should be picking it up and actually also bringing it to this conveyor loader so this is another thing we want to ship outside of the ranches edible paku fillets yes and that will be picked up immediately and then brought outside where we then can use it in our kitchen of course in the future this is going to continue sorting out the items then this conveyor loader here is only going to be responsible for critter eggs namely the gulp eggs and the tropical fry eggs and we don't want to get the fry eggs the normal ones this should be reserved for this last conveyor that goes to the upper portion there so critter egg Fry egg should be going over here. Wait, no pending deliveries. Do we only have one egg? What's going on? Well, we have a fry egg here that's being picked up and it's going to be brought over to the designated area where it can then, you know, just incubate and hatch. And now I need to set this critter sensor to the right setting. So what we want to count are just the critters and we always want three critters in there. If we are above 
three critters, then that means we want to open the door and not replenish the numbers. If we then go below three, only having two breeder fish in here, the door is going to close and the next fish, once it's hatched, is just going to flop over the door, replenishing the numbers. So technically that should be everything we need. We're going to tame this fish and then every subsequent egg is already going to be a tamed fish. And we can see the pushing up of the hydrogen here seems to be working more and more. Let's also introduce the Dracos and all we need for that is a critter drop off point. We don't need a critter feeder for this one but what we need is let's see uh, some stations. A grooming station for one right there. Uh, let's make it out of gold though. And then we're also going to be needing a shearing station if I'm not mistaken. Mm, obsidian sounds nice. Some of that stuff is going to require power so we're going to give it right there. But yeah essentially that's going to be it. I'm going to build this very quickly so we can get that critter in there. Where is it? Uh, wait, right there. Okay, I was thinking. Jeez, what happened? But the Draco is right here. We want to wrangle this guy up as quickly as possible and then bring it over. There is my critter drop-off point. Draco, yep, right there. We want those guys auto wrangle surplus and we're gonna do eight of them. There's my Draco already being groomed and everything. And as soon as we pushed up the hydrogen, we're gonna be golden in terms of feeding it. And then the process of transforming them over to glossy Dracos is gonna be imminent. Now I just see this pneumatic door actually should be opened up while this door is closed. So that's something we have to fix. Yeah, this should not go straight through, but it should be going through there. That's going to be a little bit of an annoyance, but otherwise this fish has uh, nowhere to go. But yeah, you get the basic gist. I'm now going to cultivate this and in the next episode, maybe we can already see the fruits of our labor. To get this farm running here, I think it takes about 25 to 30 cycles if we do it correctly. And then to get the Draco farm going, it will take a little bit longer, maybe 80 cycles until we actually have a respectable amount of glossy Dracos. But considering it's already almost cycle 400 this is not going to be that long in the previous episode we took care of building and equipping a draco and paku ranch currently we have two paku fries in here and i gotta make sure somebody is stocking the fish feeder and now that we have some algae in here the fish should be eating it and over time we can tame them this way which is gonna make their reproduction rate just go through the roof looks like we are being disturbed by another meteor shower and i think also we just cheered the draco here for the first time this will actually give us reed fiber and of course the dracos grow their scales in hydrogen however they also need something to eat and meal lice is going to increase their chance of getting glossy dracolid eggs. So now I'm just waiting for one more egg. Oh, looks like we are bringing the fishes over here. Ah, the fish traps are being reused. That is actually really interesting. I figured they would be a one-time use, but you can rearm them all the time and therefore bring new fish in the joint. Now, I really don't want these old fish. I just want to start with new fish. And so what I much rather see is three of these young paku fry and they will be growing up to be tamed. In the meantime, I think it's time to clean up the space here a little bit. I can already feel the impact of all the critters bouncing about. And this probably also means we can now get rid of a little bit of the farms. I'm just going to do it step by step in order to make sure we are not dying. But of course, once the Paku farm is running, this should be the sole provider for my kilocalories inside the worker base. Oh, well, you look at that. We already have a little bit of steam here with the Thermo Aqua Tuner. So soon enough, we're going to be producing a little bit of power, just utilizing the system with its intended purpose. Okay, now we actually have a little bit of a better idea how far we can push up the hydrogen here. And I think once this is full, it's going to be pushed up one more layer and therefore we might just succeed pushing the oxygen far enough. We currently have 1,500 grams of pressure here and 2,000 on the top. So we will have to possibly introduce some more oxygen. Either way, in today's episode, I would like to tame a volcano. And I think I'm going to do the easiest one right here. We already kind of tamed it, but it is still dependent on our cooling system, which is a limited cooling system. Eventually, everything is going to overheat. And since we have the materials for maybe one more steam engine, I figured we could just go ahead and tame this this cold volcano for good. The next dormancy is going to be in 52 cycles so that is not really an option and then the volcano right here let me see 
next dormancy in 23 cycles. Yeah, if I want to do it in today's episode, we're going to have to work with a erupting volcano, but maybe that is just going to make it a little bit spicier. Okay, we're approaching the 1000 kilograms mark. We should be able to push this one layer up here, even though the liquid vent is now overpressuring, but it is every now and then still going to allow a packet in, and therefore we're pushing this one more level up. Uh, actually, it didn't do it the way I anticipated, so I'm going to move the vent a little bit. Yeah, this is much better. I'm going to allow this to fill up to, let's say, 500 kilograms or so, but we're basically already there, so we know the hydrogen isn't pushed up far enough, and therefore I'm going to reconnect this pipe in order to allow some more oxygen in. And now we just gotta observe it as soon as the oxygen is able to push up here. We have achieved our goal. Uh, okay, I don't trust this. This is the problem. Let me go ahead and cut this pipe again. And my suspicion is if we open up a bunch of these blocks here, then the oxygen isn't gonna have troubles going through. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, oh it's being pushed up, isn't it? Not really. Thinking about it, these could just be airflow tasks, you know? Then we shouldn't run into this issue anymore. Come on, guys. You can do it. I believe in you. We have high pressure here at the bottom. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's working. It's gonna be fine. We now have enough water in this layer so that I can go ahead and deconstruct this again. I can still see the oxygen pushing up a little bit, so I have to wait. Gas distribution is always a little bit of a thing. They don't like to mix, but I can definitely see this is making some progress. Okay, let's think about our uh, project here with the gold volcano. The gold volcano itself should basically be inside the steam room. How cold or hot is it in here? Hmm. Yeah, we kind of have to make sure the steam engine doesn't overheat above the 100 degrees. We could still accomplish that with our current cooling loop. That might actually be the easiest thing to do. Yeah, let me go ahead and try something. I'm gonna cut off the loop maybe right here. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. Let's connect these together like so and then cut off this path. I then want to make sure we deconstruct the auto sweeper and everything here rather quickly. Yeah, all of that cable needs to go. Um, I'm gonna bring this in another way and then possibly all of this needs to go all of the rails need to go as well oh man there's so much stuff to take apart while the volcano is running maybe that is a really bad idea another idle volcano here this one is also just idle yeah all of the volcanoes are active at the moment even the aluminium volcano how disappointing so I think I'm just going to risk it. We just need to plan it out properly. We're going to go with ceramic. Gold is actually not that crazy of a material to cool down. Let's say we're going to encase it like so. We need the space for an auto sweeper to pick up the materials and also a conveyor loader. Both of these, of course, need to be built with steel so it can withstand the heat of the steam. I think what I'm going to do is set up the auto sweeper here, just centered above the volcano, and then also made out of steel a conveyor loader, maybe at this point. We're then going to have our rails going out. Here, you also need to be a little bit careful because this tile right here is going to be overheated to the temperature of the volcano. Just the centerpiece right here. I'm going to try to avoid it altogether, so lead no rails through it, except maybe we could make one out of steel, which has a melting point of 2400 degrees. But if we check the volcano, it's coming out at 3400, so it still can potentially melt this if I'm unlucky. Usually it would instantly turn into material that I can pick up, but we're not always lucky. Right on top of here I would have my ceiling and let me see we want to keep it small but still leave enough space. So let's say two, four, six, seven, and right here I would be making the edge. Okay my dupes are coming along taking things apart. Now I want to make sure to grab all of these materials get them away from the next eruption. Then I can finish this and that. We can still go in here for now. Hmm I'm not sure this doesn't look big enough. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger but first let me maybe put the steam engine on top. Steam engine has an overheat temperature of 2000 degrees or so but actually at 100 degrees it doesn't function properly anymore and I'm gonna put it centered over the volcano or we could put it centered into the steam room. Yeah you know let's keep the footprint small for the gold volcano. It doesn't really need that much power to cool down. And that means I can now lead my rails all around the room in order to start cooling it down with the steam temperature. The only thing I want to avoid is this tile right here. And we're just going to do that with a normal bridge. So avoiding this tile here altogether. And then we would be going up 
and maybe somewhere we actually have to check the temperature of the material and decide if it's already cool enough. Another strategy I'm actually interested in is just lead it through the room once and then assume it's been cooled down to a certain temperature so that we can go and use the secondary technique to bring it down to maybe 50 degrees. So it's going through the room once and then going outside automatically into a different cooling system. Let's say that different cooling system would happen right here. We utilize the entire height of the contraption to cool things down and these would be aluminium tasks. Maybe we can already place some. Let's say two tiles here three even and then another two there no we cannot make it inside the room now i'm then also already going to build the water output of the steam engine and put a chute right there this is also the chute that we're going to use in order to add the initial water now we're probably not going to be able to re-enter this room so maybe we should think about every possibility of failure for instance we could set up a cheap gas pipe right here this would allow us to reset the contraption and pump out all of the gases and this basically can go straight up and over into a gas vent and I'm even gonna steer this with a little bit of automation well maybe just a signal switch have that right here connected to the pump as a matter of fact I think I'm gonna bring the pump one up yeah something like this I like that and then of course we also need to power everything this is gonna be done with the heavy watt conductive wires so all of that needs to be powered up and we need to think about an exit strategy I think in the future what I would like to see is maybe one power cable going up and down here on the side so that would be a good opportunity to maybe set up a heavy watt conductive trunk plate here oh can i not do that ah my signal switch is in the way so i'm gonna put the switch here on the bottom and this would allow me to set up the trunk plate right no what there's nothing in the way now uh let me ah ah okay <laughs> editing nathan oh, I'm, I'm not even gonna ask so now in the future i can probably bring this right up here and over and then connect that okay that also means i don't necessarily want this to be a metal tile but this should then just go over here the insulated layer but that would mean we only really have four metal tiles in order to cool down the rest i think it is possible i did it with just a couple of tiles here as well yeah it's like five tiles but it definitely is mostly enough especially if we first cool it down with the steam engine and then afterwards cool it down with the aluminium tiles so now all of this needs to be built extremely quickly but even more importantly people need to pick up the stuff on the floor but meep should be taking care of that look at that plastic it actually happened nice i take that for sure i know i'm using it way too often but i just love the priority 9 command it just makes all duplicates focus on the task on hands of course only the building duplicates really and the ones picking up the materials but as you can see we are erupting in 0.2 cycles and i was capable of getting all the stuff out in time now i actually wonder what is gonna happen yeah we'll have to build these rails a little bit weird like this is not gonna go well oh my gosh i did not think it about the ramifications how about we add a little bottle emptier here maybe open up this insulated tile yeah this is now gonna spread and actually melt some of my rails possibly uh wait that's not okay i have an idea uh no it's too far away oh geez i was not uh properly thinking this through come on build that bottle emptier for me and uh, maybe yeah we're gonna overheat so crazy bottle emptier i need liquid bring me water as quickly as possible we all knew this was gonna be a crazy project here we go this should uh, almost instantly turn into a little bit of steam at least but it might also help us to keep things cool to keep the steam turbine cool we're gonna bring our cooling loop here over and then i think we can just do something like that get into a radiator panel then go out here again and move back over there in order to then cool down the metal task for the second cooling phase so we just go through all of these like so yeah that seems to be fine and then we can join up with the loop again add some bridges here and there and then of course where's the panel conduction panel that's what it's called i'm also gonna build that out of aluminium just because okay nice ren is now building all of the rails which is fantastic and i think if i ever wanted to do the maintenance then i would be coming down here so maybe i'm just gonna keep a little ladder in place and if I ever need to do maintenance, I can open this up. Also, honestly, I really would like to see some drywall here since this is going to be a completed build and I'm kind of a sucker for backgrounds. 
How about the aquatic mosaic? That could be a thing here, but let me see the melting point. It's 668 degrees, so we definitely should avoid the tiles here that we cannot see anyways. That means the center tile and the tile at the bottom I'm not going to do, but the rest I'm going to do. And then hopefully maybe this is going to look just right. Yeah, check this out. Gold just is so weak. It is really so weak. One steam turbine is way too much for this. We're probably going to barely produce any power with it. But you know, it's good to know that we're going to have infinite gold just from this very small and almost independent contraption. Of course, at some point we have to entertain this cooling loop, which is not really entertained. Uh, right now we just recycle the cold water we have going on. But eventually this is going to be taken over by a cooling system as well. And right now you can see the gold is almost immediately cooling down. It's going to be a piece of cake and we can just replicate this for the other gold volcanoes. And potentially even other weak volcanoes. I have to see. Some volcanoes actually require two steam turbines. Let me know. Is the cobalt one one of the dangerous ones? I do know the aluminium volcano is probably going to require two. Colony achievement. What is it this time? Have duplicants travel 10,000 meters by travel? Wow, that is absolutely insane, considering we only travel like 5 meters at a time. <laughs> But yeah, I take that achievement as well. Good, looks like we're done with everything. This also has the power. We can potentially close this off. Uh, let me see. There's still some debris just hanging about, but we can actually make it exit through the conveyor here. So that means I'm going to close this off and finish it. We also have the system built. That means we can connect these two tubes again and then cut this. Wait, how is this? What? what? Ah, it is supposed to be coming in from the bottom ah i see okay i built this the wrong way i rather have this come in from the top honestly so just ignore the weird construction i'm making right now this is gonna change again but basically the bottom one is now gonna go up go through the loop and then go down and then we can just do that again in order to turn up with our system but i'm gonna switch that once we switch the cooling loop in the meantime, though, I'm going to close this and get rid of that. Actually, let's just disallow manual use. And I'm also going to activate the conveyor loader just all. And yeah, that's good. I'm also going to activate the pump so we can get this to be a vacuum, which should not take very long. And yeah, now I'm just missing a dumping ground for my items, which I'm going to do probably here for the time being. And then once we have a vacuum here, we just need to make sure to add enough steam, aka water. You have to imagine this is already 200 kilograms of water here which is gonna be divided by four in order to fill up all of the tiles with steam so if we leave it at that it's already 50 kilograms of steam in this room which might be enough and now my items are just going through the cooling loop nice and of course these tiles here are actively being cooled and therefore all of these items should come out at the 40 degrees or so there goes the oxygen at just a couple of micrograms i think we can do it even before the next eruption yet yeah, 70 seconds away come on i believe in you Oh, it's going to be quicker. We are at 20 micrograms. I think at 5 micrograms, everything disappears. There it is. Uh, 5 micrograms. Go away. Uh, no, no, no. The volcano won. It technically happened at the same time, you could argue. But yeah, now you can see the auto sweeper is picking things up immediately, which is not necessarily what I want to happen in the beginning. You see, right now, there's nothing cooling down the auto sweeper except for the steam that I want to produce. So until we actually have the steam, my suggestion would be to disconnect the auto sweeper. And oh, look at that. It actually, whoa, that actually went much quicker than I anticipated. Uh, woo! Wait, wait, you have to stop. Of course, I started to pump out the hot steam. That didn't make any sense whatsoever. But now that we actually have the steam, we can just reconnect this and get the auto sweeper to work. And therefore it should auto... Uh, what did I do? Ah, I see. My bridge melted. Now that is slightly disappointing and I'm gonna try it with steel this time around. So we just have to get back in there in order to build it. To do that we open up the insulated tile and I can just use the gas pump again. Okay, I got my rail reinstalled. Now the thing is, as long as we don't have any steam in here, the rail is gonna overheat. So we need at least a little bit of steam before this is actually secure. This is actually an interesting situation. I was so sure that I could avoid this with the bridge. So I'm gonna put a temp shift plate right 
right here and then with the first eruption this is gonna melt and not melt the conveyor rail also we get some more water in the joint that is so interesting even though this is technically an empty tub there's no oxygen going through and i have absolutely no idea how this is possible just one gap wide areas are very weak when it comes to oxygen distribution and now it broke through and of course it filled the room up again jeez unreachable toilet what the heck joshua ah wait is this gonna what uh what's the problem you cannot get inside the base is there an issue with the base other than the rotting corpse i mean why the heck are you eating here that doesn't make sense joshua okay why was this unreachable maybe i have too many exosuits no idea i have no time for this right now okay looks like we got the joint plate in there actually as a matter of fact it already melted so never mind let me check that rail here conveyor rail steel how hot are you currently 200 uh, 300 6 500 yeah it, we're just gonna overheat Heat. so i really gotta make sure with the next eruption we get the steam i really thought this is gonna be uh, much easier jeez you know we even have to make sure the steam turbine isn't doing anything right now i'm gonna add a little bit more of the oxygen here to push this up it really needs to go beyond the mealwood there and then cut it again allow it to distribute and check back later okay how is it going here still gases next eruption in 0.7 cycles that's good we can probably then shut off the pump there and then we just need a tiny flash of steam in order to not allow this conveyor rail to break checking out my paku they are still hungry and that is something i don't get i've had this happen to me multiple times so i think i'm gonna reset that just get rid of everything and then not gulpfish wait let me do the paku and give them algae okay i reinitiated it and they still don't seem to be eating look at that it's right there algae fresh algae for you boots, 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 boots. okay don't have time for this let's get back to the volcano erupting in 0.2 cycles now just allow this to work that would be absolutely amazing i would love it there it is raising pressure i'm gonna remove the gold that is already cooled down yeah this can just go ahead and leave five four three two one blast off uh-huh steam 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 come on come on come on oh i don't even want to know it's at a thousand seven hundred degrees nine hundred two thousand no it's gonna overheat come on give me steam give me a little bit of steam yeah okay with it did we, did we do it? We did it. Look at that. Look at that. It's back at 247 degrees. Oh my gosh. Oh, this was so close. It almost melted. It was like 100 degrees away from melting. Now we just got to make sure that the steam actually remains in here. But it is probably going to cool down because of the water that is still here. So maybe we're not in the clear yet. As soon as this doesn't cool down anymore, I'm going to pick it up again. And then we'll see with the next eruption probably. But yeah, once this is working, I think I'm just going to wait for the next dormancy of this cold volcano so that we can do the very same thing we can still use the same cooling loops the cooling loops are gonna be dramatically less stressed because it's just responsible to cool down the steam turbine instead of the entirety of the volcano uh i think we're gonna lose all of the steam aren't we yeah it's already condensing again <laughs> oh jeez this is gonna be so stressful well you look at that we actually almost don't have enough power now that the natural gas geysers are dormant so i think we have to enable the hydrogen generators again with our current situation there's actually an interesting pattern here with the carbon dioxide it accumulates here and it's just because of this block eventually i'm gonna have to change this yeah but we probably don't have that wire in here yeah i'm thinking i can remove all of this in the future and so setting up a carbon skimmer here would be beneficial oh never mind natural gas generators are coming back here next dormancy 67 cycles yeah this one just activated knee sped unreachable food now this is so interesting why uh, can't you go out let me see move two you can move here you can move there you could move in Ooh, you cannot move into the base wow that is so curious why isn't she allowed inside the base ah it might have been the finish up schedule thing that actually is causing this because if i wait no she's idling she doesn't know what to do now she's going back 
Okay, that is so weird. Maybe installing this mod wasn't a good idea. I have to observe it. Uh, hold the phone. Did we already survive the next eruption? Yeah, I totally missed the next eruption. But it looks like we're still good and the water by now is already 70 degrees. Not too shabby. I'm actually pretty happy with the results of this episode. We figured out a pretty compact and nice design that differs from what I previously attempted, which is mostly just recycling the items until they have a certain temperature. But I believe we can get this down quick enough and then use these four aluminium tiles to cool down the rest to at least 32 degrees or whatever the heck we have going on. Today I would like to do the very same thing with the cobalt volcano however with a slightly different idea from the comment section I think this might actually just work out for the cobalt volcano and so I think I'm gonna plan this out right away. Currently this guy is idle. I would like to surround this with ceramic and I would like to make it let's see one two three four five six seven uh, let's do eight tiles or so and I'm also gonna make this four high a standard room size now this looks slightly off but it's just because of this neutronium tile anyways another thing I would like to see is an auto sweeper this one here doesn't need to be built out of steel because I'm gonna do it differently by actually filling up the entirety of the room with a liquid no wait thinking of it this is gonna overpressure the cobalt volcano okay it looks like 150 kilograms of pressure is gonna overpressure the volcano that means if we get more than 150 kilograms of steam per tile it would not be allowed to erupt i have a little bit more than 300 kilograms in here so this should add up divided by four but we cannot do the same thing here so i think what i'm gonna do is just utilize the bottom row in order to cool the entirety of the metal down that means we don't need to make it this large we just need to encase it then the auto sweeper could for instance go right here and the conveyor loader at the bottom i just need to make sure that all the machinery is also touching the ground floor otherwise we will not be sufficiently cooling it down unless we also fill it up with a little bit of hydrogen that is a possibility you know i actually really like that idea we could just set up a high gas pressure vent let's say right here and then we just pump down a little bit of hydrogen let's maybe do it from here bring this all the way down into there you know what i'm gonna swap these two guys here so the auto sweeper is on this place right there conveyor loader here and then the high gas pressure vent there this is gonna allow me to set up some conveyor rails we can only initially cool down on this layer and now you gave me a really good tip i totally forgot about and that is the wolframite material if we check this out right here the melting point is 2900 degrees so an extra 500 from the steel now if we filled the rest up with hydrogen gases then we would be going just through the room in order to cool it down and then we do something similar for the last phase of cooling and that is a bunch of aluminium tiles here just three though hmm maybe we make it four high still this would allow me to wiggle back one more time and then do it on the other side that makes a little bit more sense and then i'm gonna switch to aluminium or for the rails right here actually did i do it here the rails should be aluminium yeah i need to exchange those also some people have been worried about this heavy conductive charm plate because it, of course it can transfer the heat outside but this is gonna be a shaft here with a power cable that is completely free of gas so it will not matter either way this is now not gonna be a steam room but a room that we actively keep cool and we're gonna do that with a cooling loop some aluminium pipes right here and yeah i guess we can just go ahead and follow the pattern there though i kind of want to do it from the right side so i'm gonna wiggle the other way around Ooh, let's not break the tile just yet and then at the bottom here i would like to set up a steam room that is capable of cooling down all of the volcanoes so i'm gonna make it somewhat expandable first of all we need to get rid of these maybe not all of them but say we have a three high steam turbine room and then we do something like this this would be the end of the room oh we don't have materials wait oh no i forgot to keep crafting the ceramic that is a slight mistake let me add another one of these also i exchanged the bunker door here with two mechanized airlocks and then we also have to make sure this is actually closed off so all of the eggs that actually land here are not influencing the fish and therefore the fish will breed infinitely another thing that confused me was this paku here as soon as it is no longer alone it is actually already overcrowded and i'm curious is it because it is water and not polluted water because usually i only see natural fish in polluted water it might have been a mistake to use normal water even two paku are already overcrowding this room by the way i'm gonna leave this space for about two steam turbines right now and then let's see only these guys need to be ceramic this doesn't need to be ceramic anymore so i can switch to hmm 
igneous rock probably you know thinking about it since this room is going to be a cold room none of these tiles really need to be ceramic however the tiles here at the bottom i want to make ceramic because there's going to be the steam room below and the fewer heat exchange the better of course the steam room i think i'm gonna make three high like so and we're probably just gonna get started with a single aqua tuner and then we'll see by the way this compost by now reached 522 degrees i'm proud of it also i'm still struggling here with the gas distribution it just doesn't work even though it pushes it up the way oxygen not included works these gases here the oxygen just attempts to go beneath the hydrogen and it's just so weird so one way I figured we might be able to fix this is if we moved all of these farms one tile down, then the oxygen could be trapped inside the farm and the rest of the room could just be hydrogen. I mean, honestly, the entire room could just be hydrogen in this case. At least if we manage to trap some oxygen here. This also means the room will get bigger, but we also don't really have the amount of farms that we want. Also, as soon as we get the glossy Dracos, we can change to a different plant that doesn't require oxygen. But it will require a different gas, so we could just go ahead and exchange it. Let me Google how many plants are necessary per Draco. Each Draco needs three to four mealwood plants to not starve. Some research suggests glossy Dracos require a one-to-one -one ratio, so eight plants. Let me see, that's uh, not eight, that's seven. Crap, we could put the eighth right here. Okay, that might make sense. If we push it all down, that would be eight plants. This would bring all these plants down and catch a layer of oxygen here at the bottom. Then I think I would be exchanging these tiles still. No, wait, that doesn't add up. Let me move this critter drop off point uh, to over here. Is that even possible? No, it's not. Let's put it there. Okay, now the stable is officially too large. We will have to make it smaller, but this will make things look even better if we, for instance, did something like that. By the way, looking at the Paku, the wildness went down to 71%. It's uh, bound to lose about 15 to 20% per cycle. And then whenever it lays an egg, the offspring will remember the taming status. So we can just continue as of this point. Even if we don't tame this first Paku, we will be doing it with the next one. And if we check the Draco here, the glossy dracolet egg chance already went up to 13% because it ate mealwood. So I'm not even sure it's going to be worth it to do the oxygen experiment. We might just go ahead, exchange all of this chamber with hydrogen and then add just a tiny bit of chlorine for the bomb lilies that we need for the glossy dracos. As a matter of fact, we might be able to just find that out. Glossy draco, what do you eat? Mealwood or bristle blossoms? Oh, okay. I might be wrong. Oh crap. Bristle blossoms would be horrible. Can we just keep feeding them meal lice? The diet of glossy dracos has been altered. They now consume pinch up pepper plants and meal wood plants. Are you serious? Okay, wait. Is dirt gonna be sustainable? How do we produce dirt? We will then have to find a way to replenish that. You know, I wonder, could we rotate these around and plant some pinch up pepper and all they require is 150 grams of air pressure? Like we could have the entirety of the room being hydrogen and it wouldn't matter, right? But it does require 35 kilograms of polluted water every day. That is a lot. And it also takes a kilogram of phosphoride per cycle. Well, that's not a lot. Ah, the temperature could be an issue. 35 degrees is not the temperature I would like to see in here. Yeah, in this case, I think I might just go with the original plan, but we keep that in mind that we could switch the design to accommodate the pinch of peppers. But let's do this one here first with uh, meal ice in this case. So we just plant that, but we also should disable auto harvest. Like we do not want to harvest any of these plants. Let's get rid of these for now. I don't think this guy is starving. Yeah, happy and tame. Now we can go ahead and plant all of these again. This doesn't count as a stable anymore. How large is the room? Let's check. Room size 100 tiles. That means we are four tiles too large. If we moved all of this one block over, I think we could just take away four more tiles. Problem solved. Now with the machinery, this doesn't really look good. I wanted to have it centralized so the Dracos don't take too long to actually get to the stations. But then we have this huge cable and I think I'm just going to continue with this one. We have 840 watts on this one so we could easily add the shearing station as well. I'm going to add that like so and then we get rid of the original ones. And all I have to do is bring up the cabling and power the shearing station. This allows me to get rid of all of this also, some of the concerns I want to get away with is the cabling here. Heavy watt cabling. A lot of people are just wanting me to use transformers everywhere, but I really don't like that. And the argument people are using is the decor value. Oh my god, look at that! 
We were losing... Wait, this is not there. Oh my gosh, we were losing pressure all the time here. Uh, solid charcoal. This needs to be done like immediately. Anyways, what I wanted to show you is the decor value right here. So if we check this out, total decor 49.5. So it's still a positive decor. And then even right here where we have all of this cabling, if there comes decor from all sides like this, we have 120 maximum decor. There's no more decor that I could gain from here. And then even checking out here, it's 120 nine right at the tile where the cable goes through and there's even an ugly atmo suit and everything so decor is really not going to be a, an issue the only thing i want to avoid is that the duplicates are running around the cables the entire time so i would like to bring the cable over to the left side somewhere and then the duplicates running around will not have this very negative effect of minus 409 or so transformers i think make it unnecessarily complicated and it doesn't help with the cable spaghetti okay now i kind of gotta make sure we close this off now that i have this full of oxygen and if i put this to a high priority just this tile then we should be able to trap the oxygen and then the rest of the oxygen should behave as previously that means the hydrogen is going to be pushed down here again and then this entire layer here wherever the dracos are they can grow their scales there it is and this is just perfect now i can lower the pressure of the room so we don't have what almost three kilograms here and before i forget the zable harvest that's just for the Dracos. We can lower the pressure a little bit by opening up this tile here, for instance. Mm, yeah, this is just going to push out the oxygen. And that also means I probably don't want any new oxygen to be in here. So we can uh, deconstruct this. And there it is. Okay, wonderful. It should now be flowing out gradually. Oh, I just love how the gases are moving. This has fascinated me from the very start of this game. Now, I think to make this look even better, I'm gonna complete this layer. And what I would like to see is the flickering of the gases go down to this layer right here. We can accomplish it. Whoa, it's a battle of the gases here. That's kind of incredible. But I think overall it's working. We're now down to two kilograms per tile. That allows the hydrogen to hopefully push down a bit more. Because essentially the hydrogen should stay the same while we get rid of a little bit of oxygen. But this sneaky hydrogen here is kind of acting like a barrier as well. So we are only getting rid of it slowly. But I think this is the perfect solution to our meal wood problem. And if we can just keep these plants, then why not? It's just like 10 kilograms of dirt per cycle. Let's round it up to 100 kilograms for all the plants. Plants. That means in 10 cycles, I use one ton of dirt. We need to be able to replenish that over time. Oh, very nice. Okay, this is now looking promising. It is coming down more and more and the flickering is happening here. So what I'm going to do is close off this hole again and wait for the gases to settle a little bit. But it does look very promising. So this seems to be working. Even though it's kind of an unconventional design, maybe we are going to wrap it up like so, so that we can have a clean room at the bottom. But yeah, this actually has been amazing. I mean, we don't even care about the layer here on the top because Dracos are never going to be there. So just here, they're not going to grow their scales. I like it. And now it's time to take care of the volcano contraption here. I'm just going to do this quite quickly. Like one more thing I want to add is a liquid vent. I'm going to do that here. And that also means I want to avoid this part here with my radiant pipes. We're just going to go through like so and so. And then here I still have the space in order to add a little bit of water if I want to. And I think I'm just going to be all fancy and set up a switch for this. Now before I forget some drywall for this one as well. Except for the two tiles here in the center volcano in the meantime let's check this guy uh gold yeah that's all good and it's all steam now that's very good 97 kilograms i like that number that means we can now probably re-enable the auto sweeper and let's just observe this right now it's still at a hundred degrees so the same temperature as the room it's in let's see how much we can get it down right here it should hopefully be around the same temperature uh-huh there we go this is 40 degrees perfect now can we keep up is the question well maybe with gold it's going to be easy but it's also going to be easy either way since we're only cooling down low quantities very good we already have 30 tons of gold by the way which is absolutely amazing so maybe we should also make gold tiles as a background somewhere also when it comes to steam turbines let's set it up mm, i'm gonna go with cobalt here and we're gonna do one here and another one would go there that knee bed is singing oh, this is amazing 
I love it. By the way, second steam turbine goes here. Let's maybe mirror the design so we can combine the output. Uh, actually, that's not really convenient, is it? It's not going to be symmetrical. <laughs> yeah, let's forget about that. I'm going to put it into this direction. So at least we have one flow and we will be going like so and so down into a chute. My Paku, by the way, is now at 14% or 13% wildness, which means we can still tame it in its lifespan. And then it will lay an egg like every cycle or so, and we can breed it. All gonna be good. Okay, I think I'm gonna make a similar access point here in this contraption. And that means we can close this off and maybe set up this aluminium tile, get this done. This one here will actually not matter at all because it's not a hot room. Well, it's not gonna be hot if everything goes according to plan. Hold the phone, I need heavy watt conductive wire. Let's add that right here, power these guys up. Then right here at the bottom, I would be having one or potentially more than one aqua tuner. Now, considering I have two steam engines and one engine can easily cool down an aqua tuner i think i'm gonna put in two right off the bat i mean this cooling loop is gonna be utilized to cool down all of the volcanoes we need at least two steam engines and at least two aqua tuners in the end so why not put them in right off the bat i'm gonna distribute them a little bit so that i can set up a fancy system that will cool down the liquids exactly the way i want so we would be installing a liquid pipe thermo center in front of both aqua tuners together with some automation wire then I'm gonna do the first aqua tuner like I did the other one so we can either go through or we bypass it if the liquid is already cold enough then all I have to make sure is that we go out with a bridge here and then combine the two outputs together and then we can continue into the next one and do the very same thing bypass here but then do that and that and I honestly it would also be great to get into a liquid reservoir first we could add a liquid reservoir here on the side and then maybe leave some space free for transformers though i'm not so sure if i'm gonna need them here it would have been more elegant to have the liquid reservoir on the top if i push this back two more blocks this would actually be possible so uh, all of this can go and instead i'm gonna be adding the second one here this is gonna allow me to push the steam turbines over as well no that's stupid that doesn't help me at all so yeah instead i think i'm gonna hop over here and then get up into a liquid reservoir let me see that should be the correct placement let's get that made out of iron mm, yeah that's good and then this would be its own separate room with a liquid reservoir that means this wall here doesn't need to be ceramic at all and this is also going to be enclosed so now the cooled down coolant is going to go into the liquid storage and then we can basically begin our cooling loop and we would be beginning it right here of course going through the first volcano and after this point we would be moving on to the next volcano say this gold volcano at the bottom we would be moving over to this guy here potentially cooling down everything we need to and so in the future, this cooling loop we set up here for the initial volcanoes we can get rid of. And then if necessary, we could still go ahead and expand this room theoretically. And you know, in anticipation for that, I think I want to change the design again. So this aqua tuner moves over a little bit. So I'm going to push more everything to the right side and we can do, for instance, something like this and then do all of the shebang again. Good. And so if I ever want to expand on the cooling loop, maybe we want to eventually cool down everything thing in the base or a lot of it then we can just go ahead add more aqua tuners as well as steam turbines but yeah the way we're gonna power this is through a vacuum here we're gonna have this liquid reservoir in a vacuum and so instead of a tile here i would like to see a heavy watt conductive joint plate and possibly right here as well so it can just go through the room of vacuum and then of course we go ahead power up all the aqua tuners yeah, I really like that. And then we can get the power from this direction. For now, I'm just going to get a normal wire to connect these together and then maybe a ladder shaft. Another problem I can solve easily because of my stupidity is uh, the overcrowding here. And it actually happened because I have all of these eggs here. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. But now we can bring all of these eggs up ready to hatch. And this guy shouldn't feel cramped anymore as soon as these guys are beyond the door. Let's see that happen. Where is it? Yeah, right there. It's happy again. The first egg we got here from this Draco has been a normal egg. It is still gonna live for over 100 cycles. And the reproduction rate of Glossy Draculid is already 24%. So I think I'm just gonna cook up the Draculid egg. We do not need that technically. Except how many reap fibers do I have? 
51 units. At the moment, I do not harvest any more reed fibers, right? So I think what I'm going to do is allow this egg to hatch unless we have eight glossy dracos. We do not really profit from killing the normal dracos. Now I want to make a little liquid lock here in order to be able to pump out the room and also fill it up with water. Add a little temporary pump and then get the gases out of there. Oh, well, you look at that. We managed to tame the Paku here. So reproduction rate is now 67% per cycle. So every one and a half cycles will be getting a new Paku fry egg. There's my liquid lock, so the gas pump should already be utilized. Well, I have to finish the power cable. Wonderful. The pump is going for it. This is going to be empty in no time. Hmm. Maybe I should have put back the tile here. Yeah, I'm going to build this with urgency and then mop up the liquid here. I don't want anything inside the liquid reservoir room. Okay, I think we're almost there. I'm pumping out the remainder of the gases. Let's also hook up the steam engines. And then I rerouted the cabling here slightly so it goes through the bottom. And then once that's done, I probably want to go ahead and analyze the volcano can we do that yet we might be able to do it yeah let's just release the vent here and fill this up with a little bit of water i want to do at least 900 or so kilograms so this entire tile here is full with a large heat capacity and then i think the way i'm going to do this is open up this tile here while allowing the hydrogen to actually fill the room and then push out the rest of the gases Oh, looks like we have some more meteor showers on the rise. Actually, it's not a dangerous one. Maybe something else I'm going to work on in the background is some conductive wire that just goes throughout the base and it will be responsible to power up all the contraptions that we have going on, including the fridge and everything. Looks like we have a little bit of an issue here with carbon dioxide being trapped. One way we can fix this is by replacing this with a tile very briefly. My cooling loop currently isn't really done yet. However, I'm still gonna wrap it up like so. We'll be coming in from this side in order to go through the aqua tuner again. So right now it's just gonna cool down this cobalt volcano and we'll be expanding on it when we need more. There, now I replaced the tile again with the ladder and we have all the water at the bottom at 500 kilograms currently. Also, before I forget, we're going to be using this aquatic mosaic pattern here for all of our industry. So all of this room needs to be tiled up as well. Ari is uh, currently starving. Okay, I did not realize. What about Lyra? Free up the solar panels. Maybe do the same thing here on the second planetoid. Yeah, grab all of this oxalite. And then, of course, we should send over some pickled meal. Probably not. Fried mushroom, 14,000 kilocalories. It's not really that much, but it's better than nothing. Fried mushroom, please somebody take that job. Uh, Ren, thank you. And there it is being shipped over. 3,000 grams. Is that really enough? Let's see. Yeah, now we have another 16 cycles to live. Okay, nice. We're almost there here at 900 kilograms. I'm now gonna stop this. We can add more if we figure out that we actually require more. But now I want to open up this tile here and close this one. And this should then theoretically allow us to add some hydrogen. But I do not like the way this is coming in. I would rather have it coming in from the top. Yeah, this is bad. This is also just going to be temporary for the time being, but I want to keep these in place in case I need to add more hydrogen later. One thing I actually forgot was to cool down the two steam turbines themselves, but that would be easily fixed with two conduction panels like so. We're going in and in like that. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare this pipe in order to transfer over the water into our cooling loop, Whoop, like so. And then, oh! Holy cow, I totally forgot to analyze the volcano. Ah, oh, my bad, my bad. Now that means, ooh, we don't want to necessarily pump in the hydrogen. <laughs> the hydrogen we already have is actually fine because it's just going to remain here in the room. But then we need access to the room again, which is going to get rid of some hydrogen. Yeah, so now we're going to take the time to analyze the volcano. And if we get one or two eruptions in the meantime, it doesn't really matter because the water is still going to counteract it. Looks like we also achieved a vacuum. So this room can be closed off remove the gas pump and everything we don't need anymore. And never mind about losing the hydrogen, it came from the top here either way. So we weren't really losing anything. Liquid reservoir now is in a vacuum, so there's not going to be any heat transfer here. And then whenever I get unreachable toilet in the comments, you suggested that I don't have enough 
power for my transit tube. So maybe there's only three spots for duplicants to actually access the transit tubes. And if I want six duplicants to be able to go back to the base at the same time, I would be adding another one of these. So that is a possibility. And we will probably need to do the same thing here and move all the Atmos suits over a little bit. Okay, it looks like we have the second Paku Fry in the joint. Now, this is still a wild egg. So I kind of want to kill this one off and wait for the egg that our tamed Paku laid. So whenever I get a new Paku, I'm just checking here. And I also changed the diet to meal wood seeds. Anyway, everything is now prepared. I just need somebody to... Oh, it's unreachable. Wait, you can hop over here and there, can't you? Jean and May, you are here. It is totally reachable. There, Nisben, thank you. Wow. Ah, it was unreachable for Jean and May because they have the skill to actually analyze it. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Jean is tagging along, analyzing the volcano. It's going to take them about a cycle or two. So at least one eruption we will witness. Oh, by the way, and the reason I want hydrogen in here and not oxygen is because of the heat capacity. Let me see. Heat capacity of hydrogen is 2.4. That means it can store more heat or chill. And then if I check polluted oxygen or oxygen, it's only at one or so for the heat capacity. So you get a bit more cooling power just utilizing that. Um, yeah, looks good. I mean, the cobalt isn't gonna cool down very quickly. Wow, this is just going for it. It's not stopping. Like the gold volcano stops much sooner, I think. Oh uh, no, Jean! Oh, I was believing in you. You almost did it in one work cycle. Unreachable toilet for Ren. Now, this is really bad. So if it happens when they want to eat, they just go eat somewhere else, which is really bad. We definitely need another tube into the base. There it is, already fully researched. Let's now close this off again, and then we can add the rest of the hydrogen. And there it is. Okay, connecting the tube again. Hydrogen being pumped in. Um, yeah, that should be okay. I don't want any other gases though. But as soon as we get the hydrogen in there, everything else is going to be pushed towards the bottom and eventually it's just going to go out. Also, the gases have the tendency to move to the right, but left also works. In the end, I would like to see the full 20 kilograms this pressure gas vent is capable of delivering. And it looks like oh, we're already getting some other gases. Yeah, now we're also pumping down some oxygen. But as long as we still get the hydrogen, everything should function the same. It's just going to take longer, probably. Hmm, I don't know. Hydrogen is already at 7 kilograms. That potentially means it's not working. Uh, though looking at this, we can see the flow. So there is still oxygen being pushed out. So let's just have faith that this actually works. Mm, I might have to put the pump a little bit higher up there. Uh, there's now already the second eruption. It's still flowing out, as you can see. But dude, this is really resilient here. Oh, no, 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 no. Now it's flowing back in. How could you? Now it's flowing back out. What's even going on? We have 11 kilograms of hydrogen here and only 3 kilograms of oxygen. You know, if I can trap pure oxygen in this layer, I don't even mind, as long as we still have the hydrogen with a higher capacity. But I certainly don't want also polluted oxygen. Oh, that just got deleted. And then there's the carbon dioxide. Go, 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 go out. Ooh. Put, 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 just a little bit. Yeah, okay, okay. I think we are doing it. it. It just needs to go down. Okay, okay. Now we are gonna close it. Is this really a good decision? Or am I just impatient, maybe? Because we were also introducing more oxygen with that. <sighs> Sometimes I just don't get this game. Well, it looks like it's decreasing still. Right now it is more or less stagnant. So let's maybe close this off now. This layer here will not have that much of a capacity, unfortunately. However, we'll have to observe whether or not we can do it. Right now, all of these guys are already kind of cooled down. Now we just need to be careful not to overheat the water. So the cooling loop we introduce very soon at the beginning of the next episode. And I just saw... <laughs> I totally forgot this pipe again. Now let's build an insulated pipe here. Obsidian probably has a really high overheat temperature, right? 2700 degrees and it's coming out at what? Cobalt 2200. So this is not going to overheat this way. And then as for the conveyor rail, once again, Wolfermite is going to be my choice. That means I have to get back in here and I might get another chance at dumping the oxygen. So another idea I have is we could go ahead replace these two tiles and then I can replace this tile with an airflow tile as well which is gonna push down the oxygen theoretically because that's an easier way to go down than horizontally but this is not very elegant is it no it's not so I'm really not sure yet. Maybe I'm just still gonna pump out the room and then fill it up with a fresh batch of hydrogen. But for now I'm pretty happy with the progress of this episode. Maybe let's clean up the rooms here a little bit. 
and then in the next episode we can continue with the next project. It's not like we have nothing to do, we have plenty to do. Maybe let's first of all reactivate the Somnium Synthesizer. In order to do so, all I need to do is enable the signal switch here and then as of this point we're gonna be utilizing this again and we should be having way more than enough juice in terms of oxygen and let me see yeah that was just the leftovers here the polluted oxygen this shouldn't happen anymore it was just leftovers and now we are using that again getting the full extent of the buff and also journals in terms of journals we have plenty oh my gosh we have so many let me see 1208 absolutely amazing so once we get down to like 200 journals or so i'm gonna be replacing the two dreamers so dreamer 5 and dreamer 6 that we are still missing also it looks like we're now lacking a little bit of plastic we should be taking care of that we have uh, plenty of water here yeah that should be usable so if i just bring this all the way up and why didn't i do that yet oh lira you don't have the digging skill mm, okay let's just go ahead and put this above so now this will be finished and then it will be going directly into the oil well the oil well is then going to produce some oil some natural gas etc and it should still be okay here with the temperatures it's just going to cool down with the environment and then drop down here to my pump this is going to take 240 watts pretty much all the time. And it also needs to be at a decently high priority. I'm just going to set it to priority 9 because at some point we actually need to empty it. We need to release the pressure. And that is exactly when a duplicate needs to come in. Good. Then once we got this done, the oil is being pumped out and then automatically picked up by the liquid pump here. So let's see that happen. Uh, why aren't you... Oh no power cable well that is an issue it looks like by now i managed to replace most of the cabling here with the bigger version let me go ahead and fix the rest here and then we should also be good when it comes to power all we need to do is get this some power and then we should be getting some oil on the regular in the meantime we have this draco here with a glossy draclet egg chance of almost 40 percent so i'm guessing with the next egg we have a decent chance and it's already at 90 percent if not then probably the next one after that is definitely going to be a glossy one. By the way, I figured since we need to get into the Cobalt Volcano contraption one more time, I'm going to give myself the chance to... <gasps> Look at that. It got actually compressed. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I love reloading the game. I should be doing that more often. But yeah, you can see we still have a little bit of oxygen left. We need to get one more time back into the contraption. And I figured if I approach it from this side, then the oxygen will be pushed out towards the bottom since the hydrogen wants to remain at the top. Let's try that. Uh, hopefully that is going to work. Let's see. Um, Some hydrogen is also being pushed out. Maybe, maybe not. No. That could actually work. Look at that. It's holding. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is absolutely amazing. It worked so well. Okay. Now we have to replace these. But first we have... Wait. Maybe we can just go ahead and pick up the materials from here. So what if Jean and Ren move over there? Oh, actually the auto sweeper took care of it. And done. Oh my gosh. We did it. No. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Ren, take that apart and you move out okay move out uh it's just a kilogram come on get out i uh, know it's getting worse why do you have to do this to me oh okay now it moved all the way over now just stay here are you serious how is this even possible unbelievable i've never been struggling so much with the behavior of gases oh please no 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 come on come on come on come on come on I'm going to take away this guy here in the right moment. And now yeah, that's exactly what I want to see. Add this guy and add this guy here as well. Now we're going to be losing a little bit of hydrogen, but it's not going to be worth mentioning. Except that Quinn, the slowest dupe, had to build the block. Okay, what are we left with with 8.5 kilograms? I guess we could introduce a little bit more. Of course, not from this pipe. Jeez, no. But let's just assume 8 kilograms is enough for the time being. And then all I gotta do is bring this over here, for instance, in order to dump the cooled down cobalt on the floor. Et voila. Finally done. Wonderful. Let's set this up here. Refined materials. Where are you? We want to pick up some cobalt and this should then just go make the round here. Currently we are at 94 degrees with the cobalt and it immediately goes down to the temperature we have currently inside the room, right? About, about 70 degrees. And then as soon as it went here, 
there should be the last phase of cooling, which we now have to activate with the cooling loop. So all we have to do is connect this pipe here and then the cooling loop is going to start to fill up. And I'm going to make sure that I first fill up the liquid reservoir here. So I'm just cancelling the output. But now hopefully the steam turbines are going to go down in temperature because we're running through the water. And oh my gosh, wait, I totally forgot to finish the room. We are probably ready. Yeah, let's maybe close this off for now. Now, I think I might have forgotten to set this correctly. So what do we want? We want a temperature of, let's say, a nice cozy 20 degrees. So we are going to go with that. 20 degrees is what we want. And now let me see. Ooh, are we running into issues here? Why are these guys bypassing? It could be that I didn't make the bypass here large enough. However, that means before we build these guys, wait, wait, wait. We might want to move the bridge up. Uh, not convenient either. So maybe even better, we move the bridge over one block to the left side. This is going to give us one more travel distance for the packets that bypass. Okay, now that we have one extra travel step here on the bypass, we're also not getting that weird effect with the combination of the... I don't know why it is exactly happening, but it has something to do with the packets trying to fill up an entire packet here in the intersection. So you usually desire the same amount of travel, which is why I don't really understand it. If we go from this spot one two and then we get teleported over here so that would be three and probably four and then going through the thing i believe it's one two and three so i don't get it but right now it seems to be working we'll have to see what it exactly does when it attempts to bypass that means when my outputs here are negative which they should become well very soonish and then i'm gonna just fill up this liquid reservoir once entirely once that is done we can re-enable the connection here and then probably cut off the input now of course i've been a little dumb dumb and just kept on enabling the auto sweeper which now overheated and of course because we're not leading the water through it will keep on overheating let me just get a few packets out of there into the loop to bring some freshness in there and then we're gonna cut this off again but theoretically this should uh, cool everything down quite dramatically here yeah and since i have aluminium pipes oh my gosh this is even wow okay yeah of course water is evaporating at 100 degrees so we had a little bit of extra heat in here but now that we are below Below the 100 degrees, we should be fine. Yeah, this is now cooling down. And then what I should have done is lead the water through here, of course. And also, wait, why didn't I do that? What a noob mistake. Yeah, let me go ahead and actually deactivate the auto sweeper briefly. And then we're gonna make our way in here once again. We already know that we probably don't lose anything. We're gonna fix what I've broken and also add these pipes. Oh my gosh. Okay, looks like the liquid reservoir is full. We're gonna make the switch right away. Well, that means just connecting the output. And then that should be good. Also, now we shouldn't get any overheat damage anymore. Well, maybe. Yeah, looks like we are starting to sufficiently cool this down. This needs to go all the way down to 20 degrees. And then it needs to go down below here. Hmm, I think I'm just gonna go straight down. That would make it easier. Everything inside the room has been fixed. So we're gonna add these guys. And ooh, I have no power here, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna allow this to drop in. We can pick it up from here. If I do just everything, that should be fine. Reactivate the auto sweeper again. Okay, and then get this done. Wonderful. Now the water is coming out at a cozy 60 degrees, which is absolutely phenomenal. And then we are still or should still be cooling this down. Great stuff. I'm actually extremely happy about this. Let's check the temperature again. 50 degrees already so this should now be going down and down gradually we still have the 8.8 .8 kilograms of hydrogen in here it might be a little bit better if we pump in the rest of the hydrogen right now though i pretty much used it all up and then the rest is going through with the power here so maybe this is going to be a little bit of an in-between episode where we actually don't do anything new but we're going to make some progress on what we already have going on the overall goal of the series is still to build a fancy hotel for approximately 50 duplicants in the end and I'm not yet sure on which planetoid I want to do it. So very soon, I think we're going to go ahead and explore the rest of space. And I figured the best way to do that is probably to switch to petroleum rockets. These are going to allow us to travel like 10 or 20 tiles with much larger rockets and we will be able to explore the rest of space. So I figured in today's episode, I would like to get my Paku farm developed a little bit. You can see right now. Oh, wait, we should be sending another signal. Oh no, this guy is actually confined here. Let me see. All of these guys 
guys are tame from what I can see. So something went a little bit wrong and we actually trapped this Paku here, which means we are now counting three. So this doesn't even count to this room. It's literally trapped inside the door. I'm gonna very briefly send the signal so this fish can flop over and then set that back. Now let me see, are these guys now overcrowded? So four fish are too many. So what we should see is the number two here and that means it will send a green signal as soon as we have three fish and that actually makes a lot of sense. Now let's kill the last fish that I just allowed inside. Wait a second, now they are not overcrowded anymore. So we can even have four breeder fish with the size room that I have going on. I don't get it, why were they overcrowded just a second before? Okay, but now that the new number is four, I need to put a three. So as soon as I have four, it will send the green signal and therefore open up the door. This door right here, considering everything should be opened up permanently and then we could even open up this one if we wanted to but I'm gonna let this one be as it is. There was just another egg and it went over there. Now also the autumn sweeper picked up the eggshells and they actually went probably here and they're already being processed into lime. Yeah looks like all of that is gonna be good and then all the polluted dirt is also going here. How wonderful. Good. Now with the rest of this episode, I would like to make some progress here with all the dormant volcanoes. This guy here, when is it going to be dormant? In 10 cycles. That's perfect. In these 10 cycles, we can finish the gold volcano here, which is dormant right now. And the first thing I like to do is get in here and actually do some mopping. Oh, too much liquid. Are you serious? In this case, I think what I'm going to do is just place a gold metal tile here that is going to pull down a little bit of the gold so that we can actually sweep it up. And I have to be a little bit careful with my food, like I need to send over a little bit to the second planetoid and then my farms are going down the drains, which still are supposed to sustain me for a couple of cycles. So I'm going to go with a bunch more temp shift plates, pulling this down slightly. We need 2400 kilograms of ice so i'm gonna get that with my auto sweeper and now i have to fix the input of the somnium synthesizer at the moment most of the packets have the priority to go into the atmo suits of course and that means the lower pipe here is never really full and it looks like the somnium synthesizer doesn't quite consume an entire packet uh, let us actually check this out yeah geez this is not really the way how much oxygen do we have left here not that dramatically much most of it is now carbon dioxide so it looks like only the right pumps here are going all the time these guys are pausing and these guys are pausing as well that means i need to increase the flow like right here it makes total sense that they cannot flow freely and right here it also goes into the docks maybe one thing we could try is first make it go into this direction but then we cut the pipe here and make it go into this direction as well no wait that is just gonna make the other pipe halt yeah that doesn't make sense we would actually have to continue and go down here if that works maybe to make the flow a little bit more clear we're gonna do something like this uh, let me actually put this all the way to the right side yeah i like this better ah, i see we have a mistake going on here as well i would rather do something like this probably and then also define the direction right here now i'm gonna make this a little bit cleaner but i just want to figure out how i can make these pipes flow freely as for the third planetoid i'm now ready to get the oil well running and it looks like it will just do that at 1000 grams per second of water so that's a tenth of a pipe it's really not that much we could probably enable a second one as well and it's producing just how much more than three kilograms of crude oil of course it will be outputting a little bit of heat here but as mentioned this should be okay and now we can start to pump up the oil again let's also set up a hydro sensor here i don't want this to be activated all the time but only let's say above 200 kilograms or so so the pump is actually being more efficient hydro sensor above 200 kilograms all right we can get to the first planetoid again and do this gold volcano now why is nobody building this what is the issue nobody wants to build this hmm interesting i have a suspicion maybe the gold that we delivered already melted i don't know let's go ahead and set up another tile i'm gonna attempt it with cobalt this time around priority nine yeah look at that the command still exists ren is taking over the job of building it okay well that worked now and we're cooling this down heating this up we should be totally fine. Now I'm gonna remove this lower tile. Ooh, actually did that something for me? Maybe, maybe, okay, okay. Yeah, I just need to catch it. That might actually have worked. If we manage to mop up these two tiles, then I could potentially just continue this by spam clicking it. Yeah, look at that, wonderful. 
perfect now this can be delivered right here to the gold bottle emptier and we can get started on the build now for the gold volcano i'm gonna go with the same design we have going on here so we're gonna get another steam turbine to help us out and then possibly for the other cobalt volcano and the aluminium volcano we're gonna go with the second design right here see how that works out but yeah now observing this we can clearly see how it adds up all the packets that are bypassing are nicely lining up with the other one the question is just why are we bypassing ah some of the packets are actually really different in temperature we have 28 degrees 39 here 42 right there yeah this is still in the cooling phase with the initial liquid being 28 degrees now i wonder what did i do to make this 250 degrees has it something to do with the abyssal line hmm, i'm not so sure but just to be on the safe side i'm gonna encase this briefly in the meantime it's time to get working here on the volcano i want one two three four five for the steam turbine right and then another two so we made it seven in width maybe get rid of all the stuff that we presumably don't need anymore and that we need to change what oh my gosh this is just unbelievable this guy here how no he was eating away my plants you little bastard bless you for giving me a glossy dracolid egg oh this is amazing glossy dracolid egg i'm just gonna send this back Right? We still have to choose. Ah, oh, this is absolutely unbelievable. Glossy Dracolid egg. I need to bring this right away. Hold the phone. Why do I not have any toilets? Where's my dupe? Oh no. Lyra, I'm so disappointed in you. Can you build this? And then can you dig up this? So you can get out of there. Oh man. What a bummer, this girl. But she still made it to the toilet. Wonderful. Now, honestly, I hate working on two planetoids at the same time. But that's just what we gotta do. Glossy Dracolid egg is on its merry way right there. So as soon as we get a little bit more oil this should also be teleported over it's gonna go to the second planetoid first as we know so let's just send the critter x over here as a matter of fact yeah i already had this set up critter x now all of them are gonna be sent over and we'll have our first glossy dracolid in the joint good all the gold has been shipped away we can now deconstruct stuff get rid of that as well this should be ceramic and then i probably have to build the ladder on this side in order to be able to reach everything actually not necessarily we just have to build the rooms that means the steam turbine on top i'm gonna make the room but probably mirror it so the last cooling phase is on the left side when it comes to the cooling loop for now i want to shut it off maybe here where is it flowing in this direction and so i can also get rid of the pipe hitch here how much time do we even have 25 cycles now it looks like the egg has been shot over let's check out this planetoid glossy dracolid no not yet but it has to be somewhere in here crude oil or maybe it already has been brought over yeah glossy dracolid egg so we need to get that out of here oh no how could i forget about this this is so stupid let's maybe put it up here because all of that stuff here is actually trapped including some of the fossils and there it is oh finally all of my materials are coming out including the glossy dracolid egg that we're gonna pick up right away that will then be shipped over to the first planetoid and we're golden when it comes to future plastic there it is okay it is officially on the first planetoid i love it now all i have to do is pick it up and move it over into the correct stable and we're gonna give this a really high priority wonderful incubation 57 percent you know how much power do we have left are we still not struggling uh we're halfway no we're not really struggling though we're going through a little bit of the hydrogen but still i think we can take it we're gonna build a incubator right here and that should still theoretically be enough potential load well is 900 but we're never going to be using that also it looks like the abyssalite really did actually heat this environment up i don't get it sometimes the abyssalite does nothing sometimes it does something maybe if you mine it up and you already have stuff laying around sometimes when the liquid touches it gets converted to steam and sometimes nothing happens i hate abyssalite in the meantime we can also see there are many many fry eggs so yeah i don't even need my farms anymore as of this point we're probably gonna be golden well it does take an initial 25 cycles for the first fish to actually start dying yeah it's still gonna take 14 cycles for the first fish to die on the other side whenever we get low we could just go ahead and kill these off 
I mean, eventually we want to kill them either way because otherwise it's just gonna make the game incredibly slow. Also, now that we're feeding them seeds, maybe we should check how many seeds we have. Meal, wood, seed, right there. We have 448 units. Yeah, this is gonna be an issue if we don't keep on giving them seeds, other types of seeds. Uh, circuit is overloaded. Oh, what is happening here? Yeah, of course, that needs to go. Either way, let's continue here. I'm actually not gonna run you through the entire design because we already did it on this side right i'm just gonna go ahead and mirror it and whoop maybe we also finish it yeah I'm gonna go ahead, already close this off towards the right side, and then maybe also close it off towards the left side, though we still want to be able to make it inside. The heavy watt conductive wire would be running in here, and therefore I have my auto sweeper there, and the conveyor loader, and everything. And naturally, we cannot be missing the drywall. Alright, I kept on playing a little bit in order to wrap up the second gold volcano here, and as you can see, we got everything in place. The only thing that's missing is the cable connection. And of course, the steam turbine. And of course, the water. Jeez, wait. I'm not done at all. I totally forgot the liquid vent in order to introduce the water, which I did right there. So now I think what we should do is build down from here, go all the way down in order to eventually fill this up. Then on the very top, I made a little bit of room so that I can place a steam turbine. And this should still be in vacuum, so we can get in there once again in order to build that vent. Steam turbine, we have almost three tons of plastic by now, so this is absolutely Perfect. And also thinking about it, I'm gonna save a little bit on my iron ore. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we only have 62 tons left and I really need some more to keep producing the steel. But yeah, the steam turbine is gonna be hooked up, no problemo. And of course, this also needs an output. Now, I did this the other way around, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we can go ahead and reconnect this, but I should potentially do this on the other side now. Uh, this is so confusing, mirroring stuff, I hate it. So I rather rotate the steam turbine around so it faces this way and then I can have this like so and it will be mirrored. Wonderful. By the way, one thing we could do is exchange the ceramic here in the corners. Well, it doesn't really matter, but we save a little bit this way. Oh, that was so funny. This shaft wall actually made it into the ranch and it got groomed this way and then it made it out again. Oh, I just love these guys. But this one is not for today. No, sir. Also, by the way, right here, we have a cozy 18 degrees now inside of the volcano chamber. And I just love it considering the fact it's an active volcano. Okay, looks like we're done here. So theoretically, I can open this up. We do not need to maintain the liquid lock anymore. What I need to do, however, is complete the cabling here. So we're going to do that first. First, and yeah, let's just get rid of everything here. The outer shell can go. I also got my rails in place just like we had on the other side. And I guess this guy here needs to be set to refined metal gold. And then as soon as we got that cable in the joint, we're good. And it can become active again, well, in 20 cycles. So we're not going to witness that today. But yeah, I guess we're just going to continue in the next episode. Also doing this cobalt volcano, which is going to be dormant in 1.6 cycles. So that's going to be perfect to take advantage of that and also buy now as you can see the somnium synthesizer is always completely fed and that looks about right we're still not using the full capacity but that has something to do with us not actually using up the entirety of the oxygen looking at the stations and the base we are definitely golden so now we should probably take care of the carbon dioxide very soon so while i'm doing the next few volcanoes in the next episode i'm also going to be taking care of that in today's episode we're going to make even more progress on the first planetoid by hooking up the cobalt volcano here but i also would like to finally hook up the aluminium volcano as well now before i do anything else one thing i forgot here on the volcano is to actually add the water at the bottom about three to four hundred kilograms would be nice and we should be able to do that right here maybe if i cut this pipe then uh yeah there we go it's coming in and i'm also gonna cut this pipe since we don't need to add anything else here now there's actually one thing i did not do and that is the cooling loop which is happening outside of course but we can take care of that by the way this would be the four aluminium tiles where i cool it down and i also already got the rail in place this would then be filled up with aluminium tiles and insulated tiles I imagine my cooling loop would be moving over here to the other gold volcano, then moving down here to the cobalt volcano. So we kind of have to already prepare that. Do we have enough igneous rock? Only 27 tons. Ooh, holy cow. That could actually be a close call. So instead of directly going into the aqua tuners, I 
think we can move over here. Let's see what this actually would entail. I'm only going to build it yet where I have the space for it. And yeah, look at that. We're already down to one ton of igneous rock. Let me see. I should be able to dig up some more. Oh no, actually not on this planetoid. Yeah, okay. So on the second planetoid, I should definitely still have some of that. Actually, let me track it. Igneous rock. Yeah, holy cow, a thousand tons. So we can definitely send over some of that. If I move this all the way over, I can then go up, do the actual loop and go down again. I think I might be doing that. So it would be going like so and then coming down like so. And we would continue to the next volcano and probably end up right here. Yeah. This way we can do the cooling shenanigans and then move over to the last one right here. And of course, for this gold volcano, we only need to cool down the steam turbine, such as this one here as well. So they will not take that much heat capacity. The heating up point is going to be here at the cobalt volcano. And then we have all of this. And if we need more cooling, then we can go ahead, and expand the amount of aqua tuners we have. But we can also exchange the water with proper cooling liquid. So therefore, the 14 degrees the aqua tuner cools a liquid down can have a much more drastic effect. The cobalt volcano is going to erupt one last time before it becomes dormant. And then, of course, we somehow have to build all of this, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Let me just try something like that. Yeah, that looks about right. And then what maybe could help is cool down the abyssalite like we do with the regolith. Also right here, we just ladder up. Something else I'm going to do is actually exchange the layer we have here around the base with granite. Well, except for the industrial stuff, but just the base layer here. This way we will also gain back a little bit of igneous rock in the short run. Okay, as suspected, this is a little bit dangerous here when it comes to heat distribution with the abyssalite. And it's really only the abyssalite that is hot at a thousand... 300 degrees so let's sweep it up and i already programmed it into the conveyor loader here so it gets cooled down just like the regolith used to be hopefully it's gonna be enough but we can see me here please don't give up don't drop it anywhere i don't want to yeah it goes right in there probably overheating this guy so maybe let's drop a little bit of liquid and then the abyssalite goes through the water here Let's see that happen. And it doesn't change temperature at all. Ugh, I just love abyssalite. I mean, are you serious? Not even a single degree. In this case, we quickly need a different solution. I'm just going to make my way over here in order to set something up. Let's see. I want to make sure this is a drop of at least three tiles here. Maybe we only need insulated ones up to this point. Now I quickly have to check. This is currently landing here. I bet you the abyssalite is going to have an effect as soon as it drops here. It's gonna heat everything up isn't it uh, or maybe it just doesn't do anything but i don't trust it so what we're gonna do is sweep it up and instead of bringing it here we're gonna dump it into this automatic dispenser and store it right here in space for the time being just keep it away i've seen enough and then i also want to make sure that i dig out all the hot abyss light here and whenever we get some new one i'm just gonna sweep it up again but yeah this has become a little steamy and we actually don't even have to make the automatic dispenser sweep only if we keep the abyss light far enough away so duplicants cannot pick it up anymore then we can just have it set up normally and there is all the hot abyssalite incoming yeah and can just stay there in the meantime we keep on building and sending over some more igneous rock we are replacing the tiles here so everything is going according to plan i made a little change here with the thermo aqua tuner system and the change is the piping was a little bit off so only every second packet would get cooled down the way i solved it instead of getting the connection together here i'm just going up there that means the bypassing packets will always have priority so if i just have a look at that as long as the aqua tuner is running the output is going to have priority wait i just said it the other way around this guy here is going to have priority over the incoming bridge so whenever it is activated we can also cool down all the packets as you can see and they're arriving at 36 degrees or so here so that's why the second aqua tuner is also doing some work and now that we got it cool enough to 27 degrees only the first aqua tuner needs to work and we could just go ahead and daisy chain this this is what i'm actually preparing right here oh look at that i almost forgot to show you the glossy draco got sheared for the first time which is why we have some plastic in here absolutely amazing i think i'm gonna cut off the incubator for the time being we don't really need it later on we're gonna have an incubation chamber in order to keep this a little bit under control but right now we seem to have a new source of plastic which is just gonna increase with every new glossy draco we get this theoretically means i don't necessarily want to use the polymer press any longer and instead of refining the oil we could be sending it over to the first planetoid or maybe we keep refining it for the first couple of rockets until we have a petroleum boiler going on as well 
yeah that could be a thing let's keep the oil refinery in place and then just store the oil but we get rid of the polymer press and then instead i would be bringing the oil all the way over and down into the teleporter of course another thing i wanted to do is open up this part right here and i think to make it look good i'm gonna use mesh tasks here and we're just gonna free up a little bit of space here and then a tiny block at the bottom in order to funnel all of the gases down into a separate room that we're gonna dedicate to treating the gases and everything let's maybe also make this four high or so hmm maybe three high yeah let's keep it consistent with this room here now i'm gonna lower the priority of this mesh tile right here it shouldn't get built before i'm actually done with the room down below let's see maybe we can unlock some more good blueprints some uh, gloves i already clicked too quickly there's pastel purple interesting and we got a sunny retro flower pot the pastel is that something i would be using here probably not yeah we're just gonna go with the solid charcoal down here in the base and then honestly i don't know how large this room needs to be maybe we don't exaggerate or maybe we just exaggerate fill this all up and then what i could do in order to maintain this room is the same thing we did on the other side here we're gonna add a manual airlock that i'm only opening up occasionally so we are not gonna lose that many gases or even important gases we also got to make sure to build a little bit more clay we have 34 tons of of coal left and i don't think we have yet a consistent source for it still let's keep using the kiln just craft it in the background uh, more steam yeah i knew i wouldn't like this you know let's maybe speed things up here a little bit in this vicinity also whoop, speed up the digging wonderful nisbet has just finished the room right here so i think we can now open this up maybe potentially it's still full of hydrogen though well full is a little bit exaggerated and the hydrogen is going to be trapped sometimes oh well it's all fine and i think what we should do is add a bunch of power transformers here maybe add this to the cooling loop of our little base here one of these power transformers is going to deliver 2000 watts of power and we could easily use that to power everything else other than the docks i think the docks i'm still gonna do with the heavy watt conductive wire but then right here we could also enter with some more bring this all the way over here into the first transformer with the first one i think i can go up like this and then a second one would be going up like so if we need it and then i'm just continuing along here and probably going up this way now when it comes to the cooling loop right here i think i'm gonna make a turnaround go down below here and cool this down as well and then simply go back up again oh i just noticed i need to move this over a little bit yeah let's maybe move the ladder now oh no ah what did i do did i what did i do did i build something here no i did not Oh my gosh, and the plant here also just went away. What actually happened here? I don't even get it. Oh man, okay, let's fix that. I can't believe I somehow messed this up. Well, I'm trying this again. We got the tile back, then let's place this guy and bring this down again. Okay, got my storage bin here. Let's put back some joya seeds and then the pip here. How old are you? 71. Yeah, let's wrangle you up. I'm already building a critter drop off point. Give me my pip back, please. That would be absolutely amazing. Where is it? Right here. Come on. Amari, do me the favor ah uh, geez every time it gets out of reach amari takes on another task oh well we're gonna get it in there what what oh geez okay to be fair that was really my mistake here i did do that i'm gonna get my park sign back in there and then hopefully my pip is gonna replant those two plants but really i would like to know what happened to those guys by the way it's now time to take care of the carbon dioxide we need to finish this room good now only having one tile here could lead to some issues right now it doesn't look like well it looks like we're just wait are we losing something uh, it's hard to tell we have to install the machinery so all the way over here to the right side i'm gonna do that namely we want a carbon skimmer i'm gonna install that right here in order to make this functional we need to feed it a little bit of water and it's gonna output polluted water just like the water sieve or actually the opposite of a water sieve so either we set up another water sieve or lead it over to the already existing one and i think the latter solution is the better one in this case what i'm gonna do is use the excess water to first go all the way over here so we're not gonna contribute to the oxygen system anymore but this is just gonna keep going mm. and then maybe thinking about it i want to lead it through the room here maybe let's do that with insulated piping and i'm gonna be moving the cooling loop a little bit up so we end up right 
here. And this pipe here at the bottom is going to be the liquid that we input into the carbon skimmer. The reason I don't want to use the water we already have nearby is because I'm going to exchange that with super coolant at some point. And then of course it's not going to be of use anymore. So now the processed polluted water is going to exit here and going up. Let me see, where do we need to end up? Actually, right here. We don't even need to go that far. So I'm just going to hop over here and directly go into this loop, for instance. And you know what? While we're at it, I'm going to be replacing some of these pipes here with insulated pipes. Now, we're not going to be using the entirety of the excess water in order to skim the carbon, possibly. But we have to make sure that this has the priority. But afterwards, we can just lead it into the system we have. Hold on. It might actually be easier to do this from the bottom. Yeah. Now, I just noticed, theoretically, this heavy watt join plate could be one more block over, just like we have it everywhere else. Yeah, this is gonna bother me otherwise. Now, can I do this in one go? Because it's just gonna shut off everything, right? Yeah, there we go. Just one more cable to place and come on. Thank you. Looks like I missed this little gap here. I think I want to get rid of this pump here. This is gonna allow me to continue the layer and we're just gonna close off the base. Now, I got a two wide gap here, so this should, well... It did dramatically increase the exchange of gases that was going on. And now we just need to get this carbon skimmer to run. Let me see. Um, this is still not incoming. Yeah, hurry up, little dupes. In the meantime, I also cleaned up the cobalt volcano. So we can just go ahead and start rebuilding this the way we imagined. Get rid of the railing. Yeah, I'm going to redo all of this. There's already my second glossy dracolid egg. Absolutely perfect. I'm going to re-enable the incubator. And then Amari right here should be coming along and hugging the egg for a little bit for increased incubation rate. But first of all, we want to shear our guys here. How many reap fibers do we have? Mm, we seem to stay consistent quite a bit. And there was the hugging animation. I'm just going to leave this running for the sole a reason we now have enough power once again that the natural gas generators or geysers are running like this guy here and the guy here at the bottom. And so we are producing energy the entire time, basically. Also, by now, we have quite a few pacos in here. I decided to actually make sure their ages are slightly apart from each other. So we don't have like two fish dying at the same time or laying eggs at the same time good looks like we're about to build the last remaining pipes let's see how dire is the situation hopefully nobody has a seizure right now oh well you look at that oh that is an issue because i've been building here a little bit of course we were lacking the hydrogen and therefore my generators got shut down but in this case i'm just gonna reconnect it as long as we don't build in here we should be fine but whenever i build in here i have to be careful and there is the last pipe wonderful i'm actually gonna lock this for the time being so that I remember I will have to do this. So now we can probably already cut this connection again but we have to keep this in mind. Also this heavy watt charm plate should actually go away so we will need another way to power this up just in case. We could probably do Ooh, actually we could make a connection here but I'm gonna be using a thick wire here hmm. but we have a little bit more than two kilowatts actually still I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna build this heavy watt wire as a backup. But there you can see my carbon skimmer going away and whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, crap. Did I really have to do this? The output should obviously be here. Oh my gosh. These dupes are gonna make me insane. Okay, this is now our cooling loop. Should we do something about this? I guess so. Yeah, I'm gonna break out here very briefly into a liquid filter at that guy right here. Then we're gonna filter out the polluted water and the normal water can go back into the loop. Jeez, it's things like these that are completely unnecessary. So that means I want to hold my cooling loop before it is too late. And ooh, where are you going? There is nowhere to go. Okay, you're just queuing up. Polluted water here, liquid filter. Okay, ooh, wait, there's a connection missing. And there is the pipe. So now we can connect this again. And wait, it should not go up. There it goes, being filtered out. Ah, thankfully, I discovered it before it was too late. I think that was the last of it. So we can move this up again. Finally, now we are taking care of the carbon dioxide. All of this will be taken care of very shortly. And then the natural gas is also going to accumulate here. And I'm thinking that we might be able to also pick it up in this place. Good, I think we're ready to wrap up the base here. I can basically get rid of all of this 
thick cabling here all the way up to the Atmosu docks. And I'm gonna have to move the door somewhere else. So let's do this really quick and also re-add this metal task so we can sustain the nature reserve. Then all we gotta make sure is to also power up the fridge and everything should be fine. The lights are now already working. I also decided to reroute the cooling loop so it goes through the upper tile instead of the middle tile just because it will look a little bit better. You know, less spaghetti. Wonderful, here we are. And then just get rid of this pipe. Now, considering the time in the episode, I'm going to be focusing on finishing the cooling loop and actually already get it running so all the volcanoes can easily be built. I also would like to see a charm plate here that is going to supply everything inside the other cobalt volcano. As for the pipes, I think what we got to do is, yeah, let's just keep going. Uh, let me think. We are going down here, there, there, and there. So I have to be coming in from this side. We'll then be using radiant pipes basically throughout the entire chamber, except for these two guys, which I'm going to make with insulated obsidian or whatever. Eh, actually, let's use ceramic. What did I use with the other volcano? I wonder. Oh, of course, because of the water layer, I'm just using one obsidian pipe here. And then we would be going out here. This is the edge of the contraption. Then this would be the aluminium tiles. So right here, I want to do another four tiles of cooling. And then this is going to be the continuation of the loop. So we would be going through here all the way over. Keep going here until we reach the last volcano. Now this cooling loop will be starting right here. That is actually very nice. It's going to be very straight and more or less clean. Considering I'm running this cooling loop throughout the entirety of the planet. Planetoid. Also by now we have gotten our first petroleum that is coming in from the second planetoid. I already built a little pump here that I'm gonna hook up like so and then what this is gonna do is gonna run through a filter I think. And I think the way I'm gonna do this is remove this insulated tile. We'll have to replace it with another one though because this one here is hot if I remember correctly. But then I want to see a liquid filter here filtering out the petroleum and the rest is gonna be dumped in this location. And then what I'm gonna do is just allow the petroleum to go all the way down. So if we check this out, petroleum currently is three tiles high and it's just gonna stack up a little bit. Maybe eventually it's gonna spread. But if we detect it here at the bottom, then we know when it's worth to activate the pump. So a little liquid element sensor is going to do the trick to detect that. And that's exactly how I'm going to decide when to activate this pump. By the way, I totally messed up with the liquid here. Currently, we have 598.2 kilograms. 600 would be the margin where it is actually already too much. So, uh... <laughs> my bad. Hopefully we get away with it. There's my liquid element sensor. We want to detect the p p petroleum and that's all we need. Now I'm down to 5000 kilocalories because, well, I didn't realize. This should now theoretically be no issue. Let me first of all check what kinds of eggs we have going on. Like the Dracolid eggs. I think I'm going to sacrifice them. Maybe one squeaky puffed egg. We have, uh, let's keep that in place. We have six slug eggs. I'm going to cook two of them as well. And now, of course, we have a whole bunch of Paku here. For now, I'm just going to attack a few of them and we'll be processing them into food as well. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of hydrogen in the system because my gas vent was overpressuring. I had to upgrade the pressure vent. It should not happen anymore. Oh, well, you look at that. I messed up the vacuum. So never mind about that. Let's now free up the space. My wall would be going right here. Wait, what? Next activity in four cycles. Are you kidding me? Okay, sure. We can do this. We just need a little bit of water. I guess we can now almost get rid of the other cooling loop. Ah, nice. This guy here is actually dormant. That means we could go ahead, cut off the cooling loop and maybe clean this up a little bit. Right now, this can just move up and over. And that is going to allow me to get rid of all of this pipe pitch here. Really? Media showers? Now? Ah, okay. Hold the phone. We have a clogging up situation going on where we're actually not utilizing the water that's coming in here. It looks like this is just stuck. So I think what I'm going to do is go down and then go up with a bridge. No, then it's still not going to have priority. We need to have priority. One way we could do it is set up the bridge here. This way, the incoming water here will have priority over the water that we're using from the source. And now we can gradually get rid of that. Yeah, I did not discover this uh, quick enough. <laughs> All good. How is it looking in terms of gases? Yeah, we're making some progress. We just need to be patient until this is actually moving over. But once everything has been cleaned, it's not going to be of worry anymore. A little bit of oxygen made it inside the room. Oh, that bugs me. Okay, looks like we're almost done here. I'm still missing the drywall. So fix this up right there. Wonderful. I also got the pipes in place. What else do I need? Let's maybe check the other guy. I had my auto sweeper. Oh yeah, I had the signal switch for my liquid vent. And then this pipe here is going to provide
provide some hydrogen for me that I can input here. Did I do this with uh, just probably normal pipes? Huh? Somewhere on the way, though, I want to set up the quick system in order to only allow oxygen through. So with a little knot gate here, some automation wire like so, and then a gas vent. I'm going to focus on the gas pipe element sensor. So somebody builds this immediately and I can do the setting. Forget about it. Breathable. No, actually unbreathable. We wanted hydrogen. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. We can get rid of all of this piping. It's going to be so much better. Okay, I actually lost the race here with the volcano. It is going to become active very soon. So what I'm doing is building a temp shift plate made out of coal in the hotspot. But yeah, I'm going to need access to water, which I'm going to get from here. If we just expand this pipe a little bit. Oh, you know what? We can just basically use the cooling loop. I don't even have to build this pipe. Since initially it is filled up with normal water, it's going to be good, but it's going to go through here. Yeah, we basically built everything necessary. So what I'm actually going to do now is decommission this cooling loop. We don't need it at all anymore, except for the pipes here in the center that I'm going to hijack for the new cooling loop. Oh, okay. It actually happened. It erupted here and we have a little bit of overheating going on, which is fine. We can now introduce the liquid very shortly. I'm just finishing the last of the cooling loop. Oh, tell me I can reach this pipe. Yes, wonderful. So the last of my polluted water has vanished. Right now, we don't have a way to use the metal refinery anymore. We need to keep that in mind. But yeah, let's just uh, connect these pipes. I want to see this cooling loop completed and independent of all other loops. And then I think it's time to do it. We should be able to cut this and make it go into this direction instead let's first check the path it can go through here yeah no problem can go up here then cooling down the steam turbine cooling down the Ooh, actually we are cooling down the rock here as well and then going over to the other cobalt volcano cooling this chamber down going through here Ooh. Actually, this is a little bit larger than I thought. Oh no, I just copied the design. Never mind. Either way, we're then cooling down the stone here even more and then going over to the last one, the gold volcano there. And so I guess I still need to add my metal tasks there and then also surround this with insulated tasks. Cooling loop is still going for it. We are at 24 degrees, so nothing really major happened here. And now we should also be cooling down this. Yeah, look at that. It gets orange immediately. Now, of course, a bunch of my pipes are breaking because of that which is no problem it introduces a little bit of water and it's just going to be temporary but now we can do an even better job by connecting this up and water is going to be introduced a little bit quicker this refined carbon tile is still 180 degrees yeah we just have to be a little bit patient on the other side no actually it doesn't even do anything for us now of course this all comes from my liquid reservoir i kind of want to make sure that eventually i can fill it up again my fresh water source is actually right here. Maybe now let's fix that and make it go through both of the contraptions. And then I could just grab the water here and for instance, add new liquid to the cooling loop. Finally, it is cool enough so we don't get any more steam. And now we just fill this up with about 900 kilograms of water. There we go. I'm now processing the water. All I have to do is maybe cut this pipe right here. And then the new water is incoming. Right now, of course, that doesn't do anything for the cooling here, which might be an issue. But if we just activate this for a minute or so, we're going to be fine. No, actually, it stopped working altogether. Interesting. Never mind. I forgot to make this connection here. Uh, Yeah continuing oh we're out of food ah, what happened jeez i'm just too focused on other stuff i guess you guys have to go how many pacos do we have well all the way down to the screen okay good i killed about 12 fish or so and now we're cooking the seafood which should then be delivered back to the base and nobody has to die but i think it's a good thing we didn't invite too many more duplicates how is the temperature you know just to be on the safe side i'm gonna set up some more meal ice here okay there we go now everything is in motion i just have to make sure to also refill this liquid reservoir unfortunately i have to wait for this one to become dormant otherwise yeah you can already see i had two pipes already breaking that is going to be an annoyance, so I will have to make my way back in here to fix this. But you yeah, get the basic gist. We now have an enormous cooling loop taking care of all of the volcanoes. And as soon as we upgrade this to super coolant, we're also going to be on the very safe side. Until then, we kind of have to watch it also a little bit. But yeah, pretty happy with the outcome here. In today's episode, I would like to make some progress with the transit tubes and maybe also with my power management. I'm going to be doing that while in the background still working on the volcano 
volcanoes, we still have to tame a couple of them. I'm gonna leave out the aluminium volcano because in the comment section I learned that I will probably overheat my current system with this. Already cooling down these four volcanoes, two cobalt and two gold volcanoes is probably very taxing and it could be that by the end of the cooling loop we actually are just way too hot. And of course since I'm only using normal plain water in order to cool this down, this is not gonna work. So I'm gonna leave the aluminium volcano be, but we can still finish the cobalt volcano which honestly is already finished so we can probably get this going currently it is full of carbon dioxide let's see what happens if we close this off and allow a little bit of hydrogen in the hydrogen here is already eagerly waiting now ooh, my filter actually failed because i stopped the line and now we also have a bunch of other gases in but that's fine because we have some carbon dioxide either way oh i just noticed we also need to dig up this tile again but this should now be possible because we have this protective layer and of course the cooling loop is already running now looking at the water here i'm actually not too worried it's only at 27 degrees that is actually not a lot there amari dug up the tile and we're already carrying out the refined carbon now we just need to build this insulated tile and then i guess i'm gonna open this one up here let's see if nisbet does it yeah oh that was kind of a weird action there, knees bet. But now I can connect this up and allow the hydrogen to go in. And of course, it's going to fill the top portion here first and then probably accumulate just like we've seen it the previous time. Good. Now let's think about the situation here on the top. I would like to see four to five rocket silos. Now let me think. Do we really need five? The goal is to only have rockets here that we actually need on the regular. But then again, we have quite a few planetoids and then maybe to set up some automation, it would be great to have dedicated hubs. So considering everything, we should potentially set up a fifth silo here and that means I would probably want my tube to go down this path now let me see what's in the way oh look at that okay it actually adds up quite nicely this is good so essentially we would just be going up here I'm just gonna build whatever the heck I can and we would be ending up there we can then of course still continue towards the top as well right here this would be exchanged with a transit tube crossing and then instead of this transit tube access point I would like to see another one here for instance but yeah there's definitely a lot in the way and if possible i would like to avoid having my power spines right here what i would like to see is maybe this cable here going all the way up and down so let's try that should we already build this out of the good cable currently our potential load is 20 kilowatts but of course that entails everything we also don't need so it's only really around 5 kilowatts or so. Maybe we peak at 10, but 20 is very unrealistic just yet. So I'm going to build it with the bat cable and it will be going straight up. And of course, that could be an issue here because we not only need to take care of the abyssalite, but also the obsidian. Obsidian is a little bit more of an issue because I tend to use it as a building material. How much obsidian do we already have? Ah, okay, we only have three and a half tons. That's actually interesting. So what we could do is dig this up consciously. That means I'm gonna dig up everything and then sweep up the obsidian into a specific place. We could also bring them right here, for instance. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna set up a second one that is gonna be sweep only and that is gonna carry the obsidian. What do we have here? Some sedimentary rock. Okay, now as long as I still see the gases flowing out, I'm gonna keep this configuration and then when it starts to change, we can close it off. Okay, now we're talking, we have a layer of hydrogen and then a layer of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is probably the worst gas for cooling. So I'm gonna first try another thing you suggested and that is just to have these two guys here being airflow tiles. We might lose a little bit of water this way. Um, How much was that? Yeah, we went below the 900 kilograms. There's actually a little bit of water in the way. So I have to get these tiles out so the gases can flow through here. We're gonna be fine. Our coolant is already down to 21 degrees. So, so far it's working, probably because some volcanoes are dormant. But there we go. Now, we should see some effect. Oh my gosh, this is working much better than I thought. Thank you so much for that tip. Now I just need to be quick enough. Come on, come on. Oh, God, get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's out. I count that as out. Now we just need to build this very quickly oh do it do it do it quick uh who are you amari you should be quick enough in building and then yeah the hydrogen Ooh, no. oh my gosh oh, this is horrible 85 grams maybe we're lucky enough and it gets deleted but i think i'm gonna leave that in there okay now let's also get a ladder going wherever we have the cables I want to be extremely careful. So we're only going to dig into the abyssalite. And then I'm going to make my way up here. 
hmm, maybe we shouldn't even touch the obsidian so it doesn't send off too much heat. And then we go through here and just grab all the hot abyssalite. Abyssalite is established in the previous episode. It's going to be brought here automatically. And then the obsidian, I think I want to sweep up. So I can decide to only sweep up the hot stuff. So I wonder, maybe we're capable of cooling it down. Let me get this to sweep only for now. And then we have this guy here, which currently is set to regolith only. And we might be able to also cool down the obsidian this way. So we sweep it up first and try this method. Well, looks like I missed the eruption here. That is actually looking good. Still at 35 degrees. Yeah, and the water heated up to about 40 degrees in the end, which is nice. We can bring it down to 14 degrees again. Now I'm just lacking the extra extra water here in the liquid reservoir we might have to fix that sooner than later so i need more water in this loop and one way we can do that easily ah look at that the cobalt volcano is dormant so we can do it even easier than easily this was of course the issue the last time when i cut this pipe right here so the flow stops and i can input new water here from my polluted water source then it will be filling up the liquid reservoir and these guys were just heating up like crazy and of course breaking the pipes but now that the cobalt volcano is dormant for 51 cycles wow okay that is actually a long time but yeah it's not gonna bother us until we have the liquid reservoir completely filled up Okay, well, introducing some water, I actually had some overheat damage because I allowed the aluminium tiles to get over 100 degrees with no water in the cooling loop and therefore these little packets overheated. So it's definitely a little bit of an issue, but right now we can fix this. I'm just going to get in there and do this really quick. I think, yeah, it's under duties and we can just repair these guys. Okay, now let's see this happen. Ah, interesting. I see. Oh no, this could really become an issue. How hot are we coming out here? At 40 degrees already? Wow, <laughs> water is just so weak. And now we're already down to 50 degrees again. So some packets will heat up considerably, almost 80 degrees, but then they go through the cooling process again. And hopefully the water can, you know, cycle one or two times before the next eruption. But yeah, it could very well be that if both cobalt volcanoes are active and eruption, Erupting at the same time or for the same packets, we're gonna be kind of screwed. Either way, let's keep going here all the way down, down, down. Something else I would like to take care of is the glossy dracolid farm right here. I think, yeah, we already have quite a few eggs in here and also all of the phosphorite that we're now getting, by the way. So we also have a source of that. But yeah, it's time to set up some auto sweepers here and get things under control. I want to be able to pick up all the materials and we can only really do that with three auto sweepers. So what I'm going to do is make sure that both auto sweepers actually cover the same conveyor loader and then I can have my last one right here. Here. This is going to be a perfect distribution. Conveyor loader should go right in the middle. And then, of course, all we have to do is lead it outside. And it's going to land here in the future in our centralized storage system. But for now, that's going to be fine. So now this I'm probably going to power up with my cable that I already have going on. Wait a second. I thought I cannot have incubators inside the ranch. Why did I place it here? But it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, check this out. We did not inspect everything yet. Robotic arm for some data banks but afterwards we're gonna demolish it and then all of these background buildings they can go it's now also time to move my solar panels all the way over i'm gonna start right here at the very edge and then for now we're just gonna cover the area we have available above the base so something along these lines and protect them with a bunch of airflow tasks so only the airflow tasks take damage instead of the solar panels ah, there's another eruption let's see this happen and unfold old. <laughs> yeah, the layer here at the bottom is definitely screwed a little bit, but it looks all normal. Oh, no, above 100. No damage, really, but I can see that we need the supercoolant in the future before even thinking about hooking up the aluminium volcano. Our steam turbines are still easily capable of extracting the heat from this room, and it looks like the aqua tuners aren't running 24-7 just yet, but I might want to add a third one just in case. I also soon want to move my glass forge and metal refinery which at the moment is decommissioned hmm maybe we can still take advantage of that but for now these two buildings need to go also all of the piping all of the cabling it needs to make space for transit tubes Something else I did temporarily is add some airflow tasks in order to allow more of the carbon dioxide to move over. But slowly and surely we are getting rid of it. It's just a matter of time. How the heck did a piece of oxygen make it in here? 
Jeez. Also, this hydrogen doesn't seem to give up. I mean, oh, 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 wait. Hydrogen in my oxygen pipes? Oh, well, let's keep going here with the transit tube. I want this all done ASAP. And then I think I'm also going to get rid of this entire carbon dioxide pipe, at least up to, let's say, this place. Get rid of that pump and everything. Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, I want to rebuild this entire thing. This is not supposed to be here anymore. And we're not going to get into carbon dioxide rockets anymore. So now all we need to do is maybe set up another platform here. That looks about right. And then on top of it, we're going to have our transit tube access point hooked up to the transit tube. And then, of course, as for the power spine, we want to continue right here. It shouldn't be an issue, but then we get into the hot stuff again. So maybe for now, let's just also set up a ladder up to this point. And then down here, we can continue all the way down to the magma layer. So I'm going to get this started right here. That should be fine. Yeah, it's as I suspected, this is still kind of reacting to the environment, even though it is not supposed to. Yeah, it's definitely spreading. Let me set up a protective layer here. Just something really simple. And we got to make sure to build this really quickly. Otherwise, everything is going to overheat. Yeah, like this gas reservoir already overheating. There it is. This looks already much better, honestly. Right, I imagine this is gonna work very simply. I'll just wait for my duplicates to dig this up, which should happen momentarily. Yeah, Ren and Misbet, of course, are coming to the rescue. And then whenever I dig up some obsidian, I wanna pick it up at priority 9 immediately, like right now. And then somebody is gonna pick that up and bring it over to the cooling machine, hopefully. And since we have the rest for the weary mod now installed, nobody should be picking them up and dropping them where I don't want them. Theoretically, yeah, obsidian is being brought over here to the conveyor loader. It is currently a thousand degrees. Oh my gosh, this is not gonna go well. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Actually, down to 200 degrees. That's not too bad. And it will then drop in here. So my suggestion would be to pick it up again send it through that system one more time uh no it's actually not gonna be worth it since it's already at 80 degrees when it comes down here so that means it's gonna heat up the environment as well a little bit and of course the water that we have in here so it's not a permanent system but it might be enough for us to complete the power spine here so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna build this all the way down and then set this to a very high priority in the meantime everything here still seems to be working did I just see something about iron there? I'm told. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh man, I bet you it, it has to be because of the carbon dioxide we have in here. So this needs a really quick fix. Yeah, that is actually not good at all. Maybe we keep these guys here. No, I just, I can't take it. I mean, this guy here worked well. And we have the same situation going on, except everything is hydrogen. And this guy, well, it also overheated, but only because I stopped the cooling loop. So I suspect we have to get in here one more time. Ooh, actually, I cannot do that conveniently. Yeah, I should really be doing that from this side. So we go down here, deconstruct these, and then we can go straight through. Though we're still going to be losing a little bit of hydrogen. And I guess we want to do all of this like ASAP. Everybody needs to help, kind of. Now let me think. Well, no, we cannot think. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at that. It made a liquid lock. I can't believe that. Now, please, somebody fix everything, even... Yeah, look at that. The iron rail melted. But I refuse to make it wolframite because the reason it melted was the carbon dioxide pocket was right there. I just know it. Okay, now I'm getting rid of this tile one more time and rebuilding it right away. Quinn? Quinn? No, no. Okay. We have me taking care of the issue and, well, okay... What am I even doing? Okay, it finally managed to make its way out. Now, if we get to build this, oh, thankfully. That also means we can reconnect the pipe and increase the density of air. Right now we have... 4,000 grams, and that is not enough. And I think we lost a little bit of water this way, which is fine. We still have, what, 750 kilograms, and we can easily introduce a little bit more just by doing that and opening up the vent right there. You know, maybe one thing that would actually help is having the water layer just overlapping the second tile a little bit. So I'm gonna fill this up with more than a 1,000 kilograms. That, of course, is siphoning liquid from our liquid storage, so we'll have to refill that whenever we get the chance. And of course, the hydrogen we're losing is just going all the way up to the top again, where we should be able to grab it again. Okay, now, can we do this before the next eruption? 80 seconds? No, we will not be able to fill it up. But this time, I bet you it's gonna go much better. Show me what you got! Yes! Give me your best shot! 
yeah, it looks like it's working much better, but... <gasps> no! I have igneous rock in here. It does hurt a little bit. I might be taking care of that. I mean, I have to get into the other volcano as well. Ooh, ooh. And now we are reaching the second layer. These tiles are actually really hot. This is much better. Now I just have to be careful not to go above the 150 kilograms. I would say about 50 kilograms or so should be enough. Some of this might occasionally flash into steam, which is fine as long as we don't overheat anything. Okay, I actually like this. It is also compressing the gases a little bit more. I'm still going to try to fill this completely up. Yeah, looks like we have pure hydrogen going on. So I'm just going to fill this up to the 20 kilograms that it's capable of. Inside the ranch, we have built everything. It's time to pick stuff up. I want to pick up everything, right? Like there should be nothing left in this room, not even the eggs, honestly. So yeah, I think I'm just going to set this to everything, but not manual use. And then my auto sweepers should go to town, getting everything out of there. I also would like to auto wrangle the surplus and then set it to eight critters. Currently we are seven critters. This guy just laid an egg. So I'm going to go ahead and decommission it. This guy is about to lay an egg. Okay, so I'm going to leave the others be. And of course the glossy dracos, we keep them all together. Good, now it's time to tackle the second hot boulder here. I'm just going to make my way down, give myself access from this side, and then I'm going to do the very same thing. Maybe first layer it up with the protection. So we're going to do something like that and do something like that as well. Making sure we build these first so no heat can escape. This power spine here should then allow me to get rid of a lot of these cables and instead use the transformers to power most of the stuff. But definitely not everything. Now we can see how the new layer will behave here. It should maybe flash into steam. No, no, not yet. Okay, that actually looks really good because that also means the rail right here is never gonna overheat, really. I think that is the solution. And then we also have full pressure now. So assuming this is working now, we can probably get rid of this pipe. Ren! Ren! What? What? This was actually my biggest fear in the one duplicate challenge that they would just get themselves trapped. I mean, come on. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Look at them struggling. That's such an idiot. There you go. Jean saved your sorry little butt. I'm now also decommissioning the Pluxlock Ranch. We still have the Pluxlocks down here in this room. They're not very happy, but they should sustain my population so I can move the ranch somewhere else. We're also making good progress here with the transit tubes. I can probably already enable this guy here. So instead of using this transit tube access point, we're going to go straight down. And we just got to make sure to hook this up very quickly. So all of that plastic please use for these tubes. That would be amazing. Thank you, Nisbet. You're just absolutely wonderful. Unlike Ren, who gets himself stuck all the time. There it is. They can actually already use this point here. And if it is used up, they can use this transit tube point. And then, of course, every now and then, I'm going to have more of these transit tube access points, such as down below, but maybe also around here in the center. And then, of course, moving the kitchen up. Ugh, there's still so much to do. So much progress to make, even on the first planetoids. Alrighty, I can't kept on playing a little bit in order to complete the power spine shaft as well as the transit tube and now you can see it already starts to look much cleaner and also if we have a look at the power cables I was able to get rid of a whole bunch of them so it should always be going out from this power spine like a straight line all the way over to where we need it and then we don't really need this well we have to replace the power transformer and who knows maybe in the future everything in the center we're gonna power with the power transformer and then we're gonna have an another power spine but eh, I don't really have the space for it. I'm already happy that we got this guy here in place. We just need to make the final connections. I'm also going outside of the base so this is already going to be in space and then since I already have the transit tube here we should be able to also get rid of the liquid lock. Also, I'm happy to see that the dupes are actually really quick inside the transit tube. I think that's something they changed. So maybe the travel speed inside the tubes is changing depending on their athletic skill. I'm not sure, but they definitely seem to be quicker. Nisbet finishing the transit tube. She was scolding a little bit inside the hot pocket here. By the way, this is now charging up and therefore we can close off this access point. And as soon as we've done that, what I would like to see is this tile gone. Gonna make that power connection really quick. And then as soon as I got these two pieces in place, I should be able to deconstruct this and therefore close off the base. 
Okay, wonderful. Is everything still working? We got the power coming from here this time around. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's not good. Somebody needs to build that. Okay, but everything else seems to be connected now. So get rid of that. I also don't even need this connection anymore. Wonderful. Now, slowly, it's going into a direction I like to see. Let's also keep this straight for now, even though all of this is going to disappear. But I would like to straighten the cables out so that I also get more building space. But yeah, I would say with that out of the way, all the volcanoes hooked up, the power spine done and the transit tubes in place, we've made some valuable progress towards being more efficient in the base. In today's episode, I would like to move my water storage a little bit up towards the base. Maybe here at the bottom, we could have some liquid storages. And then I also want to make use of the petroleum that we're getting. For one, I would like to fill up my first petroleum rocket, get that started and prepare everything for it. But then we could also be using the petroleum as a coolant, for instance, for the metal refinery right here. So I was kind of thinking it would make sense to put the metal refinery and the glass forge together since both of them produce materials or coolants that gets really hot. So say we now get rid of the composts here and we could set up a little crafting room here with the refinery and the forge. So I'm going to reroute this again so it goes into this direction and we can get rid of all of this pie pitch. So let's have a look at that. Metal refinery takes up three spots. Thinking about it, I definitely want some space around it in order to set up conveyor receptacles to supply materials automatically. And then the glass forge would take up slightly more space and only requires sand, right? What if we made the room here at the bottom a little bit larger and also integrated all the other crafting machines? Like, what do we need? A rock crusher? Potentially a molecular forge. What about the bleachstone hopper? What is that even? Uses salt and gold to produce bleachstone. Wow, that's actually kind of intriguing. And then also the oxalite refinery. We also got the plant pulverizer that uses sleet wheat grain and pinch of pepper nut to extract brackeen, which is, I think, another building material, which can be used to refill the critter fountain. I see. So yeah, it would make sense to build a huge crafting room. Hmm. You know, considering everything, let's say this would also be part of the base. I don't access this from the outside, so dupes can just remain inside the base in order to use these machines. That still means I want to leave a little bit of space on the right side. What about lamps? We should think about lamps too. Like right here, I probably want one too. So let's just go ahead and set this up symmetrically on each room. Also provide it with a little bit of power right away. Ooh, ooh, did you see what I did there? Oh my gosh. Yeah, something like that already looks much more believable. That means the machines that suck the most power we're going to have on this side. Just add a little plate here. For now, I think in the building phase, I want to make it accessible from the right side. But then we can easily power up this machine that requires quite a bit of power. Now, thinking about everything and that the steam turbine here doesn't really have anything to do right now, we might want to make use of that to cool down our oil. So what if I made a little extension here for this steam room and then we just cooled down the oil here and that means I could leave a little bit of space here for the glass forge. So let's say I have my auto sweeper right here and then I think eventually what I would be interested in is to get all of my items that I want to store on this single tile here within space. So it doesn't influence anything else. It can be hot or cold. Preferably I would have them on average temperature of course. So whenever we have a material that we need to treat before we're going to do that. However, there's still going to be exceptions where we actually get hot material. And so I figured right here next to a transit tube access point isn't the worst of ideas. So they can get there quickly, grab the materials and then distribute it across the base. To do that, first of all, I'm going to set up another automatic dispenser, but then I'm also going to set up one of these conveyor chutes here. Let's say we set that up right here. And then whenever I have materials such as this regolith, I want to bring it over. So let's just say we move this across the ladder that we'll have on the right side. Eh, that doesn't actually make sense. Yeah, I don't have that much space. The last rocket silo comes up to this place. Yeah, that's actually not going to be very convenient. Could we have the storage maybe here? Yeah, honestly, maybe have the storage right beneath here does make a little bit more sense. We can still have our conveyor chute and the dispenser here. But that would mean we probably get up the materials this way. And that will entail all the materials I'm gathering across the planetoid. Everything should be funneled into this place. 
And then I think on the next level, I'm going to have some distribution conveyor loaders. Mm, in this case, I think I'm going to funnel the materials through this tile. That makes more sense to me. And it will then also be going throughout the entire base. So let's just drag a rail all the way down. So we already got this sorted. Right here, I can have a whole bunch of conveyor loaders. Mm, actually, does that make sense? I kind of want to make sure that there can be an auto sweeper that is able to reach the materials and also the conveyor loaders. So they can automatically distribute materials. And it looks like this is going to be possible, even with the fifth silo. I like that. The first conveyor loader here, I'm going to be using to bring the sand over to the water sieve here. Currently, we have that conveyor loader inside the base, but it can just go ahead and move over here. Mm, actually, now looking at this, I might want to completely reroute it. So we just go through here and this would be coming from the first conveyor loader, filling up the sand and then this rail here would be getting the polluted dirt out into our system. Now let's speed up the construction of this room right here because my dupes will have to go inside and therefore probably mess up my hydrogen system again. As you know, we're already collecting a little bit of the petroleum that we're sending over from the second planetoid and I'm already building a pipe that will go all the way up. Now I'm thinking, should we build our piping system here maybe where we have the transit tubes? Honestly, it could make sense, but we also have to move our water source. So say this part of the base right here will become the liquid storage. We will then have a pump somewhere here in order to bring these up. It's going to go over into the electrolyzers and wherever else we need the water. The source will still be coming from below at least for a couple of hundred cycles. And that means water I want to bring up this way. That makes sense to me. It's going to go all throughout the transit tube points and then over. Wait, over down below, then hopping over here or not hopping. Well, there's going to be the liquid vent and a liquid pump right there that makes sense let's maybe open up the bottom there and i want to have my conductive trunk plate right there okay the water storage i will be making accessible from below let me think now that we have infinite plastic i probably want to go ahead and research the plastic ladders yeah check this out it's even an easy research there's no reason not to do it getting plastic tiles the comfy bed plastic ladder Ooh, clothing refashioner but yeah i would like to start replacing the permanent ladders with the plastic version to make them even quicker now we can see we're using up the battery here so we gotta be a little bit careful Let's maybe connect this up. This is going to fry some of my cables, but it's just a temporary thing. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the battery is already full again. So maybe I can prevent it from happening even. Battery dead again. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But you know, this is only ever happening when we are building here, of course, because we're losing a little bit of the hydrogen and then it attempts to fill it up again. So maybe a better solution would be to have the vent somewhere after feeding the hydrogen generators. Since this is the ultimate base, I'm going to be doing just that. Let me think. All we have to do is cut these pipes here and then already go down. Then feed the hydrogen generators. And before going over, we actually first go up again and then we go over and down. Okay, we then can move the vent over here. No, actually, it's not possible. Ah, darn it. Yeah, I would have to move the battery so I have space for the vent. What if we moved everything a little bit over? I mean, this room here at the bottom doesn't need to be this large. I don't even know why I did that. So I could probably get away with something like this and then have that cable go up. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. This will allow me to move the room over a little bit, even set up a gas reservoir. Yeah, I like that idea. So now I know I want to funnel my water up here in the center spot. I'm going to build a second pipe all the way up in order to ship up my petroleum. And petroleum will be coming from this line going up here. So all of this I can delete again. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place with these uh, projects or goals that I set in the beginning. But let's continue here with the steam room. I want to enlarge in this in order to allow a pipe through that will be cooling down petroleum. And by cooling, I just mean below 200 degrees. It will then directly go back into the metal refinery. And because we have a cooling loop going on, I don't think we're going to have too much heat seeping through. The aqua tuner here should be able to take care of everything. So let's define the space that I want to be able to use to cool this down. We could do a 5x5 five five area. I think that is actually reasonable. So going down here, this should all be ceramic here. Ceramic. Okay. 
Oh, wait, we actually have this entire space here. Yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. So it's a six by six area. Can get rid of this and uh, let's maybe keep that in place for now and make it accessible here. Now, this will be a little bit complicated to build because we have to get the solid charcoal right there. Actually, could I replace these? Ah, okay, so that is actually intelligent. I'm glad the devs made that. We can directly replace the tiles and therefore not lose anything. This also already gives me a better idea of the finalized cooling loop, which is probably going to go through this area. And then we would be going up and back through here. And instead of going through the cooling room, I think we're just going to be ending up right here. That means all of this area here I have available to set up a crafting system. And then the upper portion I'm going to be using to make a fancy kitchen. Wonderful. Research completed. We got access to the plastic ladder. Maybe let's already go ahead and replace this. Oh, that doesn't make sense now. Hmm. I would like to get access here. I'm going to move the power transformer over yeah there we go that just makes a little bit more sense to me and this way we can open this up in the future and then add a ladder right there and i'm also going to replace the ladder here inside the base and as far as i know me i will also want a ladder access point eventually here next to the transit tubes how much plastic do we still have over a ton okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and already build that in some places and this will then be my min ladder shaft instead of the one we have currently going on. In the meantime, we have exchanged all of the normal Dracos. That means we lost our only source of reed fiber and we might want to take care of that. Now, how many reed fiber plants do we need for a colony like this? Honestly, I have no idea, but I feel like maybe three should be enough. Though, where would I want to set up these boogers? Honestly, inside the base. So if we move the exosuit forge over here into the base, then I could have my plants right there. Yeah, let me just set this up as an example here. I might still move things around a little bit and then we would have a bunch of plants. Uh, hydroponic farms? No, I'm just going to go with normal farms right now. Yeah, I'm going to first watch this unfold. And until then, we're just going to do this manually. And I'm not even going to do this here. Yeah, I'm just going to build the exosuit forge in an impossible place to remember that I want to move it. The same thing with the glass forge that somewhere needs to be here. Same thing with any rock crushers or the kilns. We're gonna have that all here. And of course, I'm just not gonna place them nilly-willy because I want to automate them as good as possible. And that always means leaving a little bit of space for conveyor receptacles and all that jazz. I probably also want my molecular forge somewhere here. And this guy will require a lot of space. So I don't even know if I want it here. What else would we want inside the base? Maybe the pulverizer? And what about the bleachstone hopper? Yeah, I'm just gonna set this all up here. Oxalite refinery could also be a thing. And yeah, I guess I'm gonna wait for your response. But this looks like a lot of machinery. Maybe some of these are not necessary inside the base, such as the molecular forge. Or even the oxalite refinery that probably goes into the same category. But then again, it would be great to have that all here. And theoretically, I have the space. The kitchen isn't going to take up that much space. But I will have to think this through. Some of the machinery can be sacrificed to not be inside the base. Some of it is probably going to make more sense. Now, when it comes to all my incoming materials, I guess I can already lead them through here. And they're going to join the line that goes up to the centralized storage. This line here is also gonna disappear right now i'm storing the materials here uh no oh wait that's the wrong teleporter the one that i want is here at the bottom so honestly it's probably just gonna move over and that means i can probably take advantage of this here as well if i just move this over Hmm, I cannot really do it more conveniently. So I would be moving over here and then joining up with this line eventually. Same thing for the volcanoes here at the bottom. I'm probably moving them over here. And let's see, this guy is starting in this place, moving over here as well. Now I used up all my copper material. Maybe we're going to switch to something else. Let's do more cobalt. Okay, now my dupes have a lot to build. Let me see. There's the last volcano. And ooh, I'm not cooling this down. Pro what? What? How does that even make sense? I'm not cooling this down appropriately. Oh my gosh. Let's switch to aluminium for these guys. And then I will be coming out here. I'm 
probably we can end up there and do the same thing here. Yeah, now we got building projects all over the place. Maybe I'm going to allow them to finish the one or other thing. Right now, we already moved to the power stuff. That means I want to get rid of this guy. I will be making the next room a little bit larger. What did I want to entail? Maybe a gas reservoir as well. That would mean gas reservoir here, then leave one space free. And after that, we can move this up. Okay. However, if I did that, I cannot really add, for instance, more hydrogen generators to use up the extra hydrogen. And that is more of a pain in the butt. I'd rather store the hydrogen somewhere else. So I'm not actually going to do the gas reservoir. I'm just going to move this over to make space for the gas vent. And then instead, I could be moving my hydrogen generator system up. A little bit say we need a little bit space for the battery and then we can have up to three generators yeah this is much much better so I have another battery here that we're gonna hook up to the main system actually everything is gonna be hooked up to the main system a little bit of automation wire going from the battery to these guys and then this will replace my current hydrogen system I have going on at the bottom and I would like to get all of this finished here because that is gonna be the immediate system that I can already use now thinking about this we could run into an issue of feeding these generators right now i'm just going through basically and then dumping the hydrogen inside of this room but theoretically we should have an infinite storage somewhere for this hydrogen so we can use it whenever we actually require it so eventually i will first have to bring it into a storage and afterwards feed it into the generators but we can still do this later on main thing is we get everything more or less prepared there's my new wall i can replace these guys now with the background tiles and everything should work without the loss of gases Wonderful, my conveyor rails have been built. That means we can go ahead, copy the settings of this conveyor loader. Then I'm gonna remove this conveyor loader, this chute as well, and everything that we don't need, like these rails, this guy, these rails, they can all go, uh, wait. Yeah, I think I did that right. So now the sand is going in from here. That's good. And this would be the outgoing rail, bringing everything to the chute. Woo! we still have to finish the rail there. And I think the way we could cool down the machinery here is simply with the incoming water into the storage. So we would be leading that through a couple of panels, just zigzagging up and down. So go up, over, down, over, up over uh. yeah actually the other way around makes more sense so we first go down up and down as for the steam room here on the top that will cool down the metal refinery stuff one thing we could get prepared are the aluminium pipes and also the center now this doesn't make sense we will have to reroute this as well and then considering we're coming from below we probably go up over and then down and then do mm, maybe not all the way down so we can have a way back as well but then we would be doing the zigzag like so go down here go over and we can join with the lower line to accomplish this we need to remove one pipe here and there probably from the cooling loop cooling loop would be coming up here so we can hop over there and hop over there then the metal refinery stuff would be coming up here so hop over there do the wiggle jiggle and then go down here here like so yeah that makes sense now i have both my in and output for the metal refinery and as soon as we move the pipe up here we can finish the jiggle wiggle wait a second it might be worth it to also set up a liquid reservoir here if i build it out of steel it wouldn't overheat and then of course we could keep the 200 degrees petroleum in here no issues where would be the best spot for this honestly up here i think yeah, that just makes so much sense. So we go directly into the liquid reservoir and then come out from here and do the jiggle wiggle. I could even go up here and then do the rest of the stuff. Let me reroute this. It's just too confusing. So you go up. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense to me. I think I'm going to skip the two tasks here on the liquid reservoir and then continue as I planned. And so what I probably want to see here is this on a lip and then yeah let's maybe get ladder access on this place also once i build the metal refinery here i will not have access to the ceiling here anymore to build stuff so what i would like to see is this maybe already exchanged with radiant pipes i mean the radiant pipes here will be the ultimate pipes so we should build them and of course it's going to be made out of 
aluminium yeah hold the phone awaiting delivery what's happening why Ooh, no power wire are you serious they are serious okay well we have to do this really quickly otherwise i'm screwed somebody build that for me please thank you and now this should be delivered no issues and then once we move the water storage these conveyor loaders will also be cooled down i like that slowly but surely things are getting way cleaner most of the piping now in the future will make a lot of sense we already have the water line going up here so in the future from the desalinator i probably just want to move this over and then we're gonna move it all the way up into the new storage okay that was actually an awful lot of planning here in this episode i have to say but I think it will be worth it. Now I have to free up my asteroids from all the debris from the meteor showers. So now before I actually forget, let me set up three plants here so we can observe whether or not that is going to be enough to sustain my current reef fiber plant amount and also maybe even increase it so we can supply the other planetoids. But I suspect eventually we're going to be needing way more. So we should think about a dedicated situation for that in the future. Right now, all that is important is that we get a little little bit of reed fiber in the joint and maintain this maybe even manually until we have a better solution you know thinking about it the exosuit forge would totally makes sense in this room honestly i think i'm just gonna go ahead and move that good so i know this was a lot of planning but this was very important to get all of our systems in tune and overall this is gonna make for a much cleaner look and system all of our materials are gonna be centralized here in a location nearby a transit tube access point Tubes can just come over here, grab the material they require and then use the transit tube again to move somewhere else. I might stack a couple of these, but a goal would also be for this auto sweeper to reach the materials, maybe even reach the abyssalite and obsidian so that I can use it for building materials. But yeah, you get the basic gist. Now we have to do an awful lot of building and as soon as that is done, we should be able to, for instance, activate the metal refinery and the glass forge in the next next episode if we do everything right oh that reminds me we also have to add a rail here actually do we i figured we might want to cool down the glass but honestly it only comes out at what a thousand degrees or so when it cools down and it would then immediately cool down on the metal tile that we are currently cooling with the cooling loop right yeah honestly this is probably not necessary so glass forge and metal refinery we can have somewhere along here cool down the petroleum that we'll be getting from the bottom we should now have plenty of petroleum already well one storage full but that is enough to ship the petroleum upstairs okay and then use it in our metal refinery right there together with this liquid reservoir i love it let's maybe get some insulated pipes i'm gonna build these out of ceramic here so they don't unnecessarily heat up the base not that it makes a huge difference let's see this is the outgoing line so as soon as we exit the metal refinery we want to go up there and we will be doing the entire cooling loop which i assume is enough to get it to 200 degrees it should be enough with the aluminium pipes and then we go ahead and bring this back into the refinery again so there's going to be a lot of steam and maybe we even want to exchange some of these drywall with temp shift plates but who knows we might not even need those the temperature could be transferred quick enough even like this but then again temp shift plates are just amazing Ooh, i don't want to use diamonds if i don't have that many what about a temp shift plate made out of glass what does that do heat capacity thermal conductivity oh my gosh okay it's actually the worst material to build a temp shift plate out of if i check out the diamond one here we have a thermal conductivity of 80 and a heat capacity of 0 0.5 let's try some other materials like iron could be good let's also compare iron and cobalt here ah well you look at that cobalt seems to be even better in transferring the heat and then iron would be half as good so cobalt so far is the best material and even yeah that is normal cobalt ore right no it's refined cobalt what about gold can you do even better gold no thermal conductivity of 60 so now the question is what about steel steel has 54 holy cow so cobalt is still better honestly this really surprises me i have to say but let's go with cobalt i'm gonna go ahead build one temp shift plate here this is basically trying to even out the temperatures all around the temp shift plate and that means i can probably have another one here and another one there and this should then evenly get all of the heat that is being produced and push it over into 
into this room. Wonderful. Now I'm going to allow my duplicates to build all of what I planned. And in the next episode, we should be able to get everything in motion. And finally, maybe also make some progress here before then moving on to the petroleum rocket. So all of the volcanoes and all of the materials will, as of this point, be delivered up. We just got to finish the building here. And then, of course, we also got a little bit more structure with our power cables so we can get rid of everything unnecessary. I did have a little bit of an accident here with my oxygen system because the previous source here, the water source that I was using to feed the system, was running out. So now I'm basically directly funneling the polluted water upstairs and the brine, refining it, and then it continues to the oxygen station. And I think in the future, what we should be able to do is dump the water here and then actually use this liquid pump so i'm not gonna directly funnel it over but it's first gonna go into that liquid storage and it's not really a storage per se it's just something that we keep on a certain level i don't want to go with infinite storages in this playthrough because i suspect they helped in the lagging of my games late game so in the end i would like to have everything optimized but let's make some progress now and keep things rolling of course, the room here at the bottom, I'm also gonna fill up with drywall. And then once that is completed, we can connect it to the base. Now, you guys have been talking about this system here and have given me multiple suggestions. Don't worry that I'm gonna build all of these machines right here. I want this to be more like a personal crafting system. So things like the exosuit forge that makes sense will be here. I also would like to see a personal metal refinery crafting system because from my experience, if you just keep on using the refinery, you don't need like five of them. You just don't. And then the molecular forge would also be nice to have here. Maybe the rock crusher and kiln just as a personal crafting system. And then if we need something on a grander scale we're gonna add that to a industrial sauna of sorts however brainstorming this you suggested to actually move this entire room right here which does actually make an awful lot of sense so we could just go ahead and make this room a little bit bigger and have the system down below now obviously this is gonna suck a little bit and i'm only gonna present you with the results so you don't have to go through the building process once again but there we go i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this room again and voila already everything gone now the idea was to just extend this room basically like so now there's a little something here that i would like to make future proof whenever we are lacking the hydrogen for whatever reason maybe i'm building something but it happened a couple of times because i was going into the room obviously changing stuff and i think one easy way to fix that would be to use a power shuttle so if I just go ahead and, for instance, install that right here, then I could shut off the power between these two cables. And all we have to do is use this cable here. Say when the smart battery right here detects that we are at 80%, then we want to charge up. However, if that isn't possible, then we want to go ahead and enable the power shut off. However, we don't want to do it at the same time, only when we actually go below the 80% and cannot charge up to 95% again, then we want to do it. And that's that means we just want to add a delay, which is a filter that we haven't researched yet. So right here, AND gate, OR gate, buffer gate, and filter gate. A whole new world is going to open up for us. There is my power shut off right now. It seems to be enabled. Let me check. Ooh, okay. No, wait. It seems to be disabled. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, I see, of course. That makes sense. So it is steered by the cable that is already here. So let's just wait for the filter gate to be researched. Now, as you can see, I have moved the metal refinery cooling room down below, just like you suggested, and it adds up in a much cleaner way. Right now, I'm just building the pipe that is responsible to bring up the petroleum. Research completed. Thank you very much. Been waiting for that. We want a filter gate, and that basically just means we filter out the signal. Let's cut this line. It goes in, then waits for a certain amount of time, checks if it's still green after that time, and if it's still green, then it's going to continue the signal. There it is. Filter gate. I'm going to set it to, let's say, 30 seconds or so, which should theoretically be enough to charge up the battery once the cable is enabled. So if we check this out, as long as the battery can recharge again to 95%, the filter gate is never going to send the signal through. However, in the occasion we actually lose all the battery power, then the signal is going to continue and we grab the power from the main system. So that is how this is never going to bother me ever again. Okay, I'm now fixing and breaking some cables. I mainly replaced the cables here in the stable so that I could get rid of that single transformer. I think it would look slightly better had we the conductive charm plate here. 
So we'll be changing that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how this now looks. All of the batteries are going to move eventually. This is going to move. Yeah, the kitchen, as a matter of fact, I would like to do right now. Also right here, I probably am going to switch this here with a big cable, just like I'm doing right now with the upper natural gas geyser. I now also started to deliver the water that we're getting from down below right here. So we can get rid of this pipe that we used previously to ship up the water. And then as of this point, the liquid pump here is going to take over. Let me actually see. Maybe I want to exchange this tile here with the conductive join plate. That might make a little more sense to me. I'm also done here with the upper room. However, I cut the power apparently. Wait, you should still have some power. What's up? Oh, wait, did I seriously run out of power? How did this happen? Uh, I guess because the natural gas guys here is out of commission. Fixing the first one, we're just gonna release all the gases until we have pure natural gas left. Hydrogen, get out of the way. Arrgh. Well, at least now the hydrogen generators are flowing again. And we can use up the rest of the hydrogen out of these storages. We can now also see that all of the materials basically from everywhere are landing upstairs. So all my resources will be closer to the base. And I think right now we should load up the metal refinery and think about the layout of the kitchen, which I would like to see maybe somewhere up here or maybe just to the right of this or the left. Anyway, let's hook up this pipe and see if we can collect some petroleum. Yes, indeed, it's already on its merry way. And I guess we're just gonna go ahead and fill up this liquid reservoir once completely and then let it go out. So I'm going to fill it up with 5,000 kilograms, but then allow 1,200 kilograms to be used in the metal refinery. So we still have a little bit of space inside the reservoir. Now, as for the kitchen, this needs to be a fairly decent room. So I cannot just have it three tiles high. That wouldn't work. If I had it here at the bottom, we could make it four high, which would probably be the minimum. Let me actually think. If we check out the food machinery, micro musher is only three high. We would have to unlock the gas range. So maybe that is something we should research. It's all the way up here and requires some applied signs. Wonderful. Just for this occasion, I left the ugly material study terminal in place. Let's uh, plant some more of these. Get that research going. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and research the next best thing as well here in the food category, which is a critter fountain, a a brack wax cleaner and a milking station. And this will require the data analysis research. And I believe if we have a look in here, yeah, oh, we might actually not have enough data banks to complete that last research. Media showers again. Ah. Okay, looks like we're done here with this room. I just want to get rid of a little bit more of that polluted oxygen and the hydrogen if possible. And then we're going to connect the two rooms together so I can access it from the top. By the way, I moved my machines around a little bit and now we can go ahead and start this room. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. I need a lot of stuff here. And I want everything to be lit up and also automatic, more or less, with auto sweepers. So let me get started with an egg cracker and a microbe musher that we might be using for the berry sludge. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the gas range might actually be four high. So I would have to place my auto sweeper possibly here, but I'm not 100% sure because we could be more space efficient. But then again, I need lamps. So one lamp would cover this station and then possibly a conveyor receptacle here in order to add our ingredients to the micro musher. Uh, there are going to be some space issues, but I could have my auto sweeper here and we need an electric grill. And now the question is, are we just building this kitchen for supplying the worker base or is this already the kitchen that's going to take care of everything? And I'm not sure yet. We first have to decide which food we're going to give in principle to the dupes in the hotel. And of course, it should be a variety of foods, but we're probably going to decide for two or three of them. And if that entails different machines, maybe we get away just using two of each and having two cooks. For now, I'm going to do it differently. For now, I'm going to just dedicate this kitchen here to give the food in general, maybe to also feed the tree on the other planetoid to get the tree resin. And then we're going to outsource another kitchen, maybe even on the planetoid the hotel is on. Yeah, I think that makes much more sense. And therefore, we can have the gas range here as well. And if we're lucky, it's actually the left tile that counts. So we can even reach the gas range with this auto sweeper. 
Now, one thing we have to keep asking ourselves is where are we going to store the food and the ingredients that we want to cook? And I think looking at this auto sweeper, we could be using this tile here. So say we place a temp shift plate here. Uh, th there's no particular reason for the temp shift plate, just to have a different type of background here. But essentially what we would be doing is encasing this here in metal tiles. Yeah, let's just do gold tiles, something along these lines. There would also be a conveyor chute in there. And then the auto sweeper will be able to pick up the stuff that is inside of here, but the duplicates will not. So that could be a good way to solve this. And this would also give us some space to, I don't know, that's actually going to be a little more difficult. But if we set something up with the molecular forge here, maybe then this lip would even make sense. So we can collect the super coolant. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that sounds really intriguing. You know what? We gotta try that. And we should be able to run the kitchen here on the conductive wire. So just add that, that and that. And then I'm gonna go up in order to supply the lamps as well. There should be another lamp at least right here. And I'm not sure what's coming. Hopefully this is gonna add up here with the gas range. That could be the biggest issue. But if it is, then why not just raise the ceiling a little bit? You know what? That is actually not a bad idea. Yeah, we're gonna do that. This also means I can move my lamps here a little bit and then this is already looking much better we can even have some conveyor receptacles and of course conveyor loaders while we're working on the kitchen let's now also reactivate the metal refinery here all i need to do for this is set up the aqua tuner on some mesh tiles and then i guess we just take apart the rest so let's exchange these with solid charcoal and we should be doing that fairly quickly there we go we will be losing a little bit of steam here in the process but i do not mind we can reintroduce it quite easily with the water source that is coming from below as a matter of fact i should maybe already get this started we could be introducing that water right here at the steam turbine Oh, check this out. I found 44 data banks here. That is perfect. That is going to be enough to actually complete the research. To test this out, let's craft a little bit of iron and also queue up the steel. Got my first research completed. The gas range is only three tiles in size, but I'm still happy that I actually lifted the ceiling a little bit because that is going to allow me to distribute all the materials that I need. And we still have way more than enough space for a crafting station upstairs. So now my hope is that I can actually reach the gas range this way and then we can also power it up with the cable. The gas range, of course, is going to require natural gas that I'm going to be bringing from down below, probably. So eventually I also want this to be running in this direction. Good. My little storage area here seems to get prepared well. The thing is we actually need to insulate it because we want to keep it at a frozen state so it never goes bad. However, we're going to be needing this gold tile to actually keep it cool. If I just keep the chlorine cool or whatever atmosphere we'll be using here, it's going to make it a little tedious. However, this means we will have to make this slightly uglier by doing something like this. And now thinking about it, that doesn't actually work either because I need to be able to reach this tile. But if I leave this open, I'm going to need tremendous amounts of power to just keep it cool. So maybe instead we keep the tile on the top cool and do something like this. This might actually add up, but I'm gonna wait until I have everything in place. Wait, we do already have everything in place. Yeah, what am I talking about? Wait, we're missing a rail at least. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's get that built. As a matter of fact, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Now we can, for instance, send through hydrogen that we cool down to at least minus 18 degrees. And we could easily accomplish that right here inside of this room. Let's actually see uh, what category is this under. Probably utilities, right? Yeah, thermal regulator. We need to make it out of steel and it will work exactly the same as the aqua tuner. I can, for instance, place it right here and then we get a bunch of pipes. Let's do them insulated. Say we would be coming in from here, then we either go through the regulator or bypass it. Then we would be having a gas pipe thermo sensor, of course, hooking that up to the regulator. I'm going to make the bypass towards this side and then we just go down, do something like that. Maybe add the gas bridge here. Uh, actually, let me move that up. I want to move it right there. That makes more sense to me. And now I can just go out like this and probably through the ceiling. Yeah, let's do that through the ceiling. And then right here, we want to switch to radiant pipes. Now here, we probably want to use steel. Steel comes with 108 thermal conductivity, while the cobalt comes with eight because it's just the ore and not the refined type. 
So we go with two radiant pipes made out of steel and then we just move back. But I don't want this inside of the crafting room. Yeah, let me move this one lower and then we would be moving back through here. This then goes down into the center like this. And of course, you knew it. I had to open it up again to build the radiant pipe. Wonderful, things are coming along. I finished the kitchen. I decided to still attempt it to only cool down the gas that we have in here and see if the food actually reacts because making the upper tile into a metal tile will probably just have the same effect. If anything, we need to change the tile below. However, I already mentioned what kinds of problems we'll be getting from that. So I'm just gonna attempt it this way. And now I also fixed the piping. We should be able to fill it up with hydrogen very soon. Yeah. I just have to finish building this pipe here. Thanks to utilizing the metal refinery, we were able to create the steam again. Otherwise, the thermal aqua tuner would have overheated. Currently, we got 34 kilograms of steam in here. That is actually not too bad. I will be adding a little bit more, but probably not too much. My food will be coming from outside of the base, but I think I'm just going to lead it above. So it comes down from above and it will probably be this storage bin right here. Though, let me think. Yeah, if I move this straight up then that makes sense so this conveyor loader would basically be taking all of the cooking ingredients and the food right now we're only doing the food that we're actually getting cooked seafood some fried mushroom we probably get some omelets and then cooking ingredients the meat as well meal lice we got the paku fillets they should go in there until we actually cook them even the raw eggs so all of that will be going to that conveyor loader and we can easily store our food i'm even gonna allow manual use for this one just very briefly because I want to add some bleach stone here. My bleach stone is currently in here. Yeah, I would like somebody to sweep that up and actually bring it over. We got a vacuum here. I almost missed that. So we are going to build these two tiles very quickly and then open that one up a little bit slower. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. My bleach stone is already in there. Now I just need it to be delivered. So let's wait for these rails to be built. In the meantime, I'm going to reroute the petroleum pipe to go towards the rockets and therefore we can empty this a little bit. Okay, now there's one more step we need to take and that is actually making the drywall. Let me see. I want to use the purple here, maybe for the kitchen room. Uh, the kitchen might become a little bit bigger with a salt shaker and everything that we got. For now, maybe we can get away just making it the standard size here. And then I will be expanding it towards the right side. But for now, I want to make this here charcoal so that I can close off the room and actually integrate it into the base. And I just noticed we're already bringing the Paco fillets over. That might be a bad idea idea so I sped up the building of the rails. Oh, I actually can't wait for the kitchen to be moved. I've been watching the food closely lately and I feel like a lot of the stuff is still being spoiled and now we'll basically have an unlimited food storage. Okay now I got myself hooked up to the hydrogen pump here. I want hydrogen to go inside of the cooling loop and then just fill it up. This means I'm just going to allow the hydrogen to go through a little bit and then we can catch it right there. Now, how cold do I want to make this? Let's say whenever we are above minus 20 or so degrees, then we want to cool down the hydrogen. This might already be too exaggerated, but essentially, eventually it's going to end up it being minus 20 degrees or maybe even lower which is fine. And there it is incoming. Uh, wait a second. Is it confused? Ah, I did not complete the loop here. Okay, and I'm just gonna wait until I have this completely full with one kilogram packets. And there we can already see the regulator is getting activated. And of course, the packets are being cooled down. Now, the reason I want to use chlorine in this tile and not hydrogen is the chlorine is getting rid of all the germs. So should we get some food with food poisoning, this will also be taken care of. And we can also easily introduce the chlorine just by adding some bleach stone. There's my cooling loop completely filled up. And now what we have to do is remove one or two packets at the most. So maybe I'm just going to do that right here. Remove one packet. See how that goes. Meep is actually already here doing the deed. And it looks like once was already enough, right? Ooh, wait, this is not flowing. Of course, because it is not bypassing right now. But that doesn't look good. I want one free packet. Yeah, it actually looks good. As soon as we get the cooled down hydrogen, then... Ooh, actually, no, it's not looking good. We have to remove one more packet. All right, we're actually almost done here. We could probably already open up the room. Yeah, let's do that. It's just a little bit of hydrogen. It's gonna compress. But essentially, I would like to open this up in order to make a door. 
door is already in place okay does it count as a kitchen uh what did i forget of course i'm yet missing the spice grinder i'm gonna fix that just right now what i would like to see is my cooking operations moving over to this electric grill so i'm gonna have this at the highest priority though thinking about it yeah we don't even need to because the auto sweeper is gonna take care of it I guess we can just have it at normal priority. We're still going to do the fried mushrooms for now. We're going to do the pickled meals and of course the cooked seafood. I'm also probably going to crack up all of my dracklet eggs and then also the glossy dracklet eggs. I want to crack them up at least the ones that I have too many of. But maybe, yeah, I'm going to wait with that. We first have to add some automation. By the way, this should now be filling up with oxygen. And yes, that's working. My cooling loop is still going for it with one packet missing. That's that's absolutely fine. Okay, I can see this working. Now lately we have a bunch of power issues, shouldn't be too dramatic. I'm gonna get rid of the old cooking operation and then a spice grinder still needs to be somewhere here in the kitchen. We can also see all of that plastic, igneous rock and gold is incoming. It's just absolutely magnificent. Now come the glory days. Now one last thing we have to take care of is picking up the food and actually storing it again inside of this chute. And then we'll also need a way to actually bring the food into the correct location here for my duplicates to consume. But I think that is something for later. Right now I'm just gonna store all my food in this refrigerator and then the next time we might include the spice grinder and everything else that we need in order to make the food last forever. Right now what I would like to see is this line here completed so at least I can get the cooking ingredients already in there. It looks like right now we just have a ton of bleach stone. When would we be building that rail? Okay that means bleach stone is going out. We don't really need that much do we? Yeah probably not. Let's get rid of that bleach stone and then we are gonna add edibles. I'm just gonna do the cooking ingredients such as meat, maybe the meal lice, the mushrooms and the raw eggs, haku fillets and that's probably it. Just the raw food will be going here and then we can pick it in order to distribute it amongst the machines. And right now my bleach stone is making its way over here so we can fill this up with chlorine and checking the fried mushroom here. Hopefully we can also see it cool down. It doesn't go quick enough. Darn it. Yeah, this could become a huge issue. We might have to replace this and then just make it look a little bit uglier. I have to say, we only yet have 300 grams of chlorine in there. Maybe I was a little too impatient and this will indeed cool down quicker. Yeah, I guess we'll see. But a new era is upon us and now we have to fix the power issues. If I remember correctly, in the previous episode, we took care of the kitchen and you gave me a bunch of tips and hints. Uh, for one, for instance, is that we cannot use a temp shift plate here because the temp shift plate is of course gonna suck the heat or the chill out of the adjacent tiles and therefore we're gonna run into huge issues when it comes to temperature regulation. Yeah we cannot really do that so I have to get back in there as soon as possible. Let me see what is the best course of action probably to just take out this tile here and then I'm also taking apart the temp shift plate. You know though, maybe we can make this easier just by exchanging the temp shift plate here with a drywall. I know, somebody took the fried mushrooms out of there. Well, I guess that's fine. Okay, I think I got the drywall in there, but geez, somebody took the bleach stone. That doesn't make me happy. In this case, I have to add a little bit more bleach stone. Hopefully not too much. Yeah, I cannot really limit this. Good, there is my bleach stone now going back and we should have a much more reliable situation when it comes to chilling this down. Honestly, it might still not be enough because we have to cool down the insulated tile or at least one of the insulated tiles as well. But yeah, we'll see. Right now, looking at this, the radiant pipes, they are changing temperature quite a bit. So I'm assuming everything is going to be fine. Good. Now, the next thing we have to take care of is the power. We are lacking the power for quite a while now. And I figured these plug slugs, we can actually save them. They are the last two plug slugs. And they've been doing a great job in actually helping me get the power. So I guess one thing we could do is expand this room here. This would be 90 tiles. Oh no, that's not good. Do I even want to make this 96 tiles as well? Maybe we should save the plug slugs for other planetoids and get into geothermal power. On the other side, I need another solution right now. You know, what if we actually took care of the natural gas we find here on this planetoid? There's an awful lot of natural gas and it even comes very cold. That's because of this natural gas, guys, here. I just had this open for an extended period of time. Oh, looks like I want to actually get rid of that either way because it's totally in my 
base. Yeah, you know, I think it's a good idea in general. I'm just going to set up a pump right here. Let me see somewhere I can actually build it. And we're just going to pump this straight over to the first planetoid. There's even a little bit of power that I can borrow very easy. Let's check it out. Uh, maybe I'm even going to set up a sensor. So gas element sensor. We want to make sure that we detect at least a little bit of natural gas before we activate this. And then on the first planetoid where we have the teleporter, we're just extracting this. Let me get this all the way over. And I guess right here we could go up and over as well. And yeah, looks like we can just go ahead and hook this up. This should be absolutely working. So right now this will go all here. We don't really actively store it. I will be taking care of that another time. Right now the most important part is that we start pumping the natural gas out with the gas element sensor detecting natural gas of course. There it is and the last pipe. This should already be working and just going for it. Wonderful. Okay, now that is going to help tremendously and probably get us over the hump. The only thing I want to consider is that we don't always activate the natural gas generators. So what I'm going to do is make them dependent on this smart battery again so they don't always just turn on to create the water, but they will as soon as we require the power. And here we have it. All of them activated. Natural gas is just incoming and it will be gearing up. You know, having one pump is more than enough. And then every time one of these natural gas generators is active, we can just go with them. Like this guy's going to be active in 5.4 cycles. So now we should theoretically be able to charge up the batteries again and use the entirety of our infrastructure, including the new kitchen. So now all we need to do is make sure that the food that we cook is also landing back inside of this tile. And if I check out this tile, now the cooling seems to be working much better, but it doesn't seem to really be affecting the material that is on the floor. Right now, I have 1,800 grams of chlorine in there, so we cannot really do anything else. But what I could do is set up a conveyor loader right here that is going to be responsible to pick out the stuff that I require. For instance, we want always a little bit of food in this fridge, but there are also other things we want to extract. Like, for instance, in the short run, I want to get out the bleach stone that I have in here, but everything else is probably going to have a more logical destination or maybe multiples of these conveyor loaders. I mean, we can have them basically everywhere on the top here. But for this first one, I just want to install a chute and make sure that I can extract materials that I have here that I don't want. And I just noticed in order to be able to build this, I will have to remove something and set up a ladder, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. There it is. Right now, I don't even have anything in here that I want to keep. So I'm just going to set it to all. And there we go. It's all out. Now I just got to make sure that somebody picks up the bleach stone. Yeah, that's already happened. Okay, what is incoming here? Meal ice. And it will be transported over to the electrical grill right away, at least as long as there is the space for it. Now, I would also like to see some of the food just laying there, not doing anything, to see how quickly it is willing to actually cool down. Okay, I've been observing the situation a little bit, still taking apart more of the infrastructure from the previous space, and I figured looking at the power issues we have, it might be time for an industrial sauna. Also, the temperatures slowly but surely are getting out of hand, at least in places that I don't actively regulate. I mean, all of this right here is actually looking really good, but down below here and with the batteries and everything, it's just getting a little bit toasty. Also, my cooling system here for the volcanoes is struggling because I'm using water that evaporates at 100 degrees and we just need to use a better coolant. I thought about using petroleum. The problem about this is just the thermal conductivity is better, but the specific heat capacity is almost almost half as good. That means generally it will take much less to heat up the petroleum and it's still going to evaporate at 538 degrees, which then is basically much worse. So the best course of action until we have the super coolant, I think, is to shut down one of the volcanoes. Since I need to get in here in order to repair it, I think I'm going to do just that. So a temp shift plate made out of coal. And we're going to place that right here with a really high priority. And now if I make my way inside, we can hopefully shut this down with the next eruption and then casually take care of the rest. But we can clearly see in this liquid reservoir, I cannot keep this up any longer. I do need the super coolant for my plants to work out. 
one cobalt volcano is still going to be enough for our purposes. Currently, we have almost 30 tons of it. Now, the first layer of the industrial sauna here, I would like to be for natural gas generators. Let me actually see how many do we need? We have one guy here with an average output of 104 grams. This guy here provides 123 grams and the one on the second planetoid is providing also 105 grams. That is the average output considering they are not going to be active at all times. We can probably get away with four. So let's say right here we're going to get started four tiles per generator and we want four of them. So our room is going to stretch at least to this point and then I want to have some ladders to be able to access all the levels. Wonderful knees bed. Thank you very much. Okay once that is done this should no longer be an issue. We can easily keep up with one cobalt volcano just not the two of them. Inside the industrial sauna we basically want to have a steam room at all times in order to generate power with the steam turbine. So everything we built in here needs to be built out of steel in order to keep up with the overheat temperatures. So I want at least four of these guys right here and it looks like we already ran out of steel. However I reactivated the metal refinery so we should be making some more of that very soon. Now what else would I like to see inside the industrial sauna? Maybe some other sort of power generation? What about petroleum generators? I'm actually not a huge fan of them. They just use so much liquid at a time. Yeah, two kilograms of combustible liquid. It's just insane. It does also produce an insane amount of power, but still. Now thinking long term, we probably at some point get enough petroleum so that we can waste it. And in this case, we probably want to be prepared with a bunch of generators. I'm just going to set up one in order to not actually use the steel for it. And then right down below here, we have the space for two rows of batteries. Batteries. Still gonna go with the jumbo batteries so we can use the smart batteries with the active generators filling it up halfway and then the inactive sources such as the plug slugs and the solar panels will fill it up all the way if possible. But there we go. We basically want a row of batteries right here as well as on the top. I'm now also gonna attempt to get in here again and I'm actually gonna be using some petroleum or oil in order to achieve that. Now the cobalt volcano is erupting and it should be... Ooh, actually maybe we're not gonna be successful in this scenario with the temp shift plate. Yeah, holy cow, it is cooling down way too quick. Hmm, yeah, in this case, we might want to reset it completely. Also kind of avoid the water from going through and cooling it down. And then I'm just going to open this up and release the water. Oh no, we get some heat damage. Ah, <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, let's uh, not pick things up. Just keep the cobalt in there. Okay, now I'm rerouting the water. We can get rid of that. You know, it's funny. I had this critter drop-off point with Otto Brangle surplus. And because it was exposed to everything, it caused amari to basically wrangle up all the critters and it looks like we have another meteor shower upon us and curiously enough it doesn't happen on the first planetoid this is like the first time it only happens on the other two planetoids oh maybe i actually just missed it i also got my power cables in here we can just connect these through the ladder shaft and then technically this here would mark the end of the contraption now I'm inputting the petroleum. We still have a little bit of carbon dioxide here, which is fine. If I go ahead and just fill these up with tiles and then remove them again, we should be able to have a vacuum and then enter the room safely. And there we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We can open this up open that up then add a third aqua tuner maybe i want this to be an enormous cooling endeavor for this entire planetoid though we might have to restructure the cobalt volcanoes to also work like the gold volcanoes because it seems to be quite easier to just cool down the steam turbine and the final cooling stage instead of the entire contraption but you never know unless you try okay no <laughs> never mind i was just looking at it before the actual meteor shower yeah everything got destroyed we also need to kind of secure our transit tube access point here. Okay, now I think it would be really interesting to also power up these rooms. We still have a little bit of convenient space here. All we need to make sure is probably to lead the power cables through a different slot. And also, should these really all be mesh tiles? Yeah, probably. But there's one thing we haven't taken care of, and that is all of the drops these guys are going to produce. If we allow the polluted water to go all the way down, then it's going to evaporate and it's going to leave behind a little bit of dirt. So this is not really a satisfactory solution. It also means over time we're going to have more and more pressure inside of the industrial sauna and we need to take care of that as well. Now maybe one easy fix would be to keep going here and actually allow it to drop down below. 
where we'll be taking care of the extra liquid and maybe even the resulting carbon dioxide from the natural gas generators. Petroleum generators, if I'm not mistaken, are also going to produce polluted water. So this is kind of fitting in here. Yeah, you know, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to allow it to drop down below and then have a little processing area next to the steam turbine, but not connected with the room. So it's going to be divided. But maybe we can have a carbon skimmer or a pump to balance everything inside. Either way, my next aqua tuner would be going here and I want to keep this at a low priority. So they built everything else first. I also put the petroleum generator at a low priority. But yeah, essentially, I would like to see all of this built first, including the piping here and everything that I'm going to do the exact same way as I did with the two other aqua tuners. We then already need to think about how to route the gas, which I think I'm going to do just next to my oxygen. It can then directly move into the natural gas generators. And then, of course, we're also bringing out the carbon dioxide here. And I would like to see the carbon dioxide go down uh, for processing. I don't necessarily want to dump it into the planetoid. Maybe just get rid of it. The petroleum generator is also going to produce a little bit of carbon dioxide. That means the carbon dioxide is probably going to be at the bottom and the steam at the top. Which means if I only have one gap here, it's probably not going to be enough. And then the floor is covered with a liquid. So it's just going to struggle overall to get the carbon dioxide down. So maybe then instead of these last batteries, Batteries, we're gonna have a gap for the water to actually dribble down and then also leave more space for gases to flow down freely. There, just have a ladder piece here and probably one here as well so we can get rid of this layer. Now at this point I need a little bit of access to obsidian. This might be an issue. Well, maybe we can take apart this insulated tile and then just set up a storage with a limited amount. So say I have a storage here just temporarily. Get rid of this. Uh, can I get rid of this? Yeah, there's my storage bin. I want to store, let's say, five tons of obsidian in here. So we at least have access to it. Oh no, dupes are just gonna bring it over here again, right? Uh, no, I have it at priority five. Yeah, that's actually fine. It is at a thousand degrees and it's actually cooling down. So that is a bad sign. Is it heating? Yeah, it's heating up the tile. Ah, oh, jeez. I need someone to build this insulated tile, please. Um, somebody. Come on. Ugh, we're already at 300 degrees. There we go. Okay. Okay, now this should have stopped the interaction here and therefore the abyssalite isn't cooling down anymore. Also the cobalt volcano here is now taken care of. Everything is overheated but at least my cooling loop is flowing again uninterrupted. Now in order to make this room a little bit more efficient uh, let's have a look at the stations. We need what do we need? A power control station. Yes that's exactly what we need. It doesn't even have an overheat temperature so we can save a little bit on steel and oh no it's larger than I thought but we could fit it here. Or we just have these first two guys a little bit lower, which I think is what I'm going to do. These two first mesh tiles. There it is. Okay. Power control station. Place you... Ah, uh, gold. I want to make you out of gold. Place you right there. Now I'm going to deconstruct the ladder here, set up a door, and that should make this a power room. And this is where I need to reroute the cabling. Say we go straight down here. That might actually make a little bit more sense. And then just add heavy watt conductive charm plates here. This will then allow me to get rid of this portion of the power cable and therefore set up some doors to divide this into a power room. And this is going to make all of these generators 50% more efficient, which is going to be an absolute blessing. Good. Looks like we're done with the mushrooms here. Yeah, all of this can go. And we're also done with this portion of the base. I want to disassemble most of the stuff here. Wonderful. We've made some substantial progress. And I decided to make this layer here also a solid layer. So all the liquid will be dropping down. Some of it will evaporate and leaving behind some dirt. The other liquid will just pour down where we are going to collect it. And so I think I will be able to take care of the entire issue fully automatic and no duplicates will have to pick up dirt. Right now I'm still waiting for some fossil deliveries right here. Lyra is taking care of it, bringing that stuff over to the main planetoid so we can keep on crafting the steel. If we lay it out in a pattern like this, I can reach all of the machines here or the entirety of the floor with the auto sweepers. Except for this little piece right here, that could be an issue. Now these guys are overlapping, but I did it so that I can fit two of the generators in between and then another one here. So maybe we can prevent this from happening by just having these as mesh tiles as well. So the liquid can 
drop down and hopefully it's never going to evaporate here. I also took apart the hydrogen generators right here. At the moment, we're using up the entirety of the hydrogen we're producing from the spawn right here at the base. So this is the first power source that we're utilizing as soon as we drop below the 90% mark. And then the next resource would be the natural gas that will kick in here. It will be going down into the generators. Now, maybe we can utilize this space right here in order to set up the smart battery that is going to steer everything. This also needs to be built out of steel. It goes right there. And then I also hooked up an automation wire. So either we enable the petroleum generators together with the natural gas generators, or maybe we're just going to set up a delay so the natural gas generators can take care of the issue. And if we're using more power, then we are activating the petroleum generators as well. So all we have to do here is maybe set up a filter gate and just set up an adequate delay. Another thing I would like to initiate is maybe thin the gases a little bit inside of the base here. I think I'm just going to open up a little portion here in order to get rid of it. Maybe we can use this part. So just get rid of the background buildings here and then all of this oxygen and the hydrogen, but especially the polluted oxygen and the carbon dioxide can escape. Now, I don't want all the gases to disappear just yet since we have machinery that are dependent on being submerged in gas, but it's going to be the first stage of cleaning up the planetoid from the unnecessary gases. May unreachable food, what are you talking about? I need to build this cable for this auto sweeper to work and right now it's not working. So maybe let me get rid of that and all of the shebang should land in this fridge. So my thinking is that we have this conveyor loader to extract materials that we don't want inside of here if this ever occurs. And then this conveyor loader here is going to pick up all the materials and ingredients that we drop on the floor here. It will be delivered into this conveyor loader and then it will be going all the way over to our drop-off site where the food is going to be put back into the respective conveyor loaders to be cooked. Okay, much better. Now this seems to be working. I'm going to pull up all edible stuff right here, but it's going to have a priority of one. So whenever we need to store it in this refrigerator, it's going to prioritize that. And then maybe we're also going to remove the rot piles in case we get some. We did get some because I wasn't paying attention. As a matter of fact, this conveyor loader can probably pick up anything we have inside of the room and it will just be stored in the main storage. Totally forgot to check my food again. We have some food issues because I haven't set up the automatic killing just yet but we're gonna do that very soon right now I'm just getting rid of a bunch of these critters and then it looks like we'll soon have some incoming pakus yet yeah, they're soon gonna die of old age the filter gate right here for the delay I'm gonna set to about 60 seconds so we have a minute worth of time in order to refill the status with the natural gas generators and if that isn't happening the petroleum ones are gonna help out I also would like to see my fire pole maybe once again yeah let's try to replace that and i'm collecting some more obsidian to build the rest of my ladders i just feel like in every hot room i want obsidian ladders i don't know why there it is smart battery now we had the hydrogen at 95 and 90 percent i want this to be a little bit lower let's say 80 percent is going to be the next threshold then 60 seconds later the petroleum generators are going to be activated and if that all fails we'll have to go to another one okay let's also go for an expansion here with with the steam turbine even though it's not quite necessary just yet but i want to get this out of the way and especially with the cooling we need to think about that yeah i'm probably gonna go around the entirety of the sauna can we set up another one i think wait do we have the space for another one no it's just one block too small for that purpose i'm not 100 sure yet for now let's just get this out of here and connect it to the loop but I still feel like we've made a lot of progress. Let's not forget about the big hole we poked in here. But I think it's going to be good to get rid of some of that stuff. And eventually, as soon as we build the industrial sauna, we can change where the natural gas is going. Maybe even make a storage for it. Okay, before we wrap everything up, I noticed two things during editing. One of which is that the auto sweeper right here is always going to pick out all the food if I have it set up this way. Of course, I need to remove everything from edible that I actually want to keep in the storage. That would be things like the cooked seafood, the fried mushroom room just everything that has been cooked hold the phone this is absolutely useless we can just remove the entire edible category yeah this is not going to work not with this auto sweeper because it can always reach this tile and it can also reach a large portion of the ground so all the food we're dropping we cannot pick up with this one because it will then just go ahead and cycle all the food and of course that doesn't make sense we want to keep the food in here and only pick it out once we actually need it 
And that's why I have this refrigerator, just limited to 2 kilograms, and the duplicants will be able to distribute it amongst the various refrigerators. Yeah, for that reason, I might have to revamp the structure for now. I'm just not getting the food out of there unless I put it in the refrigerator or into this conveyor loader if I want to remove it entirely from the frozen tile. Yeah, either way, the second mistake that I noticed is that we will not be able to actually put this into a conveyor loader. Like, I have the auto sweepers, but no space for a conveyor loader. One way we could solve this, since I only made the space for four of these generators, is just leave a little bit more space, but that will also require me to move the smart battery. This way I have the space for a conveyor loader, let's say here, and this is still going to be able to cover the entirety. So i rather remove one of these batteries right here, replace it with a smart battery at the bottom. Now currently it looks like a lot of my duplicants are inside the base, at least touching from the Atmosuit docks. Is everything still alright? Yeah. Stuff seems to be flowing. Occasionally I get some polluted oxygen packets from the second planetoid here with the natural gas but I will be filtering that out before inputting it into the real system. Now before we can do anything about that we should probably go ahead and finish the construction at the bottom. Like right here on this level I would like to take care of everything. Let me see. Oh this is not connected anymore. Whoops. Though I'm assuming in the future I can connect it this way and then maybe right here at this point we're gonna exchange the cable with a joint plate and actually seal off the steam turbine room. At the bottom we'll have to take care of polluted water, we want to gobble that up as quickly as possible and then also the carbon dioxide, we'll have to take care of that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a carbon skimmer here, we need to build this out of steel as well. And then I guess right next to it we can also have the liquid pump. Now we need to reroute this, I already built the pipe, so all I gotta do is cut this off and route it this way so it can travel to the aqua tuners. The resulting polluted water I want to get out of here. Now this is not good, I need to build the bridge into the other direction so we don't leak the heat. I would say we're gonna do that right here and then for now I'm just gonna dump the water right here into my existing pool but this will continue and you know what to make this a little bit more streamlined I think I'm gonna pull down my ladder this way and then we also proceed with the cabling this way. This is gonna allow me to replace this tile with a mesh tile. Looks like I trapped Nisbet. No she's just idling. Something else I need to make sure is a convenient way into the contraption and I figured the best thing we can do is actually have a transit tube access point. The question is just how are we gonna pull this off? The melting point of a transit tube is 160 degrees. We could potentially have a transit tube access point here. So this room here is also going to fill up with steam, obviously. And it could make things less efficient. Ooh, I'm playing with fire here. Just a little drop of petroleum is holding all of this steam in. But now we can take this to the next level. The transit tube access point itself does not have an overheat temperature. So what we want to accomplish is this room here being sealed off from the aqua tuners and then the room here at the bottom as well. We will definitely have to remove the door and maybe move it slightly down. This would then allow us to set up a tile here and then get the petroleum layer to cover this entire bit. The petroleum on top here we'll have the same temperature as the heavy watt conductive joint plate and possibly heat up the transit tube but there's going to be a vacuum otherwise so we can easily get out of here and set up a crossing right there. Actually it doesn't look like that's gonna work. The crossing seems to be a little bit too low. Maybe in this case we're just gonna move out. Is this gonna be an issue? Yeah as long as we have the gases in here it's gonna be an issue. To get the power inside the room, I'm going to be utilizing this tile. Ooh, we could actually have it right here as well. That's interesting. So I could just have it here and actually leave all of the steam turbine inputs intact. Yeah, so from the looks of it, this really doesn't connect. I have to put the transit tube crossing somewhere else. Maybe in the future, once we have a larger vacuum around the planetoid, this isn't going to be necessary. But for now, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, now there's a little bit of carbon dioxide, which is not actually an issue because we're going to join these rooms together and there's going to be carbon dioxide everywhere. We still have to think about how we actually solve this with the carbon skimmer here. Right now water from the cooling loop is being used. That might actually not be the worst of ideas. What we can do is then just connect these two together. Hmm, let me think. Probably just, yeah, I can just connect these because the pump is not always going to be active. Maybe to steer that a little bit, we're going to set up a hydro sensor as well with a bunch of automation wire right there. 
Oh, actually, I totally forgot. We're going to exchange this with super coolant. So that is not a solution that is going to work forever. So we would need a reliable source of water. I don't really want to do that, honestly. So I think what I'm going to do is deconstruct this again. And we're going to pump out the carbon dioxide instead. I'm also going to open up this part right here. So gases can flow freely down. And then right here, we're going to have our pump. Yeah, that's probably good. Let's also set up a hydro, no, Atmo sensor. It's going to go here and actually steer the pump right there. Then all we got to do is get the gases outside, which we probably can do this way. I honestly don't know yet. Let's just go ahead and expel it for the time being and take care of that another time. So that means I can bring this right up here. That should be taking care of the issue. Okay, I can see one critical moment and I wish I had taken care of that previously, but we need to replace this tile here this could go really wrong i think i'm even gonna make a safe game in case i need to do this as the very last step but if we can replace it right now with the drop still being on there i'm gonna be quite happy knee spit please no that did not work yeah reload the safe game i figured it was worth a try ah finally the last piece in the puzzle and our third aqua tuner is being activated this is gonna give us a huge advantage probably would allow us to re-enable the volcano yeah this is still looking good only the first one is being utilized at 20 degrees okay and we got our coolant at 9.9 .9 degrees wonderful so now we can replace these two tiles and i want to replace this one first so the petroleum gets pushed over and then the this one second. Hold the phone, we first need to collect materials, but you get the basic chest. Uh, wait, what? Now you. Th come on, you cannot be serious. Oh well, in this case, I'm gonna mop it up right away. Uh, let's see, is somebody taking this errand? Meep. Okay, so we can probably replace this because we need to do it quickly. And uh, now I also need to grab the petroleum. <sighs> I'm so screwed. We're down to 60 kilograms of steam. Everything has been moved. So let's build this tile, somebody. Also, let's not forget a bottle emptier here. So we can actually get that petroleum to land on this layer and therefore shut off this entire room. Well, at least once we got it a vacuum. Maybe that is actually a good opportunity to do it because it's full of steam. There's, oh, this is perfect. I don't even have to vacuum it out. And then the room below is also going to fill with steam and push down the carbon dioxide that I then can pump out. Okay, let's go ahead and set this to, say, above 200 kilograms. We want to start pumping it out. And then also with the gases, let's say for now at 2000 grams. By the way, is this now hooked up to the main grid? Yeah, looks like we are now connected that is good so these batteries are charging up well more or less good i'm gonna get a little bit of petroleum in the joint maybe in the future we could do this with nafta actually that might be the better idea holy cow that is actually a much better idea so we need to get something to melt here something made out of plastic what if we just go ahead set up a plastic ladder here and get that one to melt eventually no, it's probably not going to be enough heat. I have to do this somewhere else. I wonder, maybe an easier way to get a little bit of naphtha would be to replace one of these ladders here with plastic and then it's just gonna drop down the resulting plastic and it's not gonna be bothering me too much there it is the ladder oh no it's not heating up quick enough how is this even possible i think i'm gonna build it a little bit higher up there ren show us how it's done ladder is there and this one is heating up quicker what are you talking about 26.7 degrees this is gonna take forever okay i'm gonna attempt something else but i'm a little bit worried that it is gonna overheat dramatically so if we get some naphtha it's then gonna evaporate into some sort of crazy gas but i don't really know yeah look we got the naphtha now i need somebody to pick that up really quick like immediately me quinn i don't even care just somebody and then since we have naphtha we should be able to get it into the bottle emptier let me also check the evaporation point is 538 degrees oh yeah it's gonna evaporate <laughs> oh my gosh i hate it let's maybe try a temporary temp shift plate here see if we can heat up the ladder quicker anyways the room i believe is now more or less sealed off we just have to take care of this issue right now we have a drop of water preventing everything from getting out there but everything is almost at 100 degrees and i feel like we could get started with the natural gas generators at least they will be adding a little bit more water and potentially steam natural gas is already incoming now i need to make some sort of a filter to make sure we only get natural gas yeah this is bad i'm gonna get a gas pipe element sensor in there together with a knot gate and some automation wire you know the drill there's my temp shift plate now let's check out the ladder still 
not heating up quickly. I can wait a cycle or two. Good, I got my sensor here in place. Natural gas can accumulate and start with the powering up process. Carbon dioxide will be shipped out. That seems to be working fine. Okay, and we're producing power until the smart battery is full. In this case, we want to get rid of the old system right here. I can just go ahead and take this apart, get rid of the natural gas generators themselves. And then let me see right now. I just want to make sure that all of the gases are coming over. So I guess I can get rid of these pipes here. But maybe we're first going to allow it to flow into the new system. Now my transit tube access point is hooked up. Theoretically, we don't need this lip anymore, but I want to keep it in place so I'm able to actually put down some NAFTA. Yeah, otherwise I don't really have the space to do it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be our only chance. Alrighty, a couple of cycles have passed. We're almost there with the plastic ladder and we also finally built everything inside of the industrial sauna. Right now, our main concern is going to be to get this heated up enough in order to accumulate enough steam to pressurize this properly. Maybe one way we could accomplish this is by using the Cobalt Volcano's output routed through this chamber here as well in order to heat it up and evaporate as much liquid as possible. You know what? That might not be the worst of ideas. Let's try it out. So instead of wiggling and jiggling around, I will just be going through the initial water layer and then we continue downwards, maybe hop across the plates and we bring this all the way down to our initial polluted water layer, try to heat this up Actually, maybe let's go down here so we have a way to get up again because I still kind of want this loop to be ending in the final cooling phase within the aluminium tiles. Okay, now I got my final loop here. It just goes above and beyond. One issue we have to take care of is the steam turbines. We don't want them to overheat and all we have to do for that is integrate it into this little bit in order to ensure we pump out all of the gases, make this a proper vacuum. Yeah, so maybe we don't even need this transit tube crossing i'm gonna take that out and replace it with a normal transit tube and then we can just have the crossing right here making this a closed room and we can pump out the gases looks like my ladder finally melted which means we can mop up the nafta here and then i'm gonna bring it over now get that into the bottle emptier. We should have that as an option. Yeah, good. Now in due time, I might want a little bit more nafta. What if we placed one of these guys? Yeah, that will probably heat up a lot quicker. Okay, now I have 8.9 kilograms of nafta here. I think this is good to get started with. I can leave the bottle emptier here. The main thing is now we close this off and make sure we can pump out the room and get it started. I still have a little bit of steam in here, but now the two rooms should be separated. And I'm also now starting to tune up the natural gas generators in order to produce more power. So the ones that are tuned up are going to produce 1200 watts instead of just 800. And of course, the better the operating skill of the tune up guy is, the longer it will last. Right now it lasts for five cycles. I still need to get back inside the room here. And of course, I need to make sure that these two rooms are now connected. So one way I think we could do this is by temporarily disabling one of these natural gas generators. We can then deconstruct it and I want to go ahead and replace the flooring beneath the aqua tuners with mesh tiles. I can then use a simple ladder in order to get up there once I deconstruct this tile. In the meantime, let's set up a quick and dirty gas pump just to get the gases out of there. This should become a vacuum at this point. Now the steam is starting to distribute. And then I think instead of powering it this way, I will just be utilizing the power that comes through here. That means we get some heavy watt wire and then probably just, hmm, just go through there. Yeah. I also found a temporary solution in order to get the food to be deep frozen inside of here. And all I had to do is basically make the duplicates bring the food to the conveyor loader. So this is now still a manual process, but it will cause all the duplicates that are responsible for storing items to bring the dropped food to the conveyor loader for the deep frozen storage. And it also seems like the food itself doesn't actually have to have a low temperature like this. Yeah, that's a bad example, but let's go with this barbecue at a temperature of 6.5 but checking out the status right now it is deep frozen so it changes 0% per cycle. So it really depends on the temperature of the chlorine that seems to be the factor that dictates which food is deep frozen already. So yeah, luckily for us, this is now kind of working out. That's not looking good, but this is why we have NAFTA, at least I believe so, because it can withstand whatever the heck is happening right now. Yeah, I need to get this pump built. We need to pump it out. 
Okay, we're testing the waters here. This would be the cobalt just going through here, briefly touching this room and then hopefully still having enough heat in order to make sure we always get a little bit of steam from that polluted water. And then it's gonna finalize its tour just like before. I will be remodeling this a little bit, but I have the feeling we can make use of that to kickstart the industrial sauna. Once it is hot enough, then maybe we'll be able to sustain it without it. Okay, some overheat damage the way this is going going right now without the volcano I actually have to make sure to feed in the initial steam myself and I guess for now we could get away just cooling down the first aqua tuner and letting that generate a little bit of steam both water and polluted water would be fine enable auto bottle at a high priority and that should generate some steam and then as soon as we're ready here again we are gonna enable the cobalt volcano maybe in this case we should re-establish the cooling loop here there it is just what i wanted to see ah uh, thank you Hmm, you know what? We could just go ahead and connect these guys to the loop. I mean, if we take the polluted dirt, run it through the steam, run it through the cobalt volcano and then cool it down. Yeah, that would actually save us an entire rail here. You know, I might live to regret my decision to have the conveyor loader on this side because it then runs through the water and it will cool down too much. So it would be much better to have it here. Can I reach it? Not really. So in this case, one over to the left side and then it doesn't have that much time to really cool down before it starts to attempt heating up this room. Okay, I feel like we can risk now to open up the cobalt volcano. I'm just uh, gonna go ahead and do it and not care. We're gonna pick up everything. The auto sweeper should put that in there. And now, yeah, let's see how that goes. Well, there we go. Okay, we will actually witness the next eruption. It should just be inside the water layer. So we should get away with one or two eruptions, even without having anything in there. And now I want to see this happen going into the delivery thing. And currently, it is still at 93 degrees. Hmm. Okay, I think I might want to make this a normal steam room. It seems there's just too much cooling power in water and these are coming out at, well, okay, this one here is 400 degrees. That's actually really good. That might actually do something with the steam room and the water. Yeah, look at that. Okay, it is actually evaporating. Oh, this is great. We are creating steam. I made steam! And it looks like, yeah, they're coming out at a decent temperature. 600 degrees right here. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, so we can get rid of the bottle emptier, redo this. Okay, with it actually functioning, I would say we're gonna hook up the cooling loop. I need to uh, finish that. Oh, wait, did this pipe get deleted? Could be that it actually melted. Now we just gotta make sure we actually cool these down here. Uh, let's connect this and connect that. Cut off this pipe and now we are cooling these metal tasks down again. I'm gonna close off the contraption, maybe just leave a little bit free here. And also, yeah, let's get rid of that. I'm gonna feed it with some hydrogen in due time. In the meantime, we can see that all of the water that is dropping down is immediately being converted to steam again, which is a really, really good sign. I think it's time to now dismantle my old batteries. They're not really safe here either way. Well, we did still have a little bit of time in terms of temperatures, but I'm still glad to be done with it. I then would like to see my main power connection right here on this level. So it's gonna go through all the way to the other side and eventually connect with this. I'm almost at the threshold. I need to be 120 degrees for the polluted water. So I think with the next eruption, we will have heated up this room enough in order to get all of this new stuff converted to steam and then we just have to find a way to regulate it making sure we always have a similar amount of steam in there and otherwise pump it out or maybe just pump out the carbon dioxide are we starvation i totally forgot to feed him yeah of course let's uh, send him over some pickled meal there that was five kilograms i'm gonna wait for a little bit more that was polluted dirt and that is now pickled meal at that okay that's probably gonna be enough in the meantime we have the second eruption here and the water loop uh yeah look at that this just burned through i mean the rail we can exchange with wolframite so that shouldn't be an issue anymore but as long as we don't really have much gas in here or carbon dioxide it's just really bad now where could we go grab some hydrogen or maybe natural gas. What is natural gas doing? I mean, we have so much of it. Thermal conductivity is really bad, but the specific heat capacity, not too bad. What about hydrogen? Yeah, that is actually really devastating when it comes to conductivity. 
Maybe one way we can get away with it is by building an insulated obsidian pipe and that is going to be enough together with the cooling loop to keep everything intact. So we now have that go into that direction, remove these pipes. Ah, wonderful, 140 degrees. This is actually really good news. All the new water should now be converted. Maybe we even dump a little bit. Oh, look at that. We actually achieved a vacuum here. So this is now completely free of gases. That means I can get rid of the pump here and uh, potentially, yeah, let's just go ahead and replace this mesh tile with a ladder or something. Okay, now I'm going to make sure to pump out everything here and also activate this guy here. Maybe right now we just go overboard and activate it anyway to get rid of some of the carbon dioxide that has accumulated. Pneumatic door overheat damage. I did not even think about that, but of course, course that is going to be quite an easy fix. We either build it out of steel or we build a manual airlock. Uh, let's do, I don't know, Let, let's just build it out of steel. Okay, finally we're talking here a little bit. We're now pumping out the carbon dioxide for the most part. Now mind you, one pump might not be enough, but I don't even know if we need the liquid pump in the future. It might just all get converted to steam and then we have to extract the extra steam that we have too much of. But it looks like right now this is working at a decent efficiency of course i had to go in there one more time in order to set up a bottle emptier but what can i say in the end hopefully it's going to be a roaring success well we almost got rid of all the carbon dioxide now we should probably go to above 2000 grams or maybe even above 20 kilograms so once we got 20 kilograms of steam per tile all the carbon dioxide is going to be compressed down well maybe it's going to accumulate here a little bit but that doesn't matter yeah i might have to observe this let's get this to 20 kilograms but yeah right now i can already see some issues again we're totally dependent on the cobalt volcano to kickstart us Either way, I'm gonna keep this observed. I think it was worth it to keep on working on that. The entire planetoid is now getting more and more structured. And I think soon, once the industrial sauna is running completely, I would like to explore space for fullerene in order to craft the super coolant. That would be absolutely amazing. In the previous episode, we finalized the industrial sauna. I now have to figure out a system to suck out the exact amount of heat that I want. For now, to lower the cooling power that we have, I disabled two of the steam turbines, so only one is active and providing new steam, aka new water for the room. And as long as I see the dripping down water immediately evaporating into steam, I'm pretty happy. As I deconstructed one of the natural gas generators, I unfortunately released a little bit of natural gas. That could be an issue. Also, this little piece of polluted oxygen. I think I might want to get rid of that at some point. Right now, let's also set this to all non not for manual use and the dirt on the floor will be picked up and it will of course also go through the cooling process right there okay now let's tend to something else i would like to get some of this machinery down for instance the spice grinder still needs to be inside of the kitchen so that means our wall will have to move a little bit we can set that up right here. Gotta get rid of these two tiles though. Ah, uh, that's gonna be an issue. And now, will you look at that? It also looks like we will need an automatic kill chamber. Now, I wonder, could I just input all of the eggs right here? And then the eggs that I want to cook will be put into the egg cracker. And the others will just hatch here. They will have nowhere to go. Therefore, not impacting my game too much. And then when their life cycle is over, they're just gonna die. But then we also need to make sure we can actually replenish the numbers right here so maybe we should always have an egg incubating and then all of the other eggs will be transported up that is actually a really interesting idea for the time being let me wrangle up one of these guys and then we're gonna set this up here critter eggs all of them should be moved over and it looks like we still have a whole bunch of glossy draglet eggs so all of them should be moved over and now the question is, is it going to be worth it to, for instance, kill a glossy Draco instead of making an omelette out of it? Yeah, this actually needs to be tested. If I kill this glossy Draclet in its youth, Nisbet is taking care of that. What do we get? We get 3,200 kilocalories of meat. This meat will be processed into barbecue. We can see it takes that and creates 4,000 kilocalories with a good quality meal. Let's now check out the counterpart. So the eggs are now coming in. I want to see just how much kilocalories I can get from one of these eggs. And uh, wait a second. Where are you putting them? Ooh, 
that's not good. Uh, let's get rid of... Uh, what What am I doing here? This is supposed to go back into the storage, so I don't necessarily need that right now. But what I need is to cook up one glossy dracolid egg that should be put in here. And Joshua will be coming and taking care of that shortly. He's first cooking up some more pickled meal or barbecue. Oh, there is the egg. One raw egg comes with 1,600 kilocalories. And if we cook that up into an omelette, we get 2,800. So it's clearly beneficial to go for the barbecue. Even the morale is four points higher. Oh no, guys, I made a brutal mistake. My eggs, yeah, I just took out the other eggs. Okay, so my fry eggs are still in there, luckily. But of course, we have to remove them here from the conditions. Fry eggs gulp eggs and all the fish eggs shouldn't be part of the equation so now we could say should we get any dracolid eggs for instance we want to cook them up we're just going to go with the glossy dracolids for the meat and i guess that's going to be it for now now one other question is could i wrangle up the critters diagonally that would be interesting to know but look at that one of the glossy dracolids already hatched let's try to wrangle it up just see if that works it says unreachable okay so we would have to be content with them just hanging around here and therefore we need another way to replenish the numbers let's maybe try to put back the incubator we have previously in this room connect that up to power but we're also going to set up some automation for it I think for this one, we wanted to go with a timer sensor. Let's place that here and connect it up. The goal is basically to make Amari use the incubator and hug the egg once every cycle. But otherwise, we don't want the incubator to be activated so it doesn't constantly suck the power. And we're of course going to select a glossy dracolid egg right there. Incubate that. And then we should always have a critter. Whenever there are only seven critters in this room, then the critter will be brought to this critter drop off point and otherwise we need another drop off point i'm gonna be representing that right here for the time being it doesn't really matter for now if we see some dracolids hanging around here then that is gonna be the result so i basically only want to bring the young glossy dracolid over here because that's what we should be getting from the incubator as for the timer sensor one cycle lasts for 600 seconds let's say we need about 60 seconds to make it here and actually use the incubator maybe i'm gonna make this a little bit longer 120 seconds and then the red duration is gonna be everything else now we can only set it to 600 can i go a little bit higher by doing it no so this could become an issue when the buff lasts exactly 600 seconds then it's always gonna be a little bit later and therefore at some point we're gonna miss the incubation or the hugging phase Maybe it's better done with a cycle sensor. It could be that we can set it higher than one cycle. So we're going to try that cycle sensor. No, it still only covers one entire cycle. Ah, this is stupid. No, it's just me who is stupid. The red face can be 600 seconds and that would be perfect. Yeah, just forget me switching the sensor. The timer sensor was totally adequate with 120 seconds to 600 seconds. And now all we have to do is make sure that this incubator comes with the highest priority. Now one thing that is a real pity is you cannot actually replace the tiles here in the background. That is actually extremely disappointing. So you cannot go in and actually change the wallpapers without consequences in this case i just have to act really quickly or do one after another but i think we're just gonna go and set this to priority nine looks like ren is doing a fabulous job of course we are losing a whole bunch of oxygen but what you gonna do now it looks like together with the critters it might be harder to keep this in a deep frozen state right now we are at minus 12 degrees that's not good yeah, maybe we want to make this even colder. Let's go down to minus 30 degrees. Shouldn't be an issue with the hydrogen. By the way, I'm now at five tons of steel again. That means I can go ahead and make the next silo. And you mentioned three silos are technically enough. I want to have four because I already know four purposes for my rockets. But I think we're going to leave out the fifth for the time being to have that little extra space. It's now also time to clean things up a little bit. I wonder if I sweep up material, where are they going to bring it? Uh, ah, of course, right here. Ah, this is so perfect. Everything is actually here. There's an unreal amount of material just on this tile. Okay, then let's set up the bunker doors. Ah, oh, come on. Get one in here, then set up the drywall as well. Naturally, we can also not miss the cabling and this is actually just 
continuing yeah a little bit of automation as well get that down so we can individually open the door signal switch iron wait i don't have enough iron totally forgot to craft that again we still have 51 tons of iron ore so that shouldn't be the issue let's go with another 90 crafts but yeah we can build the signal switch also out of something else Okay, that will be three silos done. Right now, we cannot really utilize these two guys. Yeah, we need another solution for the interplanetary launcher, and we might even want multiple launchers for multiple planetoids. So it would be beneficial to leave at least one of these free. I mean, I cannot probably have that on top, though we have to test it. Can I? Ooh, no, this doesn't fit here. But we could have two launchers right here, maybe even three if we push this over a little bit. I mean, in the future, we can just have as many as we want because we are probably not going to be dependent on the solar power. Yeah, so I'm not going to worry. I'm going to build my launchers towards this side, eventually getting rid of the solar panels. Looks like I got some more NAFTA. I'm going to mop this up. It will be automatically brought over and eventually this little blob here is going to become more massive and it's just very sticky. Now we can see with just one steam turbine activated, we can still take the heat and it's about 150 degrees so we know this steam turbine we want to activate at 150 degrees then maybe this one at 175 and the last one at 180 or 200. I think that is actually going to save us a lot of trouble. So just set up a thermo sensor and I'm going to do that below the steam turbines probably. Yeah honestly we have no other choice. Well we could probably put it down below hmm. i might have to experiment around with that for now i'm just gonna place them right here get this hooked up and we can have three individual settings in the meantime the kitchen now also counts as a kitchen and enables the spice grinder use is there anything we want to do improves operating skills strengthens even the weakest of muscles that could be useful in general, but we need water weed seeds. With fungal spores and sucrose, we could boost the piloting abilities and then freshener spice. Slows the decomposition of perishable foods with the meal lice. You know, in our situation, I don't really see the benefits. We would have to do this very specifically, like for the operators or the pilots. So the only thing I see beneficial for all the dupes currently is the brawny spice. But yeah, we'll see. At least we get a little bit of a boost now that this is a kitchen area. Also, I would like to get the glass forge into the crafting room now. We can have that go right here. This should still be reachable by the auto sweeper. Ooh, actually, maybe we can put it even closer. Yeah, if I put this right here and then let's get a pipe made out of ceramic and I put this up there, then I should be able to dump it immediately. And before I forget, I probably also want a ceiling light in here. It's this is gonna cover both contraptions i think no probably not but we can have one here and we can have one here that will then cover the entirety of the area of course everything in here will require a little bit of power should be easy and then what else we have the space for probably the rock crusher yeah i see like these three machines being the most important ones oh no that doesn't actually fit hmm we might have to put that here on the top that would have been great though but i don't really see a way to fit it unless well we don't need this ladder why do i even have that is it complicated to move everything no we just have to move the refinery one block over this is actually perfect yeah let's get rid of that ladder then just rebuild the metal refinery the pipes are already routed the correct way oh no we're struggling with power again yeah, I need to fix this. Let's see, the third engine here, I only want to be activated if the temperature reaches above 200 degrees, okay? Then the second guy, I want to be activated if we reach above 175 degrees. And this guy here, only activate at 150 degrees. And now that we built everything in here, I'm just gonna seal this off again so this room can actually be more efficient when it comes to power production. By the way, there's still a little bit of a struggle with the carbon dioxide here. What we can do is replace these two guys with airflow tiles and then once we got the initial oxygen or carbon dioxide out of there, we should be good. I mean, it did work for all the other floors, but this bathroom here is still bothering me slightly. Now we can also see the glossy dracolid egg is right here and it is incubating. I wonder though, did we take care of hugging it already? And now the incubator is disabled for the entirety of the cycle 
vessel and therefore we're not wasting that power. In the meantime, I can see a little bit of the pattern here. Yeah, we probably ah, we want to activate this later. Like right up here, we still have 218 degrees, which is absolutely insane. But down here at the bottom, we're down to the 100 degrees already again. At least everything is more or less steam, but I still feel like I have to up the ante. Let's say 175 for the first one, 200 degrees for the second one and 225 for the third one. 200 is theoretically the maximum you should aim for, but we have a very large steam room and I might have to implement some temp shift plates. As a matter of fact, we should totally think about that. I could make some temp shift plates easily with the cobalt, but then again, we would need quite a few in order to bring up the heat. I wonder, will we ever get to stabilize that temperature? Yeah, I think with the system here, we should be able to do it, but we might have to replace the sensors somewhere else so they are measuring the temperatures further down. At least now we have our tune-ups going on here and my natural gas generators are producing enough power to supply the base yeah that's actually interesting now this went down below the 225 so it's not always active but we might have to go even higher. I mean, what is the overheat temperature of this guy? 325. That means if we go 100 degrees lower, that should be a safe margin. Yeah, maybe we don't even have to have them at different settings, but we're just gonna have them all at 250 degrees, for instance. Let's test that out, 250 copy those settings over to the other sensors so all three steam turbines get activated pretty late in the process but slowly and surely we are accumulating more steam we're already at four kilograms contrary to the two kilograms like 10 minutes ago okay let me think what about an oxalite refinery we could put that here but that could result in issues well unless we have a auto sweeper wait a second i got my oh no that could be another issue what if we have a creature that actually eats chlorine? I cannot even tell if I still have some gases in there. It's still chlorine. Okay. Which creature eats chlorine? Here. Okay. We cannot have squeaky puffs in here. Oh, geez. That's not good. Let me see. Squeaky puffs. Just tell me we don't have any of those in there yet. Squeaky. No. Okay. Good. Then we need to remove them. They cannot eat my chlorine. As a matter of fact, I'm going to remove all critter eggs and I'm only going to do the ones that I potentially get from my farms. Like we don't have any of the other farms just yet. So I'm not going to do it. You know, that makes a little bit more sense to me. So I'm getting all critter eggs out again and I'm just going to rotate them back in. Oh no. What, what, what happened here? I, I totally cut off the upper portion of the base. <laughs> Gosh, this is horrible. Horrible. I know. I know exactly when this happened. This must have been a couple of cycles ago. I'm such an idiot. Everything goes down the drains now. Ah, there it is. Okay. The Lola bite actually now worked and we are experiencing the red phase. Okay. I think this is good. The glossy dracolids should now be automatically replenished. Okay, so oxalite refinery. This one requires a little bit of oxygen and also gold. It will then drop some oxalite on the floor. And of course, the oxalite would off gas in case we have some carbon dioxide on the floor, which is likely because the dupes are working here. However, if we always immediately pick it up with an auto sweeper that we can have on the top here, let's test this out. We can have one. Ooh. Looks like the oxalite refinery is a little bit higher than I thought. Yeah, that is going to be an issue. So I'm definitely going to put that on the top here. And we're now going to take ourselves the time to move the refinery. Yeah, I can see having the critters in here is actually a huge problem. But I wonder, could I maybe kill them off? I mean, sometimes you can kill critters like diagonally. Uh, I don't think that actually is going to work. Ah. Yeah, I cannot really have everything. But what we could do is just have a secondary containment chamber. Uh, let me see. Molecular Forge. Yeah, this is going to require the entire size of the room. But, you know, instead of bringing the critters here, we could just confine them in a different tile. And we could even drown them if we wanted. Then I could have my Molecular Forge here and collect the supercoolant on the bottom. I like that. I like that idea. Where is this going? This is also going up here. So we could technically reach this tile. If I now also surround this like so, we might be able to pull this off. In this case, we could take the conveyor loader we have set up here and move up into the containment chamber. And then as soon as the creatures get processed to meat, then my auto sweeper will still be able to grab it. 
Oh no, what what the heck am I doing? Why am I breaking everything? What's going on? Jeez, okay. Apparently I just like to take apart my base. I know, it happens when I deconstruct the ladders and then you deconstruct this tile, it actually affects the heavy watt conductive charm plate and this is always confusing me. The same thing happened here. I took apart the ladders. Good, now the eggs will be delivered here but they will immediately be transferred over to the next system. Well, I could even enable all critter X and put this at a low priority. This would cause the egg cracker to have priority in case we want to crack up some eggs and therefore it's not going to be brought over. Yeah, I'm actually glad I didn't put the oxalite refinery down below because right now we can have it inside of the super coolant that is going to be whoop, produced by the molecular forge right there. And then I still should have enough space for an auto sweeper to kind of automate this. Get rid of that and that. All we need is a rock crusher no the rock crusher is gonna go here so we are still missing the plant pulverizer and the bleach stone hopper and maybe a bunch of kilns yeah not sure yet i'm gonna put that here put that maybe here and put that right there okay rock crusher in the meantime goes here this should be built out of gold and hooked up to power. Unfortunately, now I have a whole bunch of creatures in here and I really, I can't take it. I have to decommission these guys so my deep frozen storage works. Yeah, all of you guys need to die. I'm so sorry. And with that out of the way, we probably have a vacuum again. So we have to reintroduce the bleach stone. No problem. We can do that right here. What was it? I always forget consumable or probably bleach stone. Yeah. Let me see that happen. Bleachstone is in there, so I'm gonna take it out again. That's probably enough. Good, now we need to replace this tile here with pastel purple and bleachstone is filling up again. Look at that! We have quite a bit of food. This is really good news. And also it's like the perfect space for my molecular forge and the oxalite refinery. I'm actually really surprised how this turned out. Now how are we going to deal with that? There's some cabling and stuff just going through but generally it probably doesn't matter. And then as soon as we set up the conveyor chute we cannot even see it. Et voila! This is much better. Now my eggs are in here. However, I want to make this even better by setting up a bottle emptier and we're gonna fill this up with a little bit of water. This is gonna cause most of the animals to drown and therefore we don't have to deal with too high numbers. If we get a bottle of 200 kilograms, this should already be enough. Let's see who is bringing it. Gene is coming. Yeah, do you have a full bottle? I only... No, you don't. I only want full bottles, guys. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. Let's put that in and then just wait for another one. Wait a second. I'm in a pickle again because I can pick out from both of the storages the eggs are now just getting recycled the entire time. Ugh, that doesn't make sense. Well, it makes sense, but I'm just stupid. That's what I mean. Well, one way we could fix that and then also freeing up a conveyor loader is just by separating the rails. I mean, at some point we can just sort it out. For instance, filter. Wait, I did not unlock that. Oh my gosh. We're looking for a solid filter. Wow, this is actually really advanced. Advanced. Holy cow. Okay. I mean, technically we can do it. We still have 30 data banks or so. And this is why I left everything intact so we can do the research. Not so sure how many data banks we have. 50 units. Okay. It's actually going to be enough to do the research. We only need 30. Very nice. But we need to fill up the material study four times. But this would then mean we can, for instance, sort out the critters here and then bring them right into this storage instead of recycling it all the time. I figured it was a brilliant idea to be able to reach the storage but it's just vicious cycles but yeah maybe it's better to be able to reach both of these guys i just wonder can i also reach the gas range otherwise we might be in some other issues but i'm ready to redesign this in case it doesn't work right now all i want to do is make sure we have a secondary rail that directly goes over here so this is gonna be my critter egg rail we could then go ahead and use this portion here as our filter if i do this now though i cannot really reach anything yeah let me go ahead and build a ladder there this is gonna allow me to deconstruct three ladders right here in order to set up the filter no it's actually not possible there's the slot from the heavy walk conductive joint plate so we rather do something like this by just setting it up in a horizontal fashion that means we would be taking a detour into the filter right here we are filtering out oh i can only filter out one item at a time oh, this is so stupid 
what the heck am I even doing, man? So I think for now, I'm gonna change that completely by just going below here. And then we can potentially use the center storage here. I might want to move this conveyor chute, to be honest. Move conveyor chute over by one. Yeah, sure. And then we could be going straight through in order to bring the eggs to their corresponding location. Okay, let's try this again. We're gonna get all the eggs in here that we want. I think it's just the Dracolet and the glossy ones. And then I probably need to remove some of the infrastructure in order to reach all of the places and build these rails but yeah i can see this now coming along at least it is kind of a solution until we have a better one there is the rest of my water that should then be enough that means i can have my insulated tile right there and ooh, wait let's first build that conveyor rail wonderful now as soon as i have some critters in here they should automatically be drowning we'll see if that pans out I just have to say, I enjoy this game so much. People are now working inside the base. It is much more efficient. Even before I set up any conveyor receptacles, I mean, I might set them up right now. I'm pretty happy with the dupes just bringing the stuff over. What I would like to see taken care of, though, is all the debris that's basically falling on the ground. Right now, we cannot really cover everything, but we could add another auto sweeper, maybe. Mm, I might have to distribute the lights a little bit better. So yeah, for now, I do not worry too much about this i will be automating this room but first i would like to get this integrated into the base so we first need a little bit of background material just gonna go with solid charcoal here as well and make sure this entire room is layered up Something else I finally did is I integrated some temp shift plates. There are temp shift plates every other tile. I could have them two tiles apart, but I felt like I want to really push down the heat. And I really think that helped because we now get 210 degrees down below while we get 235 upstairs. So it's no more a 100 degree difference. This is really good news and potentially means we can cool this down even sooner than 250 degrees so we can be more efficient. Let's maybe try 225 degrees right there this is gonna activate all of our steam turbines at full capacity and then we get this to cool down again yeah as a matter of fact it does cool down extremely quickly already back to 190 degrees but yeah then we have the thermo sensors shutting off every now and then but yeah power wise we're actually a little bit thin it's good if we can activate the steam turbines do we yeah we don't really have enough space for another one of these power control stations that would actually have been amazing i could potentially do it right here but then i don't have a way to get up oh well, interesting i will have to think about it but it might be worth tuning these guys up as well let's get back to our building project here i just quickly want to finish this then include it into the base so i have a little bit of an easier access and now all of these eggs are incubating here the glossy dracolids they pretty much die immediately and then we just cook them up so they can just remain in here the meat until we cook it up and then the cooked version is gonna land in here where it is safe and sound at minus 28 or minus 30 degrees right now so yeah i'm pretty happy with that we can now increase the amount of food we're getting because we can indefinitely store it and then i also have all of my workstations i just need to rearrange a couple of things but i'm already looking forward to using the molecular forge for instance uh let's build these two tiles as well maybe from the top we'll also be needing some power wires here and probably there yeah i don't really want to hook this up to transformers that would be a nightmare also by the way i have a constant stream of materials coming in maybe from the volcanoes or the critter stations i really feel like things are coming along and sooner than later we might not even be dependent on getting the cobalt through this and we can just have it function normally but i first want to get access to the super coolant right now it was important to be able to run all aqua tuners at the same time since well we can now keep up actually pretty good we'll still have to get back in there in order to fix some of the pipes that's just how it goes but other than that not much went wrong and now we're about to complete this room as well let's maybe think about how to get oxygen in there like it would be nice to get down here maybe have a little vent there and then just continue as well downstairs to have a vent here and that means we need a little bridge there probably yeah a gas bridge here and there looks like my room is completed oh, this is so wonderful just need my gas pipes as well we should probably set up the lights and everything because i cannot really reach the top this is so annoying sometimes i wish there was a scaffold building that you just can place anywhere even in front of buildings so you can reach the top like can we build this gas bridge is somebody coming i don't think so yeah oh wait 
Who built it? I just totally missed that. So now I can bring this down and set up a gas vent and gas vent here as well. Well, once the ladder is gone and that means our loop is a little bit stuck again. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and extract one more packet. Uh, looks like Meep is up for the task. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you already extracted one packet. That is enough probably. Is it just one? Yeah, it's one. So I want to extract two because we have two bridges. Then that's gonna be good. This is gonna guarantee a constant flow again. Now just to give you a little taste of the molecular forge we have materials such as insulation which has no heat transfer at all so it's the perfect insulator and it's also finally used for the sucky abyssalite. Next we have the visco gel which is a really sticky insulator so it would be useful to make liquid locks. And then there is the plastium that comes with an overheat temperature of plus 900 degrees. And of course the supercoolant, which is just absolutely amazing. And we definitely want that. We basically can barely overheat it. Well, it, it is overheatable, but we can cool it down to an extreme degree as well. And my goal would be to replace everything that has to do with water that I'm using for cooling at the moment. Even the water inside of here, I would like to be super coolant so we can make it super cool. But yeah, at this point, I think we're ready to wall this off. Ooh, I should... Ah, okay. I know why I left this space. This should have been a metal tile wall, but I guess it doesn't really matter for this wall. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry too much. Let's just go ahead and close this off. Well, Nisbet just trapped herself, which is fine. This is now included inside of the base, so we can open up the real doorway, which is gonna go here. And of course, we're gonna set up another pneumatic door. Maybe you're gonna build this quickly, so not too much oxygen is gonna escape. Some hydrogen. I'm gonna move the hydrogen over here to the volcano. So maybe we can already release it there. Okay, but with that out of the way... Oh my gosh, just don't do it again. But yeah, with that out of the way and the room completed... Well, at least this room right here... Well, completed is also exaggerated. Oh, let's just forget it. The episode is long enough and with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap it up for today. I feel really happy. I also feel like we should really aim for the super coolant. That is the next thing I want to do. So maybe in the next episode, we're gonna make an exploration rocket in order to figure out where we can find fullerene. In today's episode, I would like to figure out if possible where we can find fullerene. That would be a perfect upgrade right now. And of course, while we're at it, we might figure out a few other things about space. Now, this is going to be quite a big endeavor since it looks like there are many tasks to explore. Has space become even bigger? It feels like it. Either way, I noticed we don't have access to the petroleum engine just yet, which is something I wanted to use. And in order to get that, we need a bunch more data banks. This could be an issue because I just don't have them yet. So I wanted to figure out what else we can do. And sadly, I think we have to revert back to the carbon dioxide engine. I mean, there's also the sugar engine, but we don't have any sucrose. And there is the steam engine, which usually is just a little bit annoying. You know, I wonder, do I have some data? Oh, I have 10 units right on this planetoid. And then the second one, well, really? Does it also come? No, zero units here. Yeah, honestly, it's still probably not going to be enough, the data banks. But I'm still going to add them here to the third planetoid into the conveyor loader. And it goes under industrial ingredient. Ooh, actually, we can do it without building another carbon dioxide engine because we have a bunch of vents that aren't researched just yet. So all we have to do on the second planetoid is research these vents. The minor volcano here is dormant, so I'm going to allow myself to dig it up. We're going to research it and then tile it back in again. And as a matter of fact, so I don't forget, I'm already going to set up the temp shift plate here that is going to supposed to freeze the volcano again. But then we just go ahead and surround this with a bunch of igneous rock. Then of course we analyze the volcano as well. Let me actually put this to lower priority. I first want to clean everything up just in case it becomes active much quicker. Oh, 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 that's not good. Zombie spores. Wait, how did this happen? Okay, it's not extremely widespread. Ah, there we go. Spore kit. This is really bad. Well, luckily we're in a suit, but still, the zombie spores, they are just devastating. If they get infected, they get a minus 18 debuff to all stats, I believe. It's like their doom. 
anyway, I wanted to search for some things that I didn't inspect yet in order to get a couple more data banks, even if it's just one. There is something right there, another data bank, and whoop, I didn't even click the story trait yet. That's because I want to dedicate some episodes to it. I've discovered an experiment designed to analyze the evolutionary dynamics of critter mutation. So that's going to be quite interesting actually to explore. But yeah, there are quite a few data banks that I can snatch from here and we might actually just make it through the petroleum engine research, which would be preferable. There's a carbon dioxide guys here that is dormant. Looks like we need a couple more skills. Lyra, could we put you into super duper hard digging? Not really. Ah, I see. The plant actually died because of the temperature. So this only counts as a mess hole, uh, probably. Yeah, and not as a great hole. And that is exactly the thing that we're missing right now. Okay, in terms of seeds, we need to get something that goes to high temperatures. Right now it's uh, 35 degrees in here. We have some murph leaf seeds that go up to 50 degrees and then the joya seeds even to 100 degrees. And since we have one of those, I'm also just gonna plant that and that is gonna help us out enough in order to also get super duper hard digging which is then gonna allow us to analyze uh, whatever the heck i wanted to analyze here wonderful in the meantime ari is analyzing the volcano for another five data banks and then we are gonna do the same thing on the third planetoid let's now get back to the first one see what kind of progress we're making and what we still need looks like we're gonna need to fill this up another three times there was already one wizard going for it but i'm just gonna plant the second one and we'll have this filled up in no time in the meantime we should be able to do the other two types of researches now i'm probably gonna go through the research in a manner such as this i might upgrade the material study process a little bit but i'm now just gonna go ahead and research stuff in the background there's not much to go it's just a very big end game researchers and they sometimes do take a while well this one is a bad example but there is one like for 250 data banks and 370 material study terminal points so we might want to go with a more efficient system or just leave this running in the background and just making sure we always have something researched i also want to make sure we grab some of this natural gas that we accumulated here with the oil well well, that I disabled for the time being because we well we do have a little bit of it and I think I want to move everything all the way down to the bottom so this pump here that I had upstairs is gonna go here then I wanted a hydro sensor as well as some cabling here all of this can then actually also yeah just go as for the pump here I simply want to pump the natural gas upstairs a little bit so it will go all the way up and just be introduced into the system let's say over here this is gonna help us in times of need when this natural gas guys here is dormant because oh actually it's not gonna work yeah i want this to not have priority that means i'm gonna run this pipe through here yeah and we cut this and this is gonna result in this bridge not having priority so as long as we still have natural gas from this guys here this is gonna have priority and then if we don't have it we're gonna be utilizing this looks like we can wrap it up this cycle here and Ari is also on it we just gotta make sure to pick up the data banks maybe do this immediately I want them to be shipped back and then close this same thing right here i kind of want to enclose this eventually and just snag out the data banks Ooh, 12 that's actually very good looks like we're overheating here a little bit so i set up a bottle end here in order to grab water it's okay it's essentially my fault for expelling the gases out of the base but i just feel like it looks much cleaner now that the gases are very thin now wait a second where the heck are my data banks they are sitting what here of course that's another one that i researched more data banks here yeah sweep that up okay it looks like we are actually lacking the power here yeah, of course that makes sense i just made the natural gas generators so we might want to finish building the gas pump so we can send over more materials right now lira is still analyzing the volcano let me check the cooling loop in the main base yeah i want to check this out how hot is it 21 degrees okay that's actually a little bit lower than i anticipated considering we are running it just on water and i'm cooling down the refinery the glass forge and everything but i'm still assuming whenever we use the glass forge we are gonna put it under some heavy load here yeah looks like the steam turbine is just fine maybe we could make it dependent on the temperature inside the room and maybe we could also add a little bit more water it's just 30 kilograms at the moment 
Alrighty, we're done with the research. I'm just checking the next research and we progress from there. What did we get? The mission control station, which provides guidance data to rocket pilots within range to improve rocket speed. Requires a clear line of sight to space in order to function. Let's maybe already set this up. Just check it out how it works. For now, maybe I'm just gonna set it up here so we can easily hook it up. And then next, of course, let's get that small petroleum engine in the joint. Yeah, we wanna build that. Hmm, let's go for cobalt. Now, before I set up any other modules, I wanna know just how far I can stack this rocket and... Ooh, Okay, this is actually not too shabby. We might even be able to go with a spacefare module in this case. What else do we need? We probably need some oxidizer tank. Right now, we just have access to the small one. So let's get that in as well. Then I might want a battery for everything to function. Let's get a battery module. I definitely want a couple of solar panels. I'm not sure how many. Now, this is going to be an exploration rocket slash data bank mining slash what else? Maybe some artifact collection. So just to be on the safe side let's get one artifact transport module in the joint as well at some point we also need a nose cone so we can already get that in and then we still have three slots this is actually good i might be able to get in a little bit more power so we have that extra power there are already the modules we can fill this up with oxalite or fertilizer let's see how much fertilizer do we have we have only five tons and of course oxalite we should have probably nothing Oh, looks like we have two tons already. Now, this is good news. On the second planetoid, we should have even more stored up in here. Yeah, another four tons. Let me maybe change that rocket name to Explorer. Yeah, Explorer. Next up, we grab the petroleum. Now, it would probably be good to have some insulated pipes here and maybe even ceramic pipes when we get beneath the rocket itself. And just go ahead, fill this up. Inside the spacefare module, let's uh, probably deconstruct this. But in the beginning, I would like to still use the oxygen diffuser since we have enough algae. So that is something I would like to get in here. But you can already see we have uh, way more space in this spacefare module. If we want, we could even go ahead and set up a bedroom. We need to make sure it is actually four high. And right here, I would like to use some carpeted tiles. So just have this set up here. And then we probably have the space for a toilet or something here. Let me see. Where do I want the oxygen diffuser? Maybe on the top there. Some gold metal tiles to round this off. And we might even be able to save a little bit on space here. 16 tiles. How large does a bedroom have to be? Minimum size 24 tiles. Okay, that is a little bit of an issue. All right, that will probably leave the space for a painting of some sorts and I can have my incoming cables on the top. Right here, we're gonna set this up on some airflow tiles together with a storage right there. Uh, granite. Then, of course, we need the wall toilet that goes right there. And then we could probably save a little bit on space by using a hand sanitizer. Then inside the toilet, we probably most likely have the space not for a botanical analyzer, but a orbital data collection lab. We're gonna build that right there. And then that might actually count as a latrine or washroom with a minimum size of 12. Yeah, this is actually perfect. Set up a door right there. Now let's see, I need to limit the space here. Not sure how I'm doing this yet. 24 tasks, that would be good. And then how large is this room? This could be the mess hall or the great hall even. So maybe I'm just gonna have a mess table here together with a refrigerator. I can get a power outlet fitting maybe in right there. And then we just use some conductive wire probably. Yeah, that would be better. I'm even gonna make it out of gold, hook up all of these machines. Now, what else do we need a telescope that could be an issue could i have my telescope right here is this a legitimate strategy this would be kind of a wasted space unless this actually counts as a great hall afterwards because what else do we need we need a bedroom we need a toilet good morale you know we need some oxygen we need a way to collect the data banks and a way to explore space so i think this is a decent start however i might want to get into the paintings a little bit just get these researched so we can actually set something up however we still don't have a dupe that actually takes care of that now all i'm missing i think is a bunch of ladders to get up there and mm, maybe up there 
Either way, in this oxidizer tank, I'm gonna set up some oxalite, and in order to gain more oxalite, maybe it's time to activate the oxalite refinery. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we have maximum gas pressure right here. Yeah, it's over 1,900 grams. That means even if we produce some oxalite here, it shouldn't off gas. At least as long as the dupes don't come, once they come, it might actually off gas because, yeah, of course, it can still off gas with the carbon dioxide. So never mind, what we should do is set up a bottle emptier and maybe first fill this with a layer of water until we have the molecular forge ready. But in the meantime, we need to hook this up to an oxygen pipe. And I think I'm just gonna borrow it from here right now. That seems the easiest. It's already hooked up to power and everything else that we need is a bunch of refined gold. It is already going for it. Of course, occasionally it will stop, but I just want to produce this in the background. And there we go. Ah, looks like we got the carbon dioxide here. No, natural gas. Ugh, you little booger, you. I'm taking apart the solid charcoal behind it and that is gonna remove the natural gas. I think that actually worked and now we have water everywhere and the oxalite is not emitting anymore. Now I gotta be a little bit careful. If people actually bring something here, this would be bad because then we have the bleach stone emitting and we already have chlorine in here. I wanna make sure I first get the oxygen in here and afterwards the chlorine. Uh, uh, Meep is actually taking the errand. Holy cow. He just cannot stop. Let's maybe disable the building. Research completed. Ah, very nice. Okay, so we already got the small picture. Do I want to hang this up? Probably, most likely. Blank canvas here. Let's go with gold and we could hang this anywhere. Yeah, let's maybe do it just above the bed. Inside the storage bin, we store some algae. Ooh, looks like these guys are not doing well. How is the radiation? Whew, it's not really great. We might want to protect this somewhat. I mean, down below here, it's probably going to be fine, but I don't know. No, wait, if I make this room smaller, then it's not going to count as a... Ah, you know what? I'm going to make the ultimate design later. Right now, I want to recon space. I want to know where we are located in relation to most of the important stuff. Alright guys, a few cycles have passed, I've built everything, I've been thinking about the design a little bit, this is not the design I want to go for, but I figured out a few interesting things, namely the first thing I want to do is not go for a private bedroom, but rather luxury barracks. This has way less conditions in order to make the room, especially the room size, and this also allows me to make a great hall, and the best thing is you can build the water cooler mid-air by, well, having two tiles below it, but then remove the tiles again and it will still count towards making this a great haul which is absolutely amazing so right now please don't replicate this design it's gonna do the trick because all we need is a telescope and a orbital data collection lab and then enough morale points for me to actually make the trip something else i didn't show is the pipe that goes in right here this is gonna be for the water in order to serve the wall toilet now let's have a look outside i'm building the last of the remaining pipes here one of the pipes Pipes is gonna be feeding the petroleum and the other one is gonna be feeding the water from our main line. There's another research completed, very nice. I'm just going through all the research that has something to do with applied science and I'm even gonna do the ones that have some data analysis even if we can't do it yet but I'm just gonna go through the rest of the research now and we're not gonna stop until it's done. Oh, there is the liquids incoming. Very good. Also, the oxalite has already been delivered. And I think as the last two modules, I'm going to go with another artifact and another solar panel. So just making sure. Yeah, we have enough of that stuff. And then another... Uh, wait, I want another artifact transport module yes and then we have a complete exploration rocket i wonder just how far i can get with that actually range remaining 10 tiles this is actually not too bad if we check out the star map we can make it five tiles over and then five tiles back and of course that will allow us to research a large portion here of space now, of course, we're going to go with May as our pilot for the main reason, because, well, I recruited her for that, but also she's got that really cool bio. Let me see. It's Radiation Eater. I mean eats radiation for breakfast and dinner it's just amazing but still before we launch this baby let's go ahead and fill this up with a little bit of pickled meal i know it's not the best food but it's good enough for me especially with that awesome trait 
Oh, I actually might want to limit this. Let's say 20 kilograms or so should be enough. Yeah, there we go. Now we have 30,000 kilocalories in the refrigerator. Let's put this to the test. We're going to open this up. Well, are there any meteor showers? Not inbound. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. And oh my gosh, you guys, you have to complete the freaking rocket. Jeez. I'm already going to change the crew to be May. Where are you? Right there. I'm also going to change the destination. Let's move one, two, three, four, five. So let's just move into this direction and see what we get. And uh, there is my last solar panel. Wonderful. I think we're ready. Definitely ready now that I made the safe game. Okay, then launch checklist. Everything fine, except the crew not on board. We can move 10 tiles. We have two artifact modules. Uh, let's pick it up. Begin launch sequence. Yes, may go in there. <laughs> and of course, before I forget, uh, you can get rid of your suit right there. Okay, you're gonna spend at least the next 10 cycles in here. Probably, maybe even more. No, actually not. We are limited by fuel, but there we go. Also, let's check out the heat. Petroleum, yeah, of course. That is something we need to take advantage of, especially if we have an extended rocket program going on. I mean, look at this. Oh, this is so juicy. Two and a half thousand degrees. <gasps> I love it. Okay, I gotta say, not too bad. And it leaves behind some carbon dioxide heating everything up. This should be okay. These tiles here, these three are gonna heat up. Okay, so we will have to take care of those. However, right below here, we should have enough space in order to trap the entirety of the heat. Nice. Maybe check out the skills before I forget. We need astronomy. So she has the astronomy skill and only requires 15 morale points, which should be possible with the current configuration. Let's close the bunker doors again. Hold the phone. Where did my food go? Did I? I mean, I did not put everything in the rockets. Did I? I might just have gotten rid of all my food. What about my fish now? Yeah, this is not good. I should be getting some food. Let me see. We have how many eggs? We have 13 eggs. I'm just gonna cook up three of them. How can we be in trouble again? I, I thought I took care of the food issue, but it might be that I just put too much food into the explorer. 30,000 kilocalories. Still. We can see May is now doing her job and revealing more of the tiles. I'm really happy. Now, of course, there's a lot ahead of us in terms of exploration. I'm definitely not going to do everything in today's episode, but, you know, May is now just going to be doing one job until everything is revealed in a couple of episodes. And of course, in the meantime, we do some other stuff. But look at that. She's really enjoying life right now. And then checking out the radiation, it's really not that bad. And then once everything has been explored and we are flying back, she's going to be using the Orbital Data Collection Lab. And of course, I totally forgot that I probably need plastic for this. Holy cow, I should have taken some plastic with me. <laughs> oh well, with the next flight. I mean, the data banks are really not a problem. They get created like crazy. Okay, there's another asteroid field. Not very interesting, but each of these fields has an artifact like every 50 cycles or so. You can just collect one. So I think what we're gonna do we're just gonna keep going straight through here and of course may is alternating between the rocket control station and the telescope like she's supposed to i'm just gonna be doing some exploration look at this so nice seems to be a very nasty part of space though but yeah i'm gonna be reporting back once i've revealed a couple of the space tiles Okay, I made my way back with the rocket for the first time and this is the amount of tiles we can reveal. So the next time I'm gonna poke into this direction and then maybe into this and afterwards, latest then, we need to build a better engine to make it even further. This time around, I did not forget about the plastic. We now have about six tons of plastic in here. That should be enough to actually make a whole bunch of data banks. Also, I've collected one artifact from this asteroid field, which would take 75 cycles to recharge in total. So maybe let's remove that artifact so it drops down. And as you can see, I'm also starting to build a heatsink here. If I'm not mistaken, the heatsink needs to be nine tiles as of the engine. So the tile right here, the insulated tile, shouldn't heat up anymore. And we can trap most of the heat in here in order to use it for something else. So to make sure that is correct, let's get this rocket started again. I'm going to change the direction this time. Yeah, I'm probably going to fly over here. At the very least, I want to know what this question mark is about. And we can collect the artifact right there. Wonderful. Opening up our bunker doors and we should be ready. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the phone. Begin launch sequence. May, good luck. Okay, quickly checking here. 
yeah, look at that. This is not heating up, at least not from the rocket. Ah, man, this is amazing. That was just one rocket. Well, I need to be careful not to actually melt the steel, though it would be fun to melt it. Not sure if the rocket is even capable of doing it, but probably yes, because melting point is 2400. Maybe we should have used wolframite, so this doesn't happen. Revealing the terrain is always going to have priority, but to wrap things up, I want to show you the orbital data collection lab in action as well. Now, it looks like May is a little bit hurt. I wonder what I did to her. I mean, the only thing that really makes sense for her to get hurt at is this contraption here. Hmm. Yeah, maybe there was a coincidence where she got through the tube here as she got shot at the same time. I probably should switch the research. Yeah, look at that. We're done with applied science. I need to make sure to always check a little bit here in order to only do the applied science and then come back. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my rat bolts there. I missed again how May pooped. I just love them using the wall toilet. It's amusing. By the way, look at this. Mission control speed boost is 20%, even though we don't really have the mission control active at the moment, right? Yeah, it's outside of the laboratory. What again was required from a laboratory? A light source and two science buildings. So maybe what we could set up is an artifacts analysis station that might actually be useful in order to analyze the artifacts that we're bringing back home. Though we need to enclose this inside of a room. Yeah, maybe I'm just gonna move it over slightly. Let me do that. Move it over by one block and then we're gonna just make this a room. And on top of the mission control station, we probably just need some glass blocks, right? Plastic, no, window tile made out of glass right there. And then if possible, we might even want to protect that from meteor showers. Hmm, we cannot quite cover everything. Well, I guess we only really need to protect the glass layer. And then what we could do is use bunker tiles for the rest. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna remain here. I just wanna make sure we get to test this out. Oh, check this out. We can even inspect it. I've salvaged everything I can from this vehicle. We got an artifact recharging in 84 cycles, so it varies from object to object. Okay, I was kind of hoping the mission control station itself also counts as a science building, but it looks like I need more. So what if we also got a botanical analyzer? Oh, holy cow, this is longer than I thought. Ooh, but it's totally fine. Let's just go ahead and case this and get another door in there. And there we go. Okay, now it is actually inside the laboratory. Inside the artifact analysis station, I think this is going to come automatic. Oh, aesthetic design. That's interesting. So now we really need a creative dupe. Okay, I think the next time I might take care of my food issues so we can go ahead and invite more duplicants. Anyway, let's get back to the star map. I've revealed another helium cloud, okay, with hydrogen and water. Nothing too interesting. And it looks like we already are out of moves. Yeah. I actually have to make my way back now. We could potentially do one, two, three, four, five, right? That should be possible. And therefore I can reveal two more tiles. I should be doing that. By the way, now that that has happened, we started to collect the data banks. Let's just see this happen. May, yeah, bringing some plastic and there we go. She's just basically trying to hold the machine together. It's just absolutely amazing. And yeah, this way we're gonna get way more than enough data banks. The data banks really aren't a problem. In today's episode, I would like to ensure the survival of my colony by actually making a lot more food and therefore giving me the ability to invite a couple more duplicants. We still only have 11 duplicants on this planetoid, including the four dreamers. And the main reason for that is because I wanted to preserve my oxygen resources as well as I wasn't producing the proper amount of food. My fish farm is currently at its full potential, I believe so. At least we get all the fish in here. Oh, looks like I had a little bit of a hiccup. Yeah, I had to make sure that the fish actually all have a different age inside of the pool. Otherwise, it would happen that two fish died at the exact same time and then multiple eggs were capable of actually making it over here and I would have an overcrowded room and therefore their reproduction rate went down dramatically. Something else I did in between the episodes is I wanted to attempt a little something else instead Instead of actually pumping in the hydrogen, what I did is set up a layer of polluted, no, petroleum, and then we have some brine, then we have some polluted water, and finally a layer of water. 
Now, all of these layers have 100 kilograms or less in each of the tiles, and therefore the Cobalt Volcano should still be able to release its contents. I figured this way I have a much better possibility to cool this down, keep it cool, and also I want to address something else about these volcanoes. I wanted to try something else for the volcanoes instead of just coming up with the same exact design, and sometimes I listen to you in the comments section, and this was actually one of the suggestions to cool down the room itself. And I have to say I have split feelings about it for one the problem is that we actually waste a little bit of power not too much because we do still get the heat and the steam production right here with my steam turbines but yeah it might be easier to just do it the same way we did the gold volcanoes by plopping a steam turbine on top of it but honestly right here for the purpose of this planetoid i don't think eventually we're gonna be lacking the power power is not an issue of the future it became an issue because i got rid of the plug slugs and a couple of other methods but right now you know we're doing well and sometimes the petroleum generators are turning on and yeah sometimes i figured having a modular system let's say with all the cooling happening right here and then just a route going through is also appealing to me i mean i might change it once we got the super coolant i might just go ahead and redo the gold volcano so i can get rid of the steam turbine here as well and it's just gonna be that single room every time but yeah for that we need some super coolant so i got my explorer rocket in order to to research all of that stuff um let me see yeah we should be able whoa 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 what's going on there's another ice asteroid field unfortunately nothing we are really interested in so I guess the next flight we're gonna start over here try to discover a couple of things here and then if I'm not mistaken we should be able to do more research and eventually get the larger petroleum engine so we can fly further or even the Ratbolt engine will probably also get us further if I'm not mistaken. Anyway in order to take care of our food problem which right now we are using up everything I don't get too many starving duplicates but I get the message of unreachable food until the food actually is reachable so i figured right now i want to get started with another farm that i'm gonna put here and i already know one of the farms that we're gonna have is a bristleberry farm now let's see we would probably want to do this with a hydroponic farm and we need three spaces on top of it like that now i want to set up a floor lamp for this one if i put the floor lamp here right on the ground then i should be capable of giving light to four adjacent farm tiles on each side and then we would just be closing that off obviously we need to ensure that we have the correct temperature in this room so that means i can have one two three four then the floor lamp another one two three four and hmm, that might be the end if i want a greenhouse in here it's got to be 96 tiles maximum one two three four uh, no we cannot really fit everything in here but we could maybe just do that and then we have what 20 farm tiles in this and that would actually give us the space for a farm station so we can have that right here and this would be the end of the room right dude i have to check maybe the bristle berries aren't quite as high as i anticipated let me uproot this guy and then blossom seeds yeah look at that i can actually plant it here interesting that means we can push everything one block up and that is yeah that is actually possible let's do it and i think the way i'm going to do this in the future is having multiple farms here accessible by this transit tube access point okay i thought about this and realized of course i also need some automation so i lowered the room once again and i'm kind of trying to enclose this together with the farms that we're gonna stack on top of here now this might not be the ideal design just yet and if we want it we could put it towards the right side so we can take full advantage of the farm sure why not and we also might be able to stack two farms on top of each other so let's say we have two bristle blossom farms in order to produce a lot of berry sludge we could quite easily stack them this would allow me to get 25 tiles in the joint we need the lamps right there and we would also need a bunch of auto sweepers like so now the question is do we need this layer right here i need to put the lamps one down otherwise they will not be able to reach all of the farm tiles but if i do this and set up another farm here at the bottom then obviously i would have to put the auto sweeper down a little bit which then would prevent me from building all the tiles in this case i think what i'm gonna do is make the farms a little fancier by starting with a gold tile on the top and this would then make the floor even with the transit tube 
Yeah, you know what? I think I like that much better. And that also means the duplicates working in here are going to be quite happy when it comes to decoration. Gonna have my auto sweepers right there. And this would allow me to get some power in the joint this way. Get that heavy conductive wire and then just, yeah, hook it up. Now let's see if we got some new blueprints. I would like to see new tiles. That would be amazing. A juicy watermelon fruit wall. Holy cow. Okay, I did not expect that. Basic pants right there. And uh, some more pants. Okay. Now the juicy watermelon thing actually looks interesting. And it might be fitting for our farms. So we're just going to go ahead and install that. I think eventually I want the power to go through the center of this room. So that's what I'm uh, going to set up right here. In the meantime, we make our way back here with the Explorer ship. We should have a whole bunch of plastic, no, data banks in the joint. Yeah, 40 data banks. That's going to be enough for another research. Speaking of research, I should probably check where we're at. Yeah, right now I'm doing environmental appreciation. There's still a little bit of applied science to go, but we're going to be spending those data banks on this research. So in the future, I already have access to monuments and can just finish all the applied science. That is my goal in the future. Just have the applied science out of the way. And so eventually we can get rid of that type of research station. Now, while this volcano is dormant, I think I want to make my way in here. Let's maybe mop everything up and then also already set up a bottle emptier. And I want to do the exact same thing I did with the other one. This design here is actually going to allow me to always be able to enter the volcano. Well, unless something goes horribly wrong. Okay, May is going to return in about a minute. We're building the project and I think I want to continue with rerouting my cables. So all of this here can now actually go. I want to route it this way and everything right here has more or less been prepared so technically we can get rid of this shebang and this as well in the future we're gonna have multiple farms stacked on top of each other and we're gonna connect it together for now all i want to see is a transit tube crossing so i can close off the room myself it looks like the fish can be killed at age 22 when they have laid one additional egg. So I just targeted a bunch of these bastards because we also need to send over a little bit of food to the second planetoid. And I think what I'm going to do now, I might just want to go ahead and send over some blossom seeds as well. Let's see somebody do that. Nisbet is taking the job. I just want to send them over as quickly as possible together with food for at least six cycles. No pending deliveries. Oh no, are you serious? We only have three blossom seeds that this oh gosh let me see blossom seed yes zero un available two and a half thousand wait a second ah yeah check this out it's on the third planetoid we have the blossom seed so we could send them over to the second planetoid which makes this much easier seed uh, blossom seeds yeah we're gonna send this over wonderful there are my pack of bullets oh yeah my duplicates are gonna be extremely thankful hang on i have a rocket in orbit but i'm not allowing it to actually land I will probably have to automate this, at least for the automatic rockets, of course. But there it is, our petroleum rocket. And we are heating up the tiles here even more, which is amazing. Let's remove the artifact right here. And we should be able to... Wait, can we analyze it? I know, of course, that was the masterwork stoop. In this case, I'm just going to allow May to actually recover a little bit. And let me see, maybe we want to empty the food out of here so we can save our duplicates. Wait a second, I think I just sent it over. Yeah, now we have 20,000 kilocalories over here. That's going to be enough in order to establish that blossom seed farm. So all I'm going to need is a ceiling light right there. Maybe a little bit of power. Maybe if we're lucky, we can just keep this above of the five degrees that are required to keep this farm alive especially if i kind of enclose it okay here we go blossom seeds ah, i don't even have one we might be able to copy this over from the second planetoid copy settings so i can already at least get them in there now of course these are gonna require a little bit of water which i'm gonna be providing from here i don't think i'm gonna be making it dependent on this line so we're just gonna insulate these and the temperature of the water is not gonna contribute to too much of course it's still gonna contribute but we might be able to take care of the cooling here using the cooling loop we already established or maybe an additional one maybe the melon pattern is a little bit too much i don't know it's just nice to have i guess Ooh, next activity in 5.7 cycles we actually don't have the time to not do anything about that bottle emptier we're first gonna run a little bit of petroleum at a high priority the hydrogen can escape it is fine it was too fiddly anyways 
Okay, there's my first bottle of petroleum. Unfortunately, yeah, it's not distributing very well, but we can fix this by placing blocks and also loading the game sometimes. So I got eight tiles and I got 300 and no, 400 kilograms in here. That would now make 50 kilograms per tile. So I think I want to go with another two bottles or so in order to fix that. And then maybe because we don't really have the time and we want to fix stuff, I'm going to open up this part here and allow some of the water to dribble out okay i think that was the last petroleum bottle uh, yeah we're already stacking it up that's not good however the next liquid i want to add is a little bit of brine and then hmm we probably should do it in the correct order. I don't care. It's going to work in the end. Open this up and that as well. Wonderful. Now this can already escape. And I don't think we have to wait for too long to... Mm, actually, it doesn't really do anything. Okay, let's just get rid of the water for now and allow the other two liquids to distribute. If we're lucky, we should get a water lock in here and then the petroleum is going to move over. But yeah, I don't want to waste too much more of your time on the volcanoes. We've been dealing with that. Just know I'm going to go for petroleum, brine, polluted water and water. Nice, got my third liquid in there. It's not quite as much as I want, but we can fill it up later even more. And now the only thing we have to do is open up this tile. Whoa, come on in order to get rid of the oxygen or whatever we have left in there. And you know what? For future reference, I might just put the bottle emptier inside of here. I think that might be possible. Yeah, let's make it out of obsidian though. In the meantime, I would say we're ready with the explorer ship again. We're gonna send this out into this direction as mentioned. Maybe we're just gonna take a straight line over here. So we should be able to make five tiles over here and then five tiles back begin that launch sequence i don't think i have to check on anything else may should just come over and launch the rocket for me wonderful ah beautiful oh i need to be careful now slowly but surely we are accumulating heat here that i should be using at some point oh no there was something i needed to check and that is food how much kilocalories does she have a thousand nine hundred okay that was kind of a failure it is no problem though we can just simply land back and then collect a little bit of food yeah just go back wait are you oh okay <laughs> i'm actually glad that worked so now the only real big problem is uh, the heat accumulation in these metal tiles. And now May is being stupid, not equipping the Atmo suit anymore. So what I'm going to do is sweep it up at high priority. And then we just need to input it back into the system. Let's say, for instance, right here. Oh, looks like I'm snatching too much oxygen with my oxalite. Yeah, I think I might want to shut this down briefly because we already accumulated over five tons of oxalite. Okay, geez, I've been struggling a little bit more to get this farm going because I cannot really dictate which materials get shipped over the first unless I dedicate an interplanetary launcher to them. My blossom seeds have not yet made their way over. What I did now is basically kill off all the fish in order to gain a little bit more time and I also decided to probably sacrifice another dreamer. Yeah, like dreamer 4 right here is probably the next one to go unless there's going to be a miracle. I was just a little bit too late actually I had to save a bunch more important duplicates than my dreamers. The dreamers are totally replaceable but yeah it's been my bad to not take care of the food issues when I got rid of my mushroom farm and I totally deserve this setback. Wonderful there we go one less mouth to feed. I'm happy these guys actually did not notice it happened during their sleepy time and now Joshua can just go ahead and cook all of this food. Yeah this is gonna get us out of the pickle and then we can take the time to make this farm work and supply us with more food. Good that's so good back to 20,000 kilocalories a lot of cooked seafood. No look at this oh my gosh are you freaking kidding me. Haku fillets oh I didn't even check the duplicates this time but I want to absolutely kill these guys. All right, the moment is upon us. I believe I'm getting my seeds right here. Beautiful blossom seeds that we can plant now and hopefully make this food issue an issue of the past. And I think we just completed another research. What was it? No idea, but we did unlock some of the more advanced researchers taking what? 370 applied science points. Absolutely crazy. Now, before we can run this farm properly, of course, we also have to take care of the temperatures. It should be below the 30 degrees mark. If I check out my cooling loop, the only thing taxing at the moment would be the glass forge. And this one, we don't really run all the time. The steam turbine here can still keep up with the heat removal demand. And now, holy cow, I just realized I built into my heat sinks. Oh my 
gosh, this is insane. I, I knew there was a reason I wanted to place it on this side. Right here, we also don't really have the space. And at the bottom, I don't really want to have it anywhere here. But I might just have to do it. And then we could come up with a way to take care of all the heat sinks, including cooling down the ranches and the farms. The problem is just we have the supply teleporter here as well. That really doesn't make me happy right now. Right, we need about 29 tiles to make our farm work. If I put it here, we already established that's not enough. However, we could start beneath the natural gas geyser, make this our first farm, and then we have plenty of space. So yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna build the exact same farm, but I'm gonna do it right here at this point, and I'm gonna be right back once that's done. Alrighty, I gotta bring this under wraps. Uh, it is now evening, some family stuff came up what is even happening yeah i left off with rebuilding the farm as you can see i also pumped out everything just released the gases here and they are now expelled into space and we have a vacuum inside the farm i also prepared the thermo aqua tuner and we already have a water source or no i'm pumping ah uh, no <laughs> I'm pumping up petroleum. What the heck am I even doing? Yeah, looks like that was actually the rest of it. So for some reason, I had some petroleum laying around here and I'm gonna have to bite the bullet a little bit. But yeah, my point is we can hook up this pipe and we can also introduce a little bit of oxygen. So I'm gonna do the oxygen part first. I wanna see this actually fill up here. Uh, hold the phone. What's happening? Ah, I'm tracking liquid. Oh no, now I missed it. The spreading of the beautiful oxygen. There we go. Okay, and then another thing we need is the lamps. I disconnected them so they actually don't overheat. But here we go. Now we are probably still struggling with the body temperature or the pressure. And of course the oxygen is coming in at, well, 50 degrees. So it's definitely too hot and we need to introduce a little bit of water. Maybe if I'm quick enough we manage to extract the petroleum here. I just need me to do it. Yes, there we go. That's one pipe down and another one. Beautiful. Okay, there's one more packet on its way. And now the first thing I'm going to do is just input that into the steam room here so we can get that started. Gosh, are you serious? A piece of petroleum made it inside. I just hate it. But oh well, it's not too tragic yet. We can just make it in and then rebuild it. It is tragic because I already filled up the room with oxygen. In this case, we have to be a little bit sneakier and just do this layer this way we can have it act as a liquid lock and then if i'm lucky the petroleum gets pushed out yes thank you at least something works please somebody build this tile thank you knees bed you know what this isn't even too tragic because my intention in the future is to make this room larger like with more steam turbines and then more thermal aqua tuners probably so i'm gonna make my way eventually inside this room again and i'm not gonna worry about this igneous rock I'm gonna bring this to about 100 kilograms per tile here or 25 kilograms in steam. And now that that is done, I'm gonna connect it to the liquid reservoir to fill up the cooling loop. And the thermo sensor needs to be set to, let's say, 25 degrees. Sounds reasonable. And now we're going through the metal task here, giving the room a chilled down temperature. And of course, at some point, we might want to fix this with aluminium pipes. I think I'm already going to do it for the spots right here beneath the farm tiles where I can actually reach them. And oh my gosh, I did not even hook up the... Uh, what's happening with me? It's like I'm all noob again. Well, in this case, I need to make my way down here to the cable. This is where I originally wanted my cables to go. And I guess we could attempt to make our way in here with a little liquid lock. I mean, it's my own fault for having to do this. Uh, of course, of course, I did not manage to do it. So I guess we're going to be pumping out some stuff now again. At least we already have our liquid lock going on here. I'm just going to disable this now and then remove these two tiles. In the meantime, I guess we can fill up our cooling loop a little bit. Maybe we're just going to disable the output so we can collect a little bit of that water. Now, I find it a little bit strange that... Ooh, okay, I see the problem. Ah, this is something I never realized. Whenever I get water damage here, this is a huge problem and I'm not producing the oxygen anymore. You know, one way I could prevent this from happening is by replacing these with mesh tiles. And I think I'm gonna do just that. 
and now it's just landing on the bottom floor which still isn't perfect but at least it's a little bit better either way we got our vacuum back so i can get rid of this abomination again my water reservoir i think is full enough for the time being so i'm gonna cut off the source there and we're gonna make it run through this should have a much greater effect now on the metal tiles and of course they're gonna relay it to the hydroponic tiles and we can already see this guy is going rapidly down now already below 34 degrees and there is my aqua tuner also going for it and it should be dropping that temperature right down to 25 degrees very nice now it's just a question of time until this gets going hopefully rather sooner than later but it looks like it might be working out just fine look at the nice yellow color yeah as a matter of fact some of these should start growing very soon maybe we need to run it through the upper tiles as well i figured it should be enough with the lower tiles once we got everything going ah look at that actually the first ones are starting to grow ah this is amazing Okay, definitely taking that, getting the first more serious farms going. We still need a conveyor loader and a rail in order to get things out of there, but I think that's gonna be quite an easy task. This new conveyor loader here, by the way, is for the second planetoid. This also leads to the second planetoid, as you can see. So let's maybe get rid of this original conveyor loader. And so the very last thing we need now are conveyor loaders for each of these auto sweepers, some conveyor rail, and that's probably best going out here. Yeah, and we can just connect it up to here. It will go into our main storage. However, there are going to be some building issues unless I might be able to reach everything this way. But you get the basic gist, now we got our bristle blossom seeds going. I don't have access to sleet wheat just yet, but you know, gristle berries instead of the meal ice are a good alternative. I've also been heavily researching the petroleum engine here, the bigger one, and we got 250 points deep into the applied science. In today's episode, I honestly would like to clean up a few things, maybe explore more of space. I already got started by modifying this area right here. What I would like to be able to achieve is actually get into this aqua tuner room in order to do maintenance whenever I need to. And I also would like to include this liquid reservoir inside of this room. So we're kind of going to make an overlap section here with a bunch of uh, probably transformers or other minor details we need such as the liquid reservoir. So I had to move everything over a little bit which was slightly annoying but now I got it and we got the power cable here as well which I'm gonna be able to remove once this connection here is established. So I'm gonna cave in a little bit with all the people complaining about the heavy watt wire. I really don't think it's that dramatic. But you know, for certain areas such as the new farm, we know we are gonna have this for a very long time. So it might be worth setting up the transformers here on the left side. The only issue right now, it is quite hot in here and we will also have to actively cool them down. The reason I didn't do this previously, I wanted to have my power spine down the left or right side and both have hot pockets of a thousand degrees that we just cannot deal with. So how exactly are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we have to remove the hot material. Let's get rid of that. I kind of want to allow the heat to distribute a little bit better. Oh no, overheated conveyor loader. What? What? Ah, I see, of course, we are getting about 80 degrees or so. Yeah, I did not think of that. So let's switch that to a different material. We can go with either iron or gold and that should be enough. Or we just go with steel because we have enough of it. By the way, now that we have a little bit more space in here, I should be able to set up my plastic ladders, get up there. I just want to see this power cable finished to take care of the rest. Also, now that we kickstarted the industrial sauna, I'm not dependent on the cooling loop anymore. So I decided to only ship the items up and the cobalt volcano is going to be cooled normally. By the way, I'm not nearly done here with the cobalt volcanoes. As soon as I have super coolant, we're going to upgrade quite a few systems and I have really wonderful endgame ideas that are actually translating my vision for this space to have modules, centralized cooling systems. Right now, of course, we are wasting all the potential that we could get out of them just by placing a steam turbine on top of it, having this set up like the gold volcanoes. However, what I much rather like to see is some super coolant in here, just a little bit with the rest being a vacuum. But yeah, of course, I agree. Power-wise, it would be smarter to just have the steam turbine, but I just really find this the boring method. I've done this in every playthrough. I just want this planetoid in the end to be very nifty and organized, not with steam turbines all over the place. But yeah, maybe I'm gonna regret my decision. I just don't 
think we're gonna be lacking the power looking at all this magma we still have to go through anyway let's focus on what's important and that is building this cable as well as actually building the heat sinks for the additional rockets I would like to be able to transfer the heat right over here to the next module and then continue to the next and so on. Right now, I think we can take another rocket launch. Uh, we have no asteroids nearby. All I need to do, not forget about this, is fill up the fridge here. And we're going to put in anything edible we currently have at a high priority. So anything should be brought quite immediately. And with that out of the way, we open the doors and we set a new target. Let's see. We want to go into this direction probably or did i mean to go over here might be interesting to see what's there as well yeah you know what i'm gonna discover these two question marks i can go five tiles over here yeah, i think that's gonna be worth it i can even reveal three question marks and there it goes up for another launch good luck good luck Okay, now I probably want to make a little bit of space in order to set up the heatsink. There is a cable in the way as well. Yeah, I don't want that there. Oh, by the way, now that I got my first bristle berries, I should be cooking them up to gristle berries. Let's see if that is actually set. Yeah, gristle berry. We need to do that forever. And within consumables, let's make sure this is actually ticked off. Yeah, looks like I already did that previously. Very good. But yeah, now that we have that, we don't need to waste our dirt anymore. I'm definitely going to get rid of one row of these meal wood. Uh, maybe let's harvest them one more time. Ah, no, screw this. I don't want to wait. I'm just going to forget about it. We should now have more than enough food. Okay, I'm thinking we could use this thermal aqua tuner to take care of the farms of all the plants that are agreeable in 25 degrees or so. And then we could also start with a couple of transformers that are responsible to power up everything here with the rockets. I might also change that in the future but for now let's go ahead and set this up and we just need some conductive wire going straight up for now i'm gonna lead it through the flooring there and i guess i want to connect it this way now this probably needs to be made out of steel thinking about it not too sure yet i guess we'll see what types of rockets we have on top of this yeah wait as a matter of fact we should maybe make this future proof already so if i go straight up here with the last silo maybe yeah let's say we have three silos for sure then my cable should be going up in this direction so i'm just gonna bring this all the way up in order to connect it with this guy here and we'll also go down this way in order to power up the elements of the rocket is this even necessary yeah we also want to probably power up the gantries right yeah they do come with a power slot so it would be good to power them up and this way i only really have to make the two wires here out of steel so give me steel wires these guys here need to be exchanged yeah, I actually like that much better. The question is, are we going to have multiple transformers or just the one? Maybe we have a transformer for each silo, but this would be okay. We can expand it all the way to this point. This is kind of the edge here. So we could easily fit two more transformers in here and then maybe even some aqua tuners if needed. But I don't think it's needed. All we want to do is transfer the heat here from the steel tiles all the way over to the steam room. Yeah, you know what? I actually really like that approach. So I think I'm going to fill this out and connect it with the room so I can already make this a larger steam room. And all we really need to do for that is set up proper ladders and then already start to fill this out a little bit. I did not even notice, but the cable is already in place. So that is a straight line through and it can actually stop right here. So do I? Yeah, I still have my pump here. Well, I reinstalled it. So we can allow some of the gases to come in. So now it's time to separate all of these. I don't need that cable for now. And then I will be closing it off this way and open up the other side. Okay, now I've seen it fail for the first time. We actually had too much steam flashing. And I think uh, one problem here is that I actually don't have it closed. And of course, we are still leaking a little bit of heat. But, you know, this is something I don't seem to be able to get across. Consider everything on the outside not important. I don't care about the heat here. This is going to be a vacuum or very thin atmosphere. Everything that I'm leaking outside of here, I absolutely don't worry or don't care. Because eventually it's going to be so thin atmosphere that it simply doesn't matter. However, it matters that we are still getting some steam here and I don't like that. So we're now really dependent here on May to explore something nice. Hopefully the fullerene isn't going to be too far away, but we might have to introduce another rocket. Let me see how far we are with the research right there. 346 points. Not too bad to get the large petroleum engine. Finally, new planetoid discovered. Let's check it out. 
uh, what is it? Ooh, Inverato. Uh, geodes, we got Metal Poor, Peak Light Normal, Normal Radiation. It's got the Liquid Sulfur guys here and just a bunch of volcanoes otherwise uninteresting. We got some Wasteland and Tundra. So we will find the Sleet Wheat here. This is really good. Can I? Yeah, I can probably not yet oversee the planetoid. So maybe I should just go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I might be able to make it back this way. By the way, I'm now down to uh, 194 dream journals, which I think is the time to get new duplicates to replace dreamers four and five, and maybe even get a sixth dreamer. I believe now with the bristle berries, we should be able to get our colony through, and we're already prepared until we get the sleet wheat grains. So we will easily be able to switch to berry sludge and we don't even have to do anything about the kitchen. It's still just going to work. The only issue we could have is once we are actually working with the gas range because I'm not sure the auto sweeper is capable of reaching it. I also added a second incubator and now that I have enough critters this is actually a really bad thing because of course these guys now feel cramped. So yeah, unless I only want to keep six critters in here, which I might, because look at the plastic we already got. We got like 11.7 tons of plastic and that's just running in the background. And if I put this to six critters max, then it's not going to be cramped and we still get plenty of eggs to cook up. Mm, you know, I decided it's more important to get the question marks out of the way. We already know we want to land on this planetoid. The liquid sulfur guys here, as well as the sleet wheat. So there's no question, really. Whoa, wait, another planetoid discovered. Are you serious? Oh, this is amazing. The radiation planetoid. We got, what, some salt water guys here. That is good to know, another water source. And even a polluted water vent. Nice. What? Steam vent as well. And it's a frozen friend. Holy cow, this is actually amazing. This is gonna solve all of our water problems. Uranium meteor shower. Wow, okay. And it's got some nice biomes as well, including the radioactive one. So these two planetoids are like the most important ones to discover after the initial ones. Okay, I really like that. Now I'm curious, can I make a move here? How do I only have five tiles left? This, I just don't get it. One, two, three, four. Four. I'm here and now I can only go five tiles. I should be able to go six. This is so weird to me. I don't get it. But I think someone said you only really have to get into orbit to be able to land it even if you don't have one tile left. Good. Now I'm thinking we could push this down further and then for each level we can set up another power transformer. This would then allow me to for instance make this here independent of the big cables and I could even hook up all of the ranch stuff here. Or maybe considering the design we might want to make this room even larger and add the power transformer to the cobalt volcano room. Yeah sure one large power transformer let me briefly check something if I cut this cable here and maybe cut this cable there and uh, come on and there so it is independent how much do we have 2.7 kilowatts yeah the big problem really is the transit tube without that we could easily power up everything and it still means i need to get one large power cable in here yeah i don't like that but then setting up the power transformer here does that really make much more sense i mean technically it makes more sense we could even do something like that have three or so and then just expand this power room slightly we could even make it so that we include the carbon dioxide oxide vent and get rid of this steam turbine include all of the gold volcano as well and then that means we could ship the materials through the steam room in order to activate these steam turbines more frequently and then maybe make a much larger cooling area for all the metals this would mean we need to ship the metals through insulated tiles so they don't lose too much heat before actually getting to the room and we could probably do that yeah all of the metals would come down then continue right here combine with this guy and the only issue would be this cobalt volcano which probably first has to transport the metals down this way all we need to make sure is that the metal gets solidified so we can transport it yeah i have to think about that all right guys i've been working on this project now for quite a few cycles uh, so that i even missed some more catastrophic things that were happening but you know let's not worry about that too much i've been working on this project here in order to expand it my plan currently is that up here this is all gonna be a vacuumed out room right now we do have a vacuum and then at the bottom this is all gonna belong to the steam room so i'm gonna break through these walls and expand the steam room we didn't have these large power transformers that i can use 
use in order to ship up some power and for instance get rid of all the thick cabling here and then right here we're gonna have our main metal cooling system including the industrial sauna itself so the goal is gonna be to only solidify the materials inside these rooms i'm gonna make them considerably smaller and we're just gonna have a layer of super coolant at the bottom in order to solidify it then we're gonna bring the materials as hot as possible over and we need to cover them up so they actually don't lose the heat and then we're gonna be using this area here in order to cool it down at least to the 200 degrees and then of course it's gonna be going through this system here in order to bring it down to whatever we want right now i have an awful lot of carbon dioxide here and i figured we're gonna include the carbon dioxide vent because it emits at 500 degrees which is kind of insane but also useful because we can use the heat and now instead of actually using a gas pump in order to get rid of the carbon dioxide and the extra steam we're just gonna go ahead and crush it here at the bottom so eventually all of this is gonna be opened up and the steam turbine will be gone then all of the carbon dioxide we usually have in this room right here is gonna come down to this spot where we're just gonna crush it the way we're gonna do this is with mechanized airlocks let's go ahead and build some of these now let me see we probably just need one or yeah let's do it with three so we have one door here and two more doors there what we need to do is have all doors open so the carbon dioxide can enter then we're gonna close this door first and once that's done we can close these two guys as well and they're just gonna delete whatever gases we have here how can we do this of course we're gonna need an atmo sensor just to detect how much pressure we have in here and if it is above the 20 kilograms or so we're gonna try to crush it so say we reach the 20 kilograms then we want to send a red signal so this door is gonna close and then just a moment later Later, we want to close the other two doors now i wonder maybe we could use a cheap effect by just not powering the two doors right here and if we power the first door then this door is going to be closed much sooner and the other two doors are just gonna close with the slow animation i mean if that actually works this would make it much easier than with complicated automation I also moved my liquid reservoir over in the hopes I can actually fit another steam turbine, but I miscounted, so we'll eventually have to move it one more block over. Okay, as of this point, I think we can close it off and already breach through a couple of these, allow the carbon dioxide to settle down. Okay, this is closed off. I'm gonna breach through this layer here first. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and take it all apart. And then this layer can become mesh tiles. The steam turbine here, I'm gonna take out and then we can reroute all of the cabling. So it basically only goes through the right side and we can remove everything on the left side. And this will make this room so much cleaner. Now I gotta be a little bit careful with my cooling loop since it doesn't need to go through this part anymore. We can directly hop up here. Also removing the bridge so we can empty the loop gosh darn safe game it gets me every time good now also remove all of that piping we don't need it anymore as a matter of fact we're not going to be needing this pump here either and i'm also gonna get rid of the gas pump here another thing i wanted to do is make a little bit of a buffer for my natural gas which i'm gonna set up here with a gas reservoir made out of steel and it's just gonna go right there probably i'm also gonna open up the gold volcano get rid of this pump and the infrastructure we are gonna do it differently and i'm sorry for some of you i know this is annoying that i always change things but that's how i play the game the world develops into the ultimate base and i don't always get it right the first time but I also feel like one needs to be ready to make dramatic changes to your already existing designs. Don't be afraid to tear things apart to make them better. Now we can also connect all of the cables from the right side and then we'll be able to get rid of this spine. Looks like I can take the cable here from my power transformer and as far as I remember I cannot hop over neutronium. Yeah, that is uh, too unfortunate. So we'll have to get around here to power up the door. Got most of the right side hooked up. Let's prepare ourselves to remove the left side. We'll also have to replace the conductive charm plates with the mesh tiles. This also means we can get rid of whatever the heck I was thinking here. Let me just go ahead and do that and I'm gonna show you the finished design. Whew, okay, I'm so ready to wrap this up. Looks like uh, carbon dioxide is accumulating a little bit while I was doing this. However, I think I'm now done and we can put it to the test. 
basically now we have sorted out the power spine i'm not quite happy with this solution just yet however i had to kind of make this a room still so the power control station is functional i added a third row of battery with its own smart battery that controls the petroleum generator and i think yeah i still have to reroute the cabling i want the lower smart battery to control the petroleum generators and the upper one is controlling the natural gas generators natural gas is kicking in a little bit sooner and the petroleum will kick in at 60 to 80 percent the gold volcano is now part of the industrial sauna i will be picking the stuff up and just transporting it over it will then adapt to the temperature of the steam room until it is approximately here right here we have a vacuum so it doesn't influence anything and then we're sending it through here where i'm going to be picking up the cobalt as well i first want the cobalt to actually go down into the steam room just like i had it before and only afterwards it's coming through here however right here we then have the finalized cooling system that is gonna bring my metals down to usable temperatures and then of course the cooling loop is just doing its usual thing it will be cooling down all of the volcanoes but only to the point that we need in order to solidify the materials the materials will then be shipped over at a high temperature and then of course i want to lead them through an insulated layer and then as of this point they will be cooled down i also had to find a solution in order to be able to dump my carbon dioxide from the natural generators and currently it's just going down here we have this high gas pressure vent however i also made a little mesh tile with a drop of petroleum that is going to spread over to the right side and every now and then it manages to spread over and then we can also release a little bit more of the carbon dioxide i shielded off the wall right here as a matter of fact i probably want to do something like this have this insulated and then hopefully get some of the temperature over here in order to distribute it from the carbon dioxide vent now of course this guy can only run at five kilograms or below it and looking at this we have uh, 26 kilograms of steam in here so that's a no-go and i might have to come up with another solution but my hope is that eventually i can get rid of the steam in here and it's just gonna be carbon dioxide maybe i have to narrow this down a little bit and then of course i have my atmo sensor right here currently i have it set to 20 kilograms i might be putting it one block over so it detects the steam as well yeah i think i might actually do that right away just get rid of that and what this is basically doing is it's running into a ant gate and only if the right atmosphere is here so if we have above 20 kilograms and also when this timer sensor is active we're gonna send a green signal the sensor i set to 10 seconds green duration and 5 seconds red duration and what this is doing is basically opening up for 10 seconds and then closing it for 5 seconds 5 seconds is just enough to close the doors that are unpowered and then within the 10 seconds some of the steam can accumulate here you can see we have 13 kilograms of steam on the top and about what is this uh, 500 grams of carbon dioxide at the bottom and now this is closing this door is closed and we still have the carbon dioxide and the steam in here at 14 kilograms and all of this just gets deleted and now i want to rinse and repeat that until i can get rid of this carbon dioxide and hopefully if we only have a little bit of carbon dioxide here the carbon dioxide Oxide vent is capable of erupting yeah so i'm curious as to how this is turning out right now it is overpressured. but you can see where i'm going with this in the next episode i will be reactivating the volcanoes i'm not gonna show it to you because well we're just encasing them basically in the same way like this so that i still have enough space for a conveyor loader and auto sweeper the bottom layer i'm then gonna fill up with super coolant that is the only layer that i'm cooling down and then as soon as it is solidified i will be picking it up and bringing it through the steam room so we can actually dump the heat and gain that precious power Alrighty, here we go we have reached the end of episode 40 next sunday we're gonna continue with episodes 41 through 60 i really hope you enjoyed this format being able to watch the series in long form content and also with less ad interruptions but with that out of the way thank you so much for everything for supporting the video have a great time and hopefully i'm gonna catch you in the next one Bye bye